The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, November 21st, 2023. This program starts now. Football! Happened last night. The Eagles get a big win over the Kansas City Chiefs over here in Kansas City, Missouri. Wow. That's close to Wachita, Kansas, obviously, <laughs> yeah. last night. We answered a lot of questions that we potentially had. Yes, the Kansas City Chiefs have a long way to go on the offensive side of the ball. 26 drops this season, leads the league. The only uh, second highest, the only people that have had this amount of drops up to this point in the history is uh, 2017 Niners or something like okay. that. Okay. They've gone ahead. So it's a lot of drops all over the place. Obviously, MVS has one at the end of the game last uh, at the end of the game last night. And a lot of people say, you know, Chiefs probably get that win. You know, Chiefs probably mm -hmm. win if he does that. Minute 40, does Jalen Hurts go back down the field? Who knows? But it was a great game between these two. A Super Bowl rematch that we we're all incredibly pumped to dive into. Obviously, the Manning cast had Mark Wahlberg on last uh, night. Yeah. He had an incredible performance yeah, on there. He was great. That feels like that's right in Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg, or Wahlberg's like kind of bread basket. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Anytime he's being interviewed at anything, he seems to really crush yeah, it. Yeah, game four, it wants to be there. So excited. Seems yep. pumped to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, loves that the football's happening, and he's talking to both Mannings, two Hall of Famers yep. at the same exact time. Kind of left Peyton and Eli out on an island. Yeah, a little, a little bit. bit. It was a little uncomfortable. They didn't bit. deserve that at all, but Not it was a great night of football. I think there's a lot of overreaction happening. For instance, this morning I was on first take. Very lucky to do that every single Tuesday. They go, are the Chiefs issues fixable? It's like... Have you seen the AFC? Anybody can go get the AFC right now. Yeah. Now, the Baltimore Ravens have been fantastic, and the Miami Dolphins with Jalen Ramsey seem to have a resurgence. And are the Buffalo Bills back? Mm. Well, we don't know. We're going to find out quickly here, I think, this weekend with it all. But if you think about who could go on a run, you don't think Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid can figure it out? Yeah, I think they can figure out what they need to do. Now, certainly targeting a guy named Justin Watson, who none of us knew existed. Hey, there's a white guy wearing number 80. That's not Travis Kelsey catching the ball a lot last night, getting targeted a lot last night. Well, if you do recall, he was with Tampa Bay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Him and Tom Brady had a little bit of a stint yep. there for like oh, a game yeah. or two. So he's caught pass from Tom ba uh, Brady and Patrick Mahomes. But whenever he's your number one target, you would think you're maybe in a little bit of trouble. Chiefs will figure it out. Andy Reid will utilize his massive brain. Patrick Mahomes will continue to be Patrick Mahomes. But last night, I think we learned a lot about the Eagles. This Eagles team is gritty, dude. Oh, Legit. yeah. They're some dogs. Yeah. They can take you into the deep end and they can beat you. That defense is fantastic. Now, Stephen A. said the secondary is going to have to figure some stuff out, especially if MVS catches that. That's our whole conversation today and all of that. Okay, cool. We're week 11. There's still a lot of growth and development for all teams. I think last night we're very thankful for the boys. The big story of today, though, boys, Ooh. is something that popped off this morning. The Toxic Table's here at Boss Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Love the elephant. That's my favorite animal. I okay, think. nice. Yeah, this was just a quick grab and go. D didn't even look to see what it was, and I'm glad it turned out to be a good one. Well, maybe pay a little respect to the elephant. Uh, you need to maybe do a little research on what the elephants are, how smart they I are, know. how loyal they are. Yeah. And by the way, elephants, some real... Dogs out there. Yeah, right? very petty, I believe, too, which is nice. Well, Both anybody that has a good memory normally going to be very petty. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that aren't petty are normally the people that don't remember everything that has ever happened against them. Sure. The elephants remember everything. Oh, so yeah. certainly going to be more petty than others that are maybe dumb, you know? Mm -hmm. It's tough to be petty whenever you just don't remember anything because then you don't know what to be petty about. The elephants, shh. shh you do one thing against them, yeah, they know. they're going to remember it forever. Oh, yeah. Love your shirt. Uh, there's a nine-year NFL vet here who is a host of the Man to Man podcast and everything DB. That'll be happening later today. Absolute stallion whenever he's talking about games. So much so that he actually got to call a game at Lambeau this past weekend. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, in front of the program, Darius J. Butler. Hey, D. D. Butch, Eagles, good win. Great win. Love it. Great win. Nine and one now. Uh, great win. That's all Jalen Hurts seems to do is win. Uh, obviously, ugly football game. Nasty weather. Comes down to a two-minute drive. You mentioned the MVS drop. 
you know, big mishap on defense, but you got bailed out by the receiver. But a uh, big win against, a, obviously, a great opponent. Yeah, you talk about sloppy conditions. We can never see it with these new cameras. It's no. ridiculous. No. This is real. Show mm-hmm. us the rain. This is a real thing. Yeah. Can't tell it's raining. That Oregon State-Washington game on yeah. Saturday night had, like— It was coming down. It was a, they, They're two. saying, like, terrible rain. So yeah. much so that people actually thought they could just pee in public. Exactly. And nobody would notice with how hard it was raining. Couldn't even tell with how good the cameras were. Nope. Literally just looked like, uh, maybe a little gloomy, cloudy day. And then they cut to another camera, all of a sudden, a sky cam, and it's like, oh, yeah. it's really raining all out over. here. Last night, kind of a similar thing. Yep. Cameras so damn good. Yep. Lighting so damn good. Can't even tell. Then they go to the sky cam. It's like foggy and rain everywhere. It's like, oh, there's some tough conditions potentially mm-hmm. for both of them. Going to have to handle that, though, uh, especially in the playoffs going forward. Good football game. We were lucky to watch it. Mm -hmm. Breaking news this morning. Mm -hmm. Huge. Out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You've heard the chants, okay? From sea to shining sea in this particular country. Run it, Foxy! There's a team that maybe has no shot to win it all. Mm. And if you're talking about what these people are talking about, (laughs) that would be the Pittsburgh Steelers. I had no idea. Wow, wow. You know, it's like Hold up, Alex. <laughs> Hold up. This is in Utah. This guy's it's life. Good. Different sport. Oh, no. Jeez. Here's in, in the house. Uh-huh. Oh, boy. He's there. Just in sporting events, right? That's all. Who are they talking about? That's in the hills of Virginia. Uh, Matthew Hill. Kennedy. Oh. Yeah. Speaking of fire. That's oh, a That's the host of the A.J. Hawks birthday party. Yeah, yeah. You're talking everywhere. Yeah. It was being chanted to fire this particular guy. Because whenever you're a part of the Pittsburgh Steelers, you're part of an organization that has a fan base that is everywhere. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows the story of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is the birth of this country. Yeah. I understand well, that steel. Massachusetts well. and New England, we're the birth of steel, which has made everything everywhere. You. You're Ford welcome, Ford says all of the Yinzers, for the lives that were cut very short, for going into these mills, breathing in terrible things, oh, yeah. dying to create steel so that the rest of this country could be built. Go God bless Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. But whenever you're coaching the Pittsburgh Steelers, you see those people all moved. That's right. As the mills continue to to kind of dissipate across the country, and oh, as, yeah. as business continued to bloom, kind of everybody. So there's Pittsburgh Steelers fans in every single city, in every single place. You can go to the Mormons. In Utah, yep, and there are Pittsburgh Steelers fans oh, yeah. in abundance. You can go to the hills of Virginia, and there's Pittsburgh Steelers mm-hmm. in abundance. You go to the capital, and there'll be Pittsburgh Steelers. So anything you do with the Pittsburgh Steelers is going to be judged in that particular light. And the offense coordinator, although they've gone 24, 19, and 1 over the past three seasons with this man wow. as the offense coordinator. And they have not made a move in the middle of the season, the Pittsburgh Steelers, of a head coach or a coordinator since 1941. Damn. They decide to pull the trigger Yeesh. on Matt Cannon as the offensive coordinator this morning. Now, Art Rooney II, who is the acting owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers, was the one that made this move, not Mike Tomlin. So that leads to a bunch of questions, okay? Well, then is Art Rooney the second the guy that was deciding to not fire him for this entire season? And that's why Tomlin, every time he went out to the press conference, was like, yeah, we're looking at changes, but he didn't really know because Art Rooney's the guy that's making the firings. Or... Did Tomlin not want to do it? Did Tomlin say, I don't want to do this. You're going to have to do it. And was this a decision that was just made by Art Rooney saying, my team ain't going to have this guy getting chanted out of every Mm -hmm, single building that Pittsburgh is a part of because he sucks anymore? And does Art Rooney II maybe just think, I need to find out if Kenny Pickett's the guy or not? So many questions from this move by who the uh, the move was made by. Let's go to the man who uh, dressed up like Matt Cannon for Halloween. That's right. Just Matt Cannon. Just Matt Matt Cannon. Cannon. When he potentially portrayed a devil wearing a Steelers uniform. Uh, This is, there he is right there, just Matt Cannon. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Tone Diggs, your thoughts on the Pittsburgh Steelers moving on from a coordinator for the first time since 1941 in the middle of the season. Yes. Tuesday, November 21st, 2023. Today. Remember the day, okay? It's a historic day. Like you said, since 1941, a move like this hasn't been made in the Steelers organization. This is a historic day. You know, in the 20th and 21st centuries, democracies, dictatorships, what? Yep. walls, what? What? they've crumbled, they've fallen, they've gone. You know, yep. people, 
will never stand for tyranny and oppression uh -huh. like they may have in the past. Yep. And for a long time, you know, I thought the Steelers fan base was going to have to be one of those groups of people that was just going to be ruled by some dictatorship overlord who just enjoyed crushing his constituents okay. and people that relied on him for happiness and food what? Okay, yeah. and money for their families. <laughs> yeah. 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 But today, on this day, today, on this day, yeah. Tuesday, November 21st, 2023, a day we'll never forget. Remember never. Yeah. a date we would never, ever forget. In never. the 20th and 21st century. Yeah. We yeah. heard this. Oh before. yeah. 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 <laughs> Those two Yo, we heard this up. earlier. The big century. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Talking, they yep. brought up the hurling yep, wall. Yep, exactly. Uh -huh. Yep. A <laughs> hundred. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You got it. This is the worst we've ever. <laughs> yeah. Bring it home. A <laughs> hundred and twenty-eight. Okay. Hundred and twenty-eight leaders of state have been deposed by foreign countries or foreign bodies. <laughs> Not Argentina. <laughs> Today is 129 because a dictator has died today. <laughs> oh, okay. Gee, wow. All right. Matt Canada's For three ruling. years, he Matt Canada dictator? did just Mickey Mouse play calling, screens, what? draws, what? jet sweeps. Jet what? sweeps. You can't throw it in the middle of the field. And today, we are free from his reign. Hell okay? yeah. Congrats, Pittsburgh. Today go, is a new day. And today is a huge day because today, um, Mark something bigger that we're actually <laughs> going to have some change. Yeah. Okay. All we wanted as Steelers fans was to know that, th that the standard is the standard. Okay. And the standard is not being the 32nd ranked offense mm -hmm. year after year after year. And that we're trying to win Super Bowls. And with Matt Canada, there was never a chance that we were going to win Super Bowls. So today actually like is somewhere where it's like, okay, we're going to try. Cause it seemed like for the last two years, we gave him a year. But for the last two years, it felt like we weren't even trying to win, and that's just something that is not uh, acceptable as a Steelers fan and the Steelers fan base. And like you said, now, now we get to find out, was it Matt Canada? Or? Is, is it the quarterback that we drafted in the first round? Like, is that something that we have to move on and look forward in the future? Or, like, is there's no one else left to blame? If, if it goes from Matt to the quarterback to it doesn't have to go higher than that, than that we could finally move on from this era that has been it's been kind of painful and torturous um and, and now we finally get some answers i think and, and thankfully art came de came in and stepped in and, and made this move because it had to be done um and finally we can move on and get some answers i think art rooney the second correct is the current acting owner of the pittsburgh steelers he is not named after his father Oh, he's okay. named after his father's father, yeah. sure. who obviously uh, original owner of the chief. Pittsburgh Steelers, the chief Art Rooney. Chief. So then there was Dan, who's Art's father, and then Art Rooney the second is after the grandfather. Okay, which I've yeah. never heard before. Cool. But he's the one who is now in charge. He says Matt Canada has been fired. There's a minute long video now coming out from Mike Tomlin's press conference, which started at noon Eastern time. Here is Mike Tomlin, I assume, addressing the elephant in the room, which is the firing of Matt Canada. Good afternoon. First, let's start with the news of the day. Um, Thank you. As I'm sure you all, you guys already know, I made a change at the coordinator position. Oh, I um, mm. Did not come to this decision lightly to be really transparent with you. Um, it's just a personal belief of mine from a leadership perspective. Uh, it is my role to absorb and protect um, those that I work with. Um, and this doesn't feel like that. Um, obviously, I'm not interested in, in assigning blame or deflecting in any way. Um, it's more of my natural nature to absorb, to be quite honest with you. I've been in this role so long, I'm quite comfortable absorbing. Um, so just rest assured um, that this decision was not taken lightly. I got a lot of respect. Uh, for Matt personally and professionally, it was not easy, um, but I thought it was necessary. Um, this is a result-oriented business, and yeah. to be short, um, the improvements were not rapid enough or consistent enough um, for us to proceed. Um, you got to score touchdowns in this business. You got to win games in this business, um, and just the totality of it has us where we are 
um, today. Okay, so he said I a lot there, so that'll go against mm -hmm. the reports that were coming out of Pittsburgh that Art Rooney II made this decision. Mike Tomlin said I felt like I had to do that. He talked about not getting better quick enough, yep. and I think to go to the Steelers fans' points, Tomlin has been the most patient human than yep. waiting for results because it's been a two-year process after the first year of just, is this guy? I don't know how yep. that whole thing goes. I, he talked about how hard of a decision is. That's not a message, obviously, for the media. He's also sending that to Matt Canada, mm -hmm. Matt Canada's family, Matt Canada's friends, because obviously they exist. We assume he's not a bad human behind closed doors, even though he doesn't know offensive football in the NFL that well in everybody's eyes. How do you feel about the firing? And I appreciate the way Mike Tomlin said, I've been in this role so long, normally I just take the blame myself. Yeah. So firing somebody middle of the season, he almost, I, it, he almost feels like a coward, like... Like, all right, so now I'm pointing blame yeah, yeah. at somebody else. He doesn't love that at all, which I can respect. All, every time Tomlin speaks, I respect it. But this move seemingly had to be done. Yeah, he always, you know, dominates the press conferences. He always seems honest and real, transparent. And obviously he doesn't feel great about, you know, uh, firing Matt. And he said not rapid enough. This was an issue, obviously, for Steelers fans going in last year, coming into this year. Uh, but now – you know what? What's going to really change? You know, you still got you still got the quarterback uh, in place. Debut, You still got the quarterback. You do it. In my opinion, you got some good talent around him. We know who George Pickens is, athletically, talent wise. Deontay Johnson, I think he's a good receiver as well. Got a, a you know good couple running backs back there, Warren and Naj. So we'll see if it actually change and it actually improves on the field. Who's calling plays? Uh, Mike right. Sullivan, okay, uh, West Point graduate, graduate, Army reports. Ranger. I would like to say we it might be quarterback coach Mike Sullivan, but there has been conflicting mm -hmm. reports on who's going to be calling plays, who's going to be the offense coordinator, and the same people that are reporting this type of stuff. No offense, we love the Pittsburgh media. Sure, shout out. They were also reporting that R. Rooney was the one that did the firing of Matt Canada. So yeah. it's like I don't think any of us really know what's real or not. Feels like there's a lot of uh, yeah darts just being thrown out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But you said what does it change? You know. Just like when McDaniels left. Yeah. You remember when McDaniels left? Mm -hmm. They were smoking those cigars, Devontae Adams, <laughs> dancing, doing the whole thing. I wonder, you know, because Deontay Johnson came out after the game and said, I ran a right, I ran a right route. Yeah. Just so everybody's mm -hmm. saying that I ran the wrong route and Kenny threw where I was supposed to be. I ran the right one. It was Najee Harris. What did he said after the game about, yeah, we're a bit predictable. You think everybody has a team first attitude? Hmm. I want to talk about me. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he said. Oh, yeah. He literally said that. So it sounds like there is quite a few seams behind closed doors on that offensive front. George Pickens had already deleted all the Steelers stuff off oh, his Instagram. Ooh. That means something in 2023. Mm -hmm. So maybe with Matt Canada leaving, it'll be something that the boys will be able to rally around. Yeah. Because it feels like they need something like that much more than anything else. Whether it's whether it's Mike Sullivan or, or Eddie Faulkner, who's a uh, running backs coach, I believe. Um the word around Tan. Tan is that the players really enjoy those two and that they were at a point where they didn't enjoy Matthew Canada as much. So, like in Buffalo, like what happened there? Like was there stuff going on where they didn't get along and then oh, they come in and Joe Brady and, and obviously it's just one game, but they looked better. Maybe just if everybody likes each other, they'll play better. Um, but to your point, like there's still, there's still a lot of uh, – there's a lot probably wrong with that offense. It's probably not going to get fixed uh, this yeah. season if I had to take a guess. Mike uh, Tomlin confirms Eddie Faulkner is Steelers' new offensive okay. coordinator. Mike Sullivan will call plays. Oh, that's good. Wait. Don't that, love that. How's that work? You that got feels. two quarterbacks. You got no quarterbacks. You got two OCs. Uh, do you have any? Mike Tomlin, smart guy. Yeah. We assume he's going to get it right. Joining us now is a man who we thought maybe he becomes offense coordinator for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Because he seemingly has all the answers. Yeah, Ladies boy. and gentlemen, the quarterback guru, NFL guru for ESPN, 14 hours a day. Ladies and gentlemen, he was live from like a Dateline set yesterday. Oh, yep. yeah. Dan Orlovsky. Yeah. What's up, boys? Where were you yesterday? It looked like you were in the middle of getting interviewed for like a neighbor getting murdered. <laughs> Yesterday we were we were on site. We were we were at the stadium yesterday. No, no you were not. No. Yesterday you guys were on site oh, for yeah, NFL no. Live. But when you're on yeah. Get Up and First Take, you were sitting oh, in this was in a dimly hotel lit room. Yeah, dim. The, the the lighting that they had was very bum, 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 oh, like yeah. you know what I mean. You were getting kind of yeah. And you're on TV for four straight hours in that hotel room. It was a fantastic job by you. Yeah, not not a blast. I I flew home Sunday or I flew Sunday night from New York down there. 
uh, post lacrosse tournament, did get up and first take from the hotel, NFL Live, and flew back last night type thing. Hey, we appreciate you. Hey, boy, Daniel. Go. Baby, Daniel. So you guys got some food there, too. Ryan Clark was all jacked up. You know, he says game day gets food every single weekend. It's a segment on the show. Mm -hmm. So uh, make it, let's make it a segment on NFL Live every Monday so Swagoo and Ryan Clark can get some food. Yeah. Yep. Boys are out there battling. We appreciate them doing that. The least you guys could do is get them some food, Dan. Why don't you, uh, why don't you get a restaurant to do that? Well, usually NFL Live is just from the studio in Bristol. So not on Mondays. No, nope. not on Mondays. Yeah. Oh. Bad teammate. Uh, nah, we, usually it is. I think we've been on site once or twice this year. So I've NFL Live countdown countdowns on site. No, no, I've seen Swagoo yep. and Ryan Clark all by himself. Laura, no, I'm with you guys back in studio. Yeah. Yep. I've seen it the whole time. Me, I've seen it. You, you're screwing over your teammates on NFL Live. That's on you, Dan. <sighs> That's on that's you. On me. All right, that's on me. I'll take that Thank one. You. I'm down one. I appreciate you me, being bud. a good leader out there. Let's take care of them. Speaking of leadership, we leaders lead from the front. Mm -hmm. Bingo. It's, it's a thing. Uh, Tomlin says he didn't consult with GM Omar Khan or ownership before making the decision. It was mine and mine alone. All right. Oh, yeah. So everything out of Pittsburgh media this morning was wrong. Yep. Okay, that's good. We can move on. Let's talk about leadership from the front. Mike Tomlin. He just had his press conference at noon where he let it off with talking about the decision to move on from Matt Canada. Basically said didn't get better quick enough, and he also said that he doesn't like putting blame on somebody else as the head football coach. Kind of feels like it's a coward move, kind of is how he was talking. I feel like I should absolve all the blame whenever we're not doing well. Steelers fire a head coach or a coordinator for the first time since 1941. Do you think this is the right wow. move? And do you think this is potentially Mike Tomlin saying, all right, we got to figure out if this is Kenny Pickett or if this has been the offense as a whole before we go further as a football program? Yeah, so it's the right move. It's the necessary move. And it's, that's not – like we all understand firing people isn't fun. The reality is if I don't you know, produce for ESPN, they're going to fire me too. So that, that's just the nature. We all know that getting into the, the real world, that, that's part of it. So, But it was the necessary move. Well, um, you know, there's, there's too many instances where this offense – and you guys have had me layer out the predictability, the lack of explosion, right. the never creating an advantage. Like there's right. so many flaws within this scheme. Okay, so at some point you have to sit there and say – are we helping the players or not? I think that's what it really comes down to. Are, were they ever creating an advantage for the players? More often than not, that answer was no. So you, you have to move on. Um, I, I think this is a little bit of, hey, Kenny Pickett, and if you were going to ask me, like, what's the one thing that Kenny Pickett has to do now? It, Kenny Pickett is going to have to win how many, ever many games they have left. I think six. He's seven. He's going to have to prove that he is willing and able to throw the ball past five yards down the field well. That, that's, that's been the question mark really ever since he became their guy. Now, is that all on him? That's a tough, that's blowing, not a because, that's a tough question. Hey, NFL quarterback, yeah. can you throw the ball five yards down the field or not? Yeah, it's five. Well, but that's not of all on him because he wasn't asked to do it like much or with an adva advantageous situation. Got it, okay. You know, like I put out this – tweet of like what's going to be needed now for the offensive coordinators okay yeah so like first of all way too many i'm throwing this route but you're running this route situations for the pittsburgh steelers so that their new offensive coordinator i actually played for mike sullivan who i think is going to be calling their plays yep. so like they got to get that right away and it's not just a deontay johnson thing it's all of those guys got to get on the same page number two i i said this the other day at the end of the the cleveland game george pickens doesn't get a throw so they got to build some plays for George to get involved into their pass game. Tie things together, formation and plays. So often, they would just run a play. And then in the third quarter, they, they would like get into that same formation, and there wouldn't be a counter to that play. You know, So often, like when you get into a formation, there should be four or five different plays off of that formation. When you get into a, a set, there should be a three or four or five. Dip, so you're forcing the defense to think a little bit. I think I can't count the amount of times um, that they – 
ran a play action off of some of their runs because they've run the ball with those two runs relatively well. Their screen game stinks. So I do think that there are areas that they can improve on to help everybody on their offense play better. You're talking about the predictability of it. So is Najee Harris. Whenever you run this formation and you're only running one play out of it, Mm -hmm. it gets one play, dude. When there's guys like Darius J. Butler on the other side who have massive brains Mm -hmm. and are studying and it's like, okay, when they get in this, it's it's just this. Normally Mm -hmm. there's like three different options, four different options potentially coming. Right. Yeah, like you said, when you break it down film, you're looking at cutups and you get, you know, certain personnel or formations, and it's the same thing. Like you said, you need at least four or five, you need some options, you need the same action, you know. So if you're running yes. inside zone, you need the same play action off of that inside zone look so that you see, you know, all the clips every week, guys getting sucked up on Whoa. the second level. Hey-o. They're not going to get sucked up. Yeah, nobody's never getting seen sucked up with the Pittsburgh action. offense. We no sucking it's, it's, hey, you guys weren't sucking like, anybody up with no. the way you guys were running your offense. Especially the week goes. You know? Especially like the other week goes. Matt Gannon wasn't sucking anybody up with that nope. offense. Mouth mm. so that shut. all seems like such a natural, easy. <laughs> Grow up. Man, Daniel, talking football. <laughs> Dan. Grow up, dude. Dan. Good, Dan? What's up, Buck? We're on TV. Okay. Yeah, no, I. <laughs> Keep yeah. it together. I'm a kid, dude. I'm a I'm a child. What do you want me to tell you, dude? Yeah, yeah. You have a lot of kids too. You did oh, great in there. Good yeah. work, Dan. But isn't that doesn't that seem like malpractice though? Like, uh, you know. And you think yes. like Mike Tomlin was thinking to himself, we just keep winning. This guy sucks. Like, we can't can't fire him. We're six and four yeah. right now. Like, we do you wait for the Browns game. All right. There was an L. Everything was bad. We can move on. We can finally make this decision. Or how do you think he got here at this exact moment? Why now, as opposed to maybe. Any of the weeks of the past where these same exact things were being said about Matt Cannon and his offense for like two, three years now? Yeah, when you're throwing away a season, you know, and, and that's part of like, again, that goes back to the initial statement. When, when everybody knows what is the problem with your football team, then as the coach, you have to sit there and say, okay, I have a defense that plays their absolute tails off and gives everything they have every week. And they go into every game knowing that we're not trying to win the game on offense. That's, I think I, I, um, I said this yesterday. Like, there's no way that you could watch that offense play and say they're trying to win the game. They're just strictly saying, hopefully we don't lose it. And as a coach, you can't look at your defensive players in the eye any longer and say, hey, um, we're, we're going to do what's best for the football team. No, we're not. We're not doing what's best. If you continue to roll out this offensive coordinator, and this isn't like a personal shot at them. Players, you guys know, like we're not doing what's best for the football team because we're not trying to score points. And so I I think that's – I don't know why Mike Tomlin held on to him as long as he did. I don't have that answer. But I know there's – at some point, you just become to an indisputable place where the move has to be made. Yeah, and I think it's loyalty and just the way Tomlin has done it. Once again, first move like this in the Steelers franchise since 1941. It's just not something that happens in Pittsburgh, and that's why Steelers fans, I think, we're just expecting to ride out Mac yeah. Canada yeah. for the rest there's of this year. There's pressure on Kenny Pickett now, though, Pat. Oh, like, there is, man. Yeah, like, which there's... Tone Diggs has a question for you about that. Yeah, Dan, no matter who the OC is, like, there was guys running open last week on some plays versus the Browns. There was one where Deontay had a had a kind of a crossing route where he was wide open. Yes. It was like on the 15 or something like that. Is that Kenny just directly staring at the line because he doesn't trust them? Can that be fixed? Or is it to a point where quarterbacks get broken where they can't – it doesn't matter who the OC is. He, he, can't, he doesn't throw down the middle of the field at all. Like, is that something yeah. that – does Mike Sullivan, since you know him, like does he have a chance to help with that the rest of the year, or are we just not, never going to find out? Yeah, so great question. A couple of things here. So, um, And D-Buck can speak to this a little bit as well. I think, and I'm going to correlate this to Houston, I think one of the, the best things that's going on in Houston right now, coming off of the C.J. Stroud sound this weekend, where he was like, uh, Steph Curry doesn't stop shooting, is – So often when you take a young quarterback and you pair them with a defensive-minded head coach, from the jump, these quarterbacks here, hey, we're going to play great defense. We're going to have great special teams. Don't give the ball away. You know, just protect the ball, protect the ball, protect the ball. And so you hear that over this three, four, five, six-month period, 18 months with Kenny Pickett. And so you start to become risk-averse. You start to become, and and I think you guys have probably heard me say this, Tom Diggs is like, 
Uh, don't get me the quarterback who make good who makes good decisions. Get me the quarterback who makes the right decisions. Any quarterback can go make a good decision. Did you check the ball down? Mm. Great, that's a good decision. It's not a bad one. Mm. So by rule, it's a good one. But make the right one. And I think if you if you watch what's happened with Kenny Pickett, my guess is that he has heard that we got a great defense. We got good special teams. All we got to do is like don't give the ball away. And what happens is you become way more protective of the football. That's why I hate when people say protect the ball. No, you value the ball. So, um, and I think that's part of it is like, I don't know if he's scared of the rush or whatnot or doesn't trust the line. More so of like, don't do anything that puts the ball in harm's way. And you start to play this very cautious style of quarterback. You'll never be good long term in this league playing that way. So that's the answer to your question in regards to Kenny. Can they do it more? Absolutely. Like you just got to empower these guys to Absolutely. like at some point that you got to trust their eyes. You you, you got you got to design plays to hopefully get number one or number two open. You got to get them back into an attack mode and make sure that they're you like you believe in their decision making. And I think now Mike Sullivan, I, I played for him. He comes from the Kevin Gilbride. Like it is run and gun. Like it is going to be. If you guys remember. When Victor Cruz was playing with the Giants and they were unbelievable and it was you know, like just deep ball after deep ball with uh, Eli, it, it's it's very centric on trying to attack defenses and run to where the vacancy is with the defense. It takes a little bit of time to get used to, so that's kind of like a read based offense. But they can build it. Um, it's gonna it's gonna take a lot of effort, but I think that's the big thing with Kenny is getting him to realize. Hey, we You're we got to be football. aggressive with the football <laughs> here. You're good at football. Throw the ball. Let it rip. You think he has that Let in him rip. though? Because I, I mean, I understand that the defensive, you know, head coaching and, and not and yeah. it, was, it was winning. You know, it was not taking. He was taking care of the ball. Defenses were being opportunistic, and in the fourth quarter, he'll make a couple plays and they'll win. But do you think it has? He has that in him. Being a first round pick, you obviously want to go out there. You want to get a second contract. You want to put up points like. You have yeah. a certain an ego as a quarterback, at least all the, the good ones I've been around. Like, do you think Kenny has that in him? Uh I, I think he's got the physical ability to throw the ball in chunks, D butt. I don't think he's got that physical ability to, you know, rip these twenty five yard, you know, deep crossers or big ins or go balls down the field. No, but I think he can really be good in like NFL? the intermediate. That's what, that's what we need. Is this the NFL? What are we talking about? How do these guys? You know. Yeah, but mean? there's not how many how many guys do we believe are that arm talented wise where they could just Gardner absolutely... Minshew. Yep, sure. <laughs> Jordan Love. All right, here's the perfect Jared example. Goff. Here's the perfect example. D but here's the perfect example. Do we think, because I would sit here and say right now, this dude, when it comes to like getting chunk throws as good as anybody, Brock Purdy, but he doesn't have elite arm like strength or no, he got, arm talent. He's got guts. He's got anticipation and conviction. Yes. And, and I don't, yeah. that, those are the and, things I don't see with Kenny. And, but deep. I mean, Purdy puts that yeah. impeccable yeah. accuracy. Yeah. We're talking about. But deep, but the third word that you said is the most important. Time. Conviction. Hate nasty. Like, yeah, what he, is that about? That kid, nasty. that young man, he trusts his eyes and he's going to let it rip. Now, every ball's not thrown through a keyhole. Sometimes it's thrown over defenders with a little bit of touch. But that dude is convicted with what he sees and he's not scared to make mistakes. Dan. Dan. You can't say what you just said. I don't want to get in this whole Brock Purdy's disrespected all the time thing. But you say he doesn't have a lead arm. He puts it in a keyhole. You you said he doesn't. He he has no, throw it through like with with a hey or maybe the better phrase is like throw it through a windstorm where some of these guys just have arm strength that Duh. I'll throw it as hard as I want and it doesn't like it's Brock has this. Um, and I think back to Kenny. Like can Kenny get to that level? And I and I I think it's Kyle Shanahan goes. Hey man, I, I'm I'm gonna dial up these plays. And don't worry, these cats will be open, you know? And so, like, you get a high level of confidence. And I think that that's – if they can get Kenny a little – obviously, it's not going to happen in seven weeks, but a little bit to that, I think he's capable. Yeah. Yeah, man. Rude boys out there everywhere <laughs> mm -hmm. slinging the pill. Trust Love everything eyes, about it. D-Bud has a question for you about the the process now in this entire thing. Yeah, I saw – uh, I know you played for Sullivan. I'm not sure who – was it Faulkner? Yeah. The other guy? Okay, the combination of an offensive coordinator and then – the other guy calling the plays. Like, how do you feel about that? How does that work throughout the week and then on Sundays? 
Yeah, I've been at places that we had like a run game coordinator, a pass game coordinator, or co coordinator. I've never believed in that. I've never been a fan <laughs> of it. Um, but I don't know like the end of building situation, D. But so yep. I don't know if this is going to be. Hey, Mike Sullivan's going to work because he's. I believe he's been the quarterback coach, mm -hmm. yep. so he's going to continue to work directly with Kenny Pickett. You don't want to remove him from that room. And Faulkner, I believe you guys said, is going to be the offensive coordinator, so he might be the guy that is, you know, running the meetings or helping build the install. I would imagine this is a collaborative effort, but this is again, again, I, I think the necessity or the desire to keep Mike Sullivan as close to Kenny Pickett as possible on a day-to-day -day basis probably takes precedence here. And play calling wise, he's at least called plays in the NFL. So that that's going to be a benefit to him, but hopefully for them, it's collaborative. So when the offense coordinator is not the play caller, what does that mean? Does that mean on game days, they say, I want to run the ball. And then <laughs> offense coordinator that's calling plays has to call a run or how does that? I'm like, throw it deep yeah, right now. Question. Figure it out. <laughs> Call the right yeah, one. How's Excited. that? Yeah. Excited. I, I, I don't necessarily know exactly how that would get up because usually it's the head coach that's kind of handling the situational thoughts of, hey, third and three here. We're going to go for it on fourth and down. Do what you want. Or let's take our shot. Or, hey, let's really be focused on getting our run game going. I think that usually is going to come from the head coach. I don't know how it will go between those guys because at some point, I think a lot of times too, like you guys know this, these coaches get so ahead of stuff like, Hey, this is going to be our seventh, third and four call, you know? And so <laughs> you just got to be very cautious of that, not just predetermining every play call and getting the feel for the game. So it's the coordinator is so often the guy that's building the plan, building the way that they want to attack the defense and the play callers, the person that's calling the shot with 10 seconds or 12. Usually it's the same person, obviously, but that'd be interesting to see how it goes. Yeah. Will they both be on the sideline or one be up in the booth? Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Like will Faulkner be up in the booth with the eyes in the sky and Sullivan's on the sideline, let him know what he sees. I think he you want Sullivan on the sideline still. Cause my thing, someone did this the other day in the NFL, they took their coordinator and I read that no one was talking to the quarterback during in between series. Who was it? it and was like you got it. Heck, it might have been Buffalo two weeks ago. When did they move their coordinator? And so like you got to have somebody. You got to have somebody there in between series that's looking at pictures with the quarterback and going over what's the plan. Hey, tell me what you saw. What are the things that you're seeing? Um, next time we get this, look, these is our thoughts. You know, hey, this is the plan for how we want to attack this. Look, you got to have somebody there. So I would imagine Mike Sullivan has been that guy, and I would, I would want to keep him in that role. Yeah, whenever we learned about Matthew Canada being up in the booth and never calling plays from the sideline, then I'm going down to the sideline, them having success seemingly – that's when that conversation kind of started for us. Like, yeah, you would want to be able to see guys, talk to guys, also feel if guys yeah. are having good days yeah. or bad mm -hmm. days. Like, you can tell if a guy is feeling it. Like, hey, we need to get this guy the ball. Yep. Seems like he has more juice today. Seems like things are going his way. Like, feeling that is a big deal. So being isolated, yeah. uh, I, I never really fully comprehended that move. Faulkner up there, eyes in the sky, though, Sullivan down there. Them two figuring it out. That first quarter, I'm excited to see if it's just solved yeah. and do your thing. You got about 10 plays, though. Mm -hmm. You got about 10 <laughs> plays. Scripted. And then we see how it all goes. Pickens probably happy. Naj probably happy. Yep. Deontay probably happy. Yeah. Jalen Warren. Warren. Jalen Warren should be a feature part of their offense, too. So Thank you, Dan. Yeah, don't he? He's been like that since the beginning, too. Yeah. It, it has been as soon as he got there, pretty much. He's been the explosion yeah. of their offense, pretty much. Let's move away from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's go another place where the seat's getting a little bit hot, seemingly. Yeah, Dano, do you think the Chargers, as they're presently constructed, can be fixed under Brandon Staley, at least? I mean, it seems like you know they just, they just continually find new ways to lose close games. And then post-game, yeah. uh, he it was really weird. Like, he kind of put the blame on the players and then – in the end, like tied it up by saying like, but ultimately it's on me. You know, I, I got to be better about kind of getting everyone to come together. Like, is there anything they can do or is it kind of, are we, are we at the end of this stake and, and he needs to go and what kind of coach do you think the chargers do need to hire to kind of maximize this window they're in with Justin Herbert? Yeah, no, I don't think they can. And I, I'm a massive fan of Brandon Staley's, um, I, 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 the reality is that this is an underwhelming and underachieving football team as, as underwhelming and as underachieving as we've seen in the NFL in two or three years. 
This is as talented a group that we have had roster-wise in the NFL over the last two or three years as maybe two or three teams equal with them. Number one, defensively, no team. No team blows more coverages than the Chargers. Dude, you go back to the Lions game last week, the first play of the game, it's a blown coverage. You go back uh, th this past weekend versus the, 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 the Packers, there's three or four more blown coverages. Guys running into each other, not passing things off, so... Uh, that's too consistently that, – that's happening too consistently. The second thing is this. Like, there's been no evidence that the people that are there right now can take Justin Herbert or have Justin Herbert take this team to a different level. There's no evidence right now. And that, and that, again, that, I'm never, never fun to say that, but we don't, we've seen Justin Herbert be historical in his first four years in the NFL, and they're like a 500 football team. They're a 500 football team with a, a roster that the year before, they, remember, the, the, I think the year before, two years before they drafted Justin, they were 12 and four, and I, the divisional round of the AFC title game, something like that. So within two years, the roster was really good. They're absolutely loaded talent wise. And you, oh, yeah. you mean to tell me that they're a 500 football team with a quarterback who's historically good? Yeah, yeah. And the owner's saying the same thing. He's been paying a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I paid a lot of money to a lot of people here. How have we gotten worse during this entire thing? You can tell that Stanley yeah, the knows. Type of coach has got to be the type of coach has got to be one that. Um, Say it, Bill Belichick. Huh? Is this the is this the rumor that you heard? Oh Remember yeah. You got yourself into some oh, real yeah. shit yeah. with that. Remember that, Dano? That was awesome. You're determined. <laughs> I don't know how other. I, I, I got to figure out a way to say like, "Hey, I'm a human being, so I've heard stuff. I'm not a, a reporter, but I have ears that people make fun of for their size, so I'm, I, I can share stuff that I've heard." But you got everyone good gets ears. in their do. feelings hey, about those it. Those are good ears. You got good ears. Yeah, I got a good set of ears, bub. Um, they hear things. You know, I don't know. Coach wise, like uh, you sit there and say, "Is Justin Herbert broken?" No. So it's not just. Hey, get a coach that fixes Justin Herbert. That's not the issue. You got to get a coach that fixes everything around Justin Herbert. Culture, and I think that's oh, yeah. probably their their yeah their biggest charge. What was the stat you just said? Uh, Fourteen losses by three or fewer points since 2020. That's tough. Yeah, some of it's like mismanagement at the end of games or some Situation decisions. Football, yeah. yeah. Some not of it's that. Field goals. Some of it's the other team getting lucky. Yeah. I mean, that's going to happen every once in a while. But sure. there's Take just turns. too much of that in one place to happen. Over, yeah. it's like are the football gods just not happy with him, or is maybe something else kind of brewing. I think the Staley convo will be one that will be fascinating looking back because he was on our show and we asked him, like, hey, you from the McVay coaching tree or what he... He said, I come from the – Dave, Dave and Linda. Dave yeah. and Linda, his parents' uh, coaching tree. They're both high school coaches, I guess, and that's how he views mm -hmm. this whole thing. And his relationships with his players are paramount. That's how he does. And the decisions he makes isn't because of stats. It's because of his belief mm -hmm. in his players. He's like Ted Lasso. Yep. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. He's like yeah. Ted Lasso in there. And it certainly has not worked thus yeah. far no. with the Chargers. This guy picked him to go to the Super Bowl the last three years. You no, know, right. last year I did. I mean, you talked about Dan and the, the team that Tom Telesco has put together. Like, I mean, that roster, obviously Justin Herbert's phenomenal. But it's almost like they just take turns, you know, messing up. Keenan Allen had some uncharacteristic drops. Johnston had to drop late down the sideline. Eckler fumbled inside the five-yard line. So it's definitely – not all on Staley, but when it's just sure. this and that and this and that, like you, you got to build, you got to rebuild that coach from the ground up for sure. You talk about drops for the Chargers. It's also a desire. Like oh. that, that place is a desirable place right now for a coach. I mean, you have oh, Justin yeah. Herbert. Yeah. And yeah. LA. You're going to pay 80% taxes probably when it's all said and done. Right. You know, you start piecing it all together. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that'll be good. That'll be fun. Beautiful Weather's weather. nice. Beautiful Gorgeous. weather. Stadium is awesome. Yeah. Although if it rains, it will come inside. Yeah. Right. We've experienced that. You talk about 32nd pass defense, though. Damn, mention it. Like, D but is there a team that blows more coverages, bro, man? Like, every, is there a team that you sit there and you go, my goodness? It, it's, my goodness. It's, it's bad. We had, um, they were on a couple plays, everything to be like, we yeah, just, bad, just bad alignment, yeah. pointing fingers. Hey, where are you here? The Romeo Dobbs go ahead, touchdown. They're knocking each yeah. other off coverage. Like, I mean, that's, that's, that's a shit show. And Staley got that job being a, you know, defensive mastermind. So. Genius. Yeah. Remember, yeah. he was a quarterback who, uh, was a defense coordinator, so he saw the game through a quarterback side. So on Boom. defensive side has not worked out. You talk about those drops for the Chargers. Let's talk about a big drop last night. MVS has owned it. He went on to social media on X and said, hey, listen, yeah. to whom much is given, much is expected, I get it. I I'm grateful I'll be better, and I appreciate the criticism and the support. God put this on me because he knew I could handle it. Okay? Couldn't handle the ball last night. <laughs> oh! 
Oh! Ho -ho! Swing Gratitude low. for everything that comes with it. You didn't deserve that MVS. I mean, this is going to happen. There's a minute 40 left. Who knows <laughs> if the Eagles were to get the ball back, what they would do with it. And maybe Jalen Hurts does what Jalen Hurts has seemingly done since he got in the NFL, which is walk down the field and maybe win that thing for Philadelphia. So, although this is a detrimental loss mm. for the Kansas City Chiefs, and this drop sucks, it would have been an incredible catch. Patrick Mahomes would later say, I should have threw it a little bit shorter so he didn't have to dive for it, yep. which is the epitome of professionalism. But let's talk about yeah. that Kansas City Chiefs team. They look different than they have in the past. Obviously, we're going to compare them to their best football that we've seen them play over the last few yeah. years all the time. Normally, at the beginning of seasons, they start out slow. They don't cover. This year, the convo is they can't do what they've done in the past. They don't have enough weapons. They don't have the right weapons. The offense looks sluggish. And... Patrick Mahomes only has Travis Kelsey as a weapon. Last night, Justin Watson got targeted like 12 times or something like that. That's cool. Rice got loose a little bit. Mm -hmm. Pacheco runs hard. Yep. Then they were moving Tony into the backfield, maybe mm -hmm. get him a rock as a running back. What are your thoughts on the Chiefs? Can they win it? And this Eagles team, all they do is win. All they do is win. The question is, can they yeah. continue to win ugly? Yeah. That seems like all they do. They just win games. Yeah. What are your takeaways from last night, and how do you feel about the Chiefs? Yeah, Chiefs, Chiefs can absolutely win it. They're the best team in the AFC still. Um, I honestly, I walk away from that game thinking the Chiefs are a better football team than the Eagles. If, if, if the Chiefs and the Eagles both played their A game, the Chiefs completely outplayed in so many different areas the Eagles. Except Patrick's interception in the red zone, it's a bad throw. Now it's a really nice football IQ play by Bayard, but it's a bad throw. So Patrick's yeah. probably not going to have that happen often. Kelsey fumbles. And honestly, if you watch the fumble, Kelsey's actually trying to cover the ball with two hands. It's just a nice punch out by Roby. So take six points off the board there. And there's five drops. And one of them is for a guaranteed touchdown. So I sit there and I go, hey, man, like, if, if that doesn't happen now, because I was watching you guys on first take this morning. Obviously, we know some, you know, like, hey, are the Chiefs issues fixable? Yeah. I, I, I Easily, their, their issues are penalties and bad situations and drops. So if they can fix those things, and I guess that's the giant if. But I walk away saying, man, if if that does happen, and I at some point I think NFL guys catch the football. I get because I so I had them in Germany, right? I had them for the Dolphins game, and I asked them point blank: Andy Reid, Matt Nagy, Patrick, what do you like? What's the deal with the drops? And they all said to a T, like. We just have to focus on the ball. Like, we just, you know, and I, I was trying to watch Find the, the MVS. <laughs> yeah, but, like, they even, like, the MVS yeah. drop, his eyes are there. Um, so I don't really have a ton of concerns about the Chiefs. I don't. I, I think it's when it, when it, as the season goes and into the playoffs, I'm banking on those guys catching the ball, which um, is something that they can control. Penalties got to get pu pulled away. I I'd say this about it. Um, two things about like a little deeper into that game, Pat. Number one, I do think it's fair to say that they got to get on the same page with throws down the field. That that's been a that to me is more of an issue than the drops. Like if you and, and Troy talked about it on the game cast or the telecast last night, Justin Watson down the sideline and Watson like is leaning in and Patrick throws the ball on the outside. Yeah. I think that's a miscommunication. I think Justin Watson has a post there, and for us offensive guys like usually when we have a big post that's usually going to run to the middle field and we get press single high man i've been at places it's a little bit of an assumption by me but i've been at places where you convert the post to a go route and so patrick throws it like a go route watson runs it like he doesn't see the coverage so that's number one and then the corner route the mvs that's incomplete i think in the third quarter patrick throws it like the like he wants he wants him to go higher to, like essentially towards the pylon instead of flatter, and I think that's more of an issue for me than the drops is like getting on the same page. And then I do think Brian Johnson called a really good second half for Philly, and I got to give him credit Boy, for that because they don't like him. The, no, he's <clears> nah, <throat> dude, like if you the internet go watch doesn't like the, I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm saying they the internet no. What are they? Who knows? Yeah, but like if it, if you go watch the Jalen Hurts run, D. Buttle can know this as well. Like the touchdown run, mm -hmm. it's on third down, first down. So if I ask D. Butt, what is who is Steve Spagnuolo's like identity and got to have it situations down here? It's like here comes pressure, pressure on first yeah. down. He brought all out pressure on second down. He brought all out pressure on third down. He brought all out pressure. All of it from the field. 
So Brian Johnson does a great job of thinking, okay, here comes pressure from the field. I run away. And then if you guys have the clip of third and five, it's it's the play before the Devontae Smith bomb to uh, like down to the one yard line. To me, that's the play of the game. Because again, in those situations, who's Steve Spagnola? Well, they're going to double team people. And he does an awesome job of motioning Devontae over. Devontae gets doubled on that play. And he does a great job of getting him into like a stack bunch. And the double team gets left all the way on the outside. Like those guys are covering the sideline and Devontae's open on third and five. For I, I think that is the play of the game. So I got to give Brian Johnson credit. Okay, let's go to the other side. I don't think we have that play. We'll try to find it for you by the end of this whole thing uh, because that was the play of the game in yeah. Dan Orlovsky's eyes. And you said something in that answer. is maybe the most TV answer I've ever heard said. Last night, I learned that the Chiefs were a better football team than the Eagles when the Eagles just beat the Chiefs. Yeah. That was one of maybe the most TV thing I've ever heard. It was awesome. And then you dive into it, it's like, oh, I get it. If they're both going to play perfect games, you feel like the Chiefs are further along than the Eagles are at this point. But the Eagles, you know, Roby punched that thing out. So even though he was – Great punch They out. make yeah. plays. Sure. You know what I mean? Like they're probably saying the reason why they didn't play a perfect game is because they were playing us. That's what the Eagles have done in a long, long time. Now let's talk about that guy right there, Travis Kelsey. So there's a large yeah. portion of that game last night where he didn't get the ball. You know, just Justin Watson guy, white, wearing number 80-somethings, getting the rock. What? And if you're just watching, you're like, oh, is that Travis? No. Oh, is that Travis? Oh. Hmm. Oh, is that Travis? It's not. <coughs> Aren't we at the point now, and I know he's getting double teamed and taken away on third down red zones where normally he would feast and everything. Aren't we at the time where Andy Reid needs to maybe drop some plays to make him open? You know what I mean? Like, isn't it? Because everything is always like, well... Travis runs Travis routes. He just kind of gets open. He figures it out. Well, when you have yeah. a safety in a corner or a linebacker and a safety on him every single time he does anything, he's never going to technically be open. Can we not get to the point where we Somebody. get creative with Travis Kelsey a little bit to maybe feed him some balls early so we get him in there? He's a skilled player. Yeah. He needs to get in there yeah. early, I think. Don't you think so? Yeah, great question. So my, my answer is two-part. So great yes. question. I think they are doing it a little bit, Pat. It's just that, you know, like – Teams are following him. Teams are dedicating people to him. I mean, he's getting double and triple teamed. You know, you can only design football plays so much or try to hide guys Got it. so many different ways. I do think, like, the the other part of this is they have tackle issues. Both of those tackles are not, not great right now, and they haven't been all season. Mm -hmm. Travis so often is the person that has to help in protection. Like, if you watch a lot of those plays – They'll either start Travis there or motion Travis down to. He had a great block last next night. To one of those. Did you see him on that right run play coming to the left? I think he turned sweat. Like it was like a full on. Not known for his blocking. Yeah. No. Travis not known but for his blocking. More for like pass protection, pot, Pat. Like oh, gotcha. for like a chip, a chip or something yeah, yeah, to try yeah. to help those guys. So, you know, when you have a little bit of the tackle issues, and then you're going against Philly, and he's getting double teamed. It's it's like if he's going to get double teamed. Why not take the double team, waste it, have him chip to help with the protection, and then allow some of those other guys? It, last night, it, the issue was not getting open last night. It, the, the issue was actually catching the rock. So I, I think they're trying, but it's they're in a tough situation with those tackles. Yeah, I think it was like a quarter, a full quarter before Travis was even targeted or yeah. anything. It was like, yeah. damn, dude, is Travis Kelsey playing yeah. football tonight? Mm -hmm. Let's get that guy the rock. Here's the play you were talking about. Play of the game. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the play of the game brought to you by Verizon here with Dan Orlovsky. Yeah, so watch, the, watch, watch the safety and the guy, the corner outside. D. Bud can talk to it. Look at, they both get stuck outside. He's getting, A.J. Brown and him both get double teamed there, the but they do an awesome job of getting him on the inside and then like the tight end widens and he widens with them so both the defenders kind of play over the top and that's why he becomes uncovered in the middle so it, again brian johnson calls that perfect play known okay spags you're, you're you double you double the two best guys in this situation and he gets him into a position where like he gives him a chance now Devante runs a really nice route but he gives him the best chance i think there's a replay coming here yep here we go yeah so look at look at watch watch how the those two to chief, see those oh, yeah. two chief defenders. Yeah, uh, that's, bad. that's bad by Edwards. Edwards, Edwards got to stay inside. That's the uh, we used to call it Zampezi follow. Um, but the, obviously that first one's gonna clear out with the crosser. And when you have that yeah. double team, Edwards, I don't know why you're outside if Watson's outside. So that's I think that's a see. Can we not give Travis Kelsey one of those? Yeah, <laughs> can we not give but Travis. See, but see, D but see the Devonte release, like yeah. him releasing outside. That has to help him just a little bit, right? Oh, for sure. That just helps. Uh, yeah. you know, the timing. That's part of the timing of the route. Yeah. And obviously. Yeah. But when you have 
play on two dedicated to it's really four over three. Yeah, right. So you're gonna have an extra guy. You yes. wanna be on the same on different leverages. You can't both be uh outside yeah. leverage. But that is a great play design and obviously knowing what's coming uh with Spags, great execution, great patience and a good throw from uh Hurts too. Yeah. What play of the game. Yeah. I mean I love I well, mean third down. The big play that, it's that's, third and five. That's slot they don't fade. get it. Play of the game. The slot fade's a great Seven play, eight. but like that's just Devontae just running by a safety. Yeah. You know, like obviously. That's the thing. That's the difference between us and Dan Orlovsky. Mm -hmm. We yeah. see a third and five like that. We go, hey, that was a big-time pickup. <laughs> Dan goes, play of the game. Boom, right there. Play of the game right there. That's why we love you. We appreciate you so much. Have an incredible day. You got NFL Live today like you did yesterday? <laughs> yeah, yesterday. Yeah, NFL Live today, Sports Center, And then uh, no work tomorrow, bub. No work tomorrow. Well, enjoy yourself. Wow. You deserve wow. it. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Orlovsky. Thank, Thank you, buddy. Dano. Thank you, Dan. Oh, Part of that Kelsey shit is, is nobody else puts any fear in the defense heart. And, you know, that, that last player, they set, Roby set on MVS. He runs by him, drops the ball. But, like, you game plan it. It's Kelsey, run game. But then once they get in that red area, it gets tougher. That's when Kelsey, you know, starts getting open. You design some things. Pacheco McKinnon, was McKinnon. moving. Yeah. But I don't know why they stopped giving him the And then they take him the out. Yeah. It, I, like, I, don't, I have nothing but respect for Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, everybody over there. But this dude runs so hard, <laughs> and he's getting nine-yard gains, and he's celebrating. Like, I appreciate the way this guy, everything he brings to the field whenever he's on there. And he's been like this since jump out of Rutgers. He runs through the ground every yep. single step, every time he has the ball. And in the first half, they're going, 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 going. Then they take him off the field. They bring in Tony at running back, which I assume that was a bye week ad. Like, hey, sure. we're going to get this guy mm -hmm. into the backfield, maybe add a little spunk. You ask him that. He did good there, too. And mm -hmm. then, But in, in return, you have to take Pacheco off the field, I guess. I, it wasn't – there's just a lot of stuff going on whenever you see a team not be as great as you expect them to be because they're the Kansas City Chiefs that you start, like, pointing at, mm -hmm. like, yeah. and this, and this, and this. And I think what me, Orlovsky, and maybe some others are saying, they'll figure it out. Yeah. They will figure it out over there. Patrick Mahomes nope. said so, – he gave an answer of some sort about how uh, – he was asked about how Tom Brady is – the regular season is about finding your identity. Mm -hmm. Like, that's all the regular season was for. Now, you need to win games, but let's find our identity. Let's get better for whenever football actually matters. I think it's a Bill Belichick method. Yeah. Okay, It isn't until Thanksgiving mm -hmm. that these games actually matter. I think this Chiefs team right now is still trying to figure out with this new team that we have. It's not going to look like the same team we had before, but with this new team, I think Andy Reid's going to be able to figure it out, personally. And until he doesn't, I will continue to pay him the respect that his brain is a big one. Well, and it's like the first Chiefs team, I feel like we've seen at least, where like the defense is a massive strength of the entire team. So you would think that you know it's probably harder to do in just saying it, but like if they just run the football and play defense, they're going to win so many games just because of how good they are on both sides of the ball. One of five teams on the AFC with three losses. That's at the top of the AFC right now. Yep. And then there's four lost teams, five lost yep. teams. There's even six and seven lost teams that are still in it because of the damn AFC being so damn tight. So is it fixable? Absolutely. Is the AFC gettable for everybody? Absolutely. Yeah. Even that Pittsburgh Steelers team yeah. with a brand new looking offense this weekend, Ty. Huh? Do you think part of it, though, like no disrespect to MVS, but like Dan saying like, hey, they, they just got to catch the ball and they will like drops have kind of plagued him throughout his entire career. Like, I mean, I, he was, you couldn't wait to get that out. There. No, I'm I, I loved MVS. I, I was sad to see him leave the Packers. I really was because he is a true, like, deep threat. But, like, he's he, this has been an issue of his for, for a while now. So, like, is it as easy as just, like, all of a sudden they're going to start rolling and, like, he is going to start catching these deep balls? Who knows? Uh, put some jugs machines out there. There yeah. you go. Need more jugs machines Man. in Kansas City. Use them. I think that's potentially the case. This hour has been brought to you by Verizon. Verizon has the most reliable 5G network that keeps getting better. There's no better time to test drive the network football fans rely on. Verizon 5G Ultra Wideband now reaches 200 million people and keeps growing. Give them a try for free. For 30 days. Whoa. Wow. Shout out to Verizon. Love that. 30 days free trial. Shout out to you all for watching in the next hour. We'll have AJ Hawk, Bye. Aaron Rodgers, Bye. and then hour three on YouTube and ESPN Plus, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, oh. <laughs> Governor? Arnold? That's a real deal. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Wow. All right, be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Take three. three. Hello and welcome to Office Championship Wrestling. Live in Indianapolis, Indiana. Tonight, we have a straight to hell match in which the devil will battle against our office wrestler, Dylan Boston. You might be wondering how we got here. Let's find out right now. And now, we have to make a deal with the devil. 
Yeah, no big deal. Classic trial by combat situation. We got our champion, Dylan Bostic. All he's got to do, win the match. One, two, three, and we're home safe. The only man that would take the job to protect us from the devil himself, Dylan Bostic. Like you mentioned, Pat, there's probably about five or six other guys we'd rather have in this position. But we'll take Bostic, I guess. Not only are all of our souls on the line, the Office Championship Wrestling Championship, presented by Natural Light, is also on the line. No, Jesus, the devil's no, trying to put Bostic right to hell. hell! I do not want to Good go God, to hell! No. Don't do Good it. God, no! Come on, Bostic, man! Oh, no. in hell, Pat. The goddamn Easter Bunny's out here! What the hell's he doing here? The Easter Bunny is obviously here to help Dylan Bostic. Wait a minute. No! No, no! The Easter Bunny's been on the devil's side this whole time! Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Jesus what the hell's Christ. Jesus Christ doing here? The power of Christ is compelling Dylan Bostic! Look at this, Pat! Jesus Christ is bringing Bostic back to life! Jesus is going insane! And now Bostic's kicking wholesale ass in the ring! Jesus Christ has come to help Dylan Bostic defeat the devil and defeat the Easter Bunny! What's gonna happen here? Good God Almighty, it looks like he's going up in the scissor lift! Jesus is lifting the scissor lift! Jesus is now telling Bostic to come down Don't do it, Bostic! Don't no. do it! Oh, oh my, my God. God! Oh, Bostic's dead! He's dead! You can't tell from home, but that scissor lift is about eight stories up, Pat! Eighty feet in the air! Oh, wait! He's tuning up the band! The devil! Super Jack! Into the casket! Into the, the, casket. the devil goes down! Jesus. The devil goes down! He shuts the casket! Straight back to hell! The devil goes straight back to hell where he belongs! With the assist from Jesus Christ of Nazareth! Dylan Bostic saves the PMI office's souls and wins the OCW Championship! The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pig! Damn it! <laughs> Your friend tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, November 21st, 2023, hour two of this program starts now. Football! Happened last night in a big way with the Eagles beating the Chiefs in a Super Bowl rematch on Monday Night Football in lovely Kansas City, Missouri. Now Jalen Hurts will continue to win games in an ugly fashion, and Patrick Mahomes now has to answer questions about their offense not being up to stuff. Huh. Although they're 7-3 and three and in a tie for lead in the AFC, are they good enough to win another Super Bowl? Are they good enough to continue this dynastic run that they're on? We shall see. I have faith. I have belief. But not everybody does. The talk the table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Sweet elephant. Hey, appreciate it. Is Dumbo the most famous elephant? I think so. I'd yeah, say. Right? Sure. Probably. Ooh, I'd say. I, I can't think of any other. For sure. There was that one that one did that super petty pee on uh, I saw on the internet. Yeah, there was one uh, elephant in India who destroyed a woman's uh, funeral yeah, after yeah. she messed with him. So I, I guess that elephant's pretty famous. It's Big uh, Al. Did you say Dumbo or Jumbo? Dumbo. Who's Big Al? Big Al. Isn't that Alabama's mascot? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're he, right. He's up there. Big Al. Big one Al. elephant, Lion King. I never once seen, you don't know his name. Yeah, but that's just that's just one scene. It's not a character. That's yeah. nine-year NFL famous. vet. It's pretty famous. Been seen by a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Nine-year NFL vet, Darius J. Ball. Everybody, Everybody, Bob. Sir, greatest Disney movie ever. Talk about Dumbo Drop. 
I think Dumba, the, the elephant, is probably the yeah. Best. Probably you can fly yeah. with his ears. I mean, that's pretty. One half of the hammer. Dad. Cowboys Town Diggs is here. Big time Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Big news out of Pittsburgh Steeler world this morning. Matthew Canada has been fired as the mm-hmm. offense coordinator of the Steelers, and in turn, Mike Sullivan will be calling plays, and Mr. Faulkner will be the offense coordinator. Yep. What does that mean? It means we're going to find out a lot about Kenny Pickett yeah. over mm-hmm. the next couple weeks. Not only us, but the Steelers and the Steelers fans as well. Joining us now is a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion. Champion, a Ryder Cup winner, a father of 10, president of Ohio, and a COVID survivor. Ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. A.J., firing of an offensive coordinator. Are you growing your hair out? Are we doing hair? Are you? Uh, huh. No, I, just, I need a haircut. It's not going to be for a while now. Thanksgiving really threw that off. So, yeah, it might, might grow it out for a little bit. Okay. Hey, could you imagine you just grow that thing straight yeah. out? Oh, oh, Bring yeah. it back. Yeah, the jawline will be and then, oh, mm-hmm. we get a whole thing going. Yep. That'll be yeah, awesome. Maybe. Firing of an offense coordinator middle of the season. Uh, what does that mean in your eyes? And how do you think the whole team will respond, A.J. Hawk? Well, especially for this being the first time in franchise history, correct, that they have fired a coordinator in season? 1941 is what the ESPN stats people said. First time a head coach or coordinator has been fired during the season by the Pittsburgh Steelers since 1941. Long time ago. Long time ago. Long time ago. Yeah, that's a big deal, obviously. And I I saw a lot of uh, Tom Wynn's presser saying it was all me. I was a bit surprised when he basically is taking all of it, saying, hey, I didn't even – Ask the GM or the owner. I just did this. Is that how operations normally go over there? Uh, I don't. We, it never, hasn't happened since 1941. Right. So that's I don't true. know if that's how it normally goes. But I think Tomlin has always been pseudo GM, head coach, decision maker, whenever he wanted, pretty much. Isn't that kind of how it's always been viewed over there? Yeah, but I was shocked to hear like you don't go to the owner and say, "Hey, Mr. Rooney, I'm I'm letting Matt Canada go today." Like I was shocked to hear that if that he didn't even tell them. Yeah, but also, he probably sent him a memo. Mm-hmm. There was They've been a- communicating throughout the season, I would imagine, where, okay, like, this is, we have to have plans for all kinds of situations. Yeah, send him a smoke signal, let him know it's coming. Like, hey, there's about to be some news. Just what like- is it? I just, <laughs> or who? The guy we all hate. Or you know, got rid of him. <laughs> Maybe he couldn't tell him because they would have said no. And then. So that was, there was mixed reports coming out of Pittsburgh this morning from like actual. Pittsburgh Steelers media, people that have covered the Pittsburgh Steelers for a long time, been in the building for a long time, know a lot of people that have either formerly played for the Steelers, worked for the Steelers, or currently working for the Steelers. The one report was Art Rooney II, Art Rooney named after his grandfather. He's the one that actually fired offense coordinator Matt Canna. Then that spurred other reporters of the Pittsburgh Steelers to be like, yeah, Art Rooney was the one that hired him. So, And then that led to the conversation like, oh, has Tomlin not been allowed to fire this guy this entire time? So maybe that is why Tomlin came out and was like, y'all better relax. Okay, I'm not. Yeah, I can fire a coach if I want to fire a coach. There's been a lot of chitter chatter around here. But he also said, and alluded to in a press conference that you talked about that started at noon today, as we want live. He basically said, "I do not like this because this makes him feel as if he's pawning blame off on somebody else as the head coach." I respected that take out of Mike Tomlin, AJ. Oh, absolutely. I know he he even said in his press, like with all transparency, like he, he talked about how tough of a decision it is, and it's true. Like. We look at them like they're not human. Some people dress up as them for Halloween at times Whoa. and want to mock the whole situation. But we know there's humans involved, and something like this affects a bunch of people down the line. So, yeah, it's a big deal to let a coordinator go. There are humans involved. He was not one of them. But oh, what? He, you said you were I just mean, hit. No, we, we literally just said we don't know if he's a good guy. Here's what Tony Biggs oh. tweeted today <laughs> as oh, soon no. as the news came out. and. That's him on the left there dressed up as just Matt Canada. That's what he said. Yep. yep. I'm just Matt Canada. Well, you look like you dress up like a devil. A little bit. No, no, no. Just Matt Matt Canada. Canada. This is how it is. And this is how Yinzers and Steelers fans have felt about the guy who got fired this morning for (laughs) some time. But basically, you just, you ripped off the Independence Day speech. Is that what happened? That's how you took that? Yeah, kind of. Is that what everybody, is that what everybody there's, else is there's saying? There's bits and pieces from there. Like, if you were to. You got influence a little bit. One of the best speeches of all time. You were to so Google good. it, some words would match. Yeah. Is that Pullman, Bill Pullman? Yeah, it's yeah. Bill Pullman. Okay, he he rallied America on it. <laughs> I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> Come on. 19th Dude, he started out the show, bro. 
He started out talking about centuries, 20, 21st century, yep. the history of dictators, this guy, walls, talking about the Berlin Wall going yep. down. That's how he described Matt Canna, like as a dictator that has been holding their happiness Bingo. as a sacrifice in Pittsburgh with his terrible play calling and kind of just besmirching the entire franchise yep. and organization. We had to go to fake grocery stores. Uh, they weren't real grocery stores because we're actually just felt, we were just fed crack and things like that. Slop. Yep. What? I didn't know you were going to double down on this. Thing. <laughs> yeah, went all the way to North Korea. Yeah, Thank I, you. I had no idea. Yeah, Kim Jong, they say he uh, he's quite a meth... Uh, Peddler. Yeah, big meth guy. Yeah, that's what they oh, say. Oh, really? That's yeah. what they say. We've been on top of the Jim Kong news long before long anybody else, and I don't know if now's the time, but we did commit <laughs> a good four to five months of our show to Kim Jong-un and the happenings yep, a lot of updates, around yep. North Korea. And just so happens, while we're in the middle of that, a lot of things started happening. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then also, this guy shot an 18 and 18 holes of golf. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> Holy oh. hell. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That, that, that was the stuff we started good. learning. Yep. He was an incredible fisherman, too. I think oh. he pulled the biggest fish out yep. of the... Oh, yeah. He dunked from the free throw line. I saw him dunk from the free throw line. Yeah, yep. there was a lot of things we were learning about him because he, he was crossing into sports. Yeah. So you're kind of forced yeah, to do he that. beat Rodman's ass in a game of one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, we didn't like it, but it was kind of our thing. But yeah, Tone basically called Matt Canada a dictator, and that's what he said. And Matt, so to say he's a human, we would like to echo that sentiment. And the way Tone speaks and dresses about Matt Canada is not necessarily how we feel, but we do think that there is a chance for real opportunity here for not only Pittsburgh Steelers but Kenny Pickett. They're still in the middle of it all, six and four, winning record. People would die to have that record right now in the AFC. When if you rattle off a couple wins. All of a sudden, you're climbing psh, 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 quickly in the conference standings. The Steelers could do that with that defense. Yeah, well, and we heard Dano. He said, really, the only thing they need to do to unlock it is Kenny Pickett just needs to realize, like, hey, I just got to confidently throw it more than five <laughs> yards down the field, and everything's going to be okay. And he hasn't been able to do that so far, but – who knows? Maybe Matt Canada was the guy who's kind of holding him back. That was the litmus test in uh, Dan Orlovsky's eyes. Yep. Kenny Pickett's just got to be able to complete passes of five and a half yards and more. <laughs> then he buried Brock Purdy. This is the NFL. And then he said, <laughs> yeah. you know, like guys like Brock Purdy, they don't have good arm talent. And no. they're able to, they're able to, <laughs> it was wild. Did he really? It was wild. I heard most of it. I didn't hear that part. Yeah, he said he's yeah. not throwing it through a windstorm or anything. And then he was like, oh. hey, Shata, rude boy, yeah, yeah man, to me. Man. He's, he, I was like, he came out of nowhere. <laughs> I was, yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. I was so flustered. Oh, I had no idea. It was great convo. It always is a good convo. Yeah, every time. Convo. Speaking of good convos, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk to a man who is defying all medical conversation. His return after an Achilles blow is something that the world is admiring from afar and from close range. Megan Rapino, in her last ever soccer game, blew her Achilles just a couple minutes in. And immediately afterwards, as she was trending number one on X and on Twitter, she said, I'm calling this guy to find out how I can recover quickly. That's going to be the new norm with how this guy's been handling this particular season. Ladies and gentlemen, the 39-year-old quarterback of the New York Jets, four-time MVP, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Yeah. How you doing, man? I'm good. Back in the rehab facility, man. Back in the Achilles factory. Okay, let's talk about the Achilles factory. You're in there. A lot of sports pundits have been chit-chatting about your return to the Jets, especially now with how bad the New York Jets have looked on television with all of us watching. Has there been a little bit of a conversation in your mind about slowing down rehab because maybe the Jets won't still be in it whenever you can finally get back on the field? No, not at all. I mean, uh, I find those two are mutually exclusive. You know, my... The speed at which I'm doing the rehab has been kind of the same from the beginning. It's, it's to push it as hard as we can every single day. And, you know, as long as we're not uh, stretching the Achilles, um, you know, we feel like we're in a good place. So I'm thankful to, uh, you know, Doc and, and Heather and AA and my IFC, you know, my IPC that's uh, inflating right now. My hey, it's a good machine. Yeah. That's a good machine. That machine's been doing it. All the modalities that we're doing. Um, but, no, we're going to push it as hard as we can. Uh Listen, there's been some four and six teams that have made runs over the years. Back in 2016, there was a, a team in in the NFC North that uh, people were counting out that went on a run. Ty probably remembers this one. And, oh, yeah. You know, won eight in a row and went to the uh, NFC Championship That's game. Right. There was a team in 2009 in the Big Apple, well, Jersey, that was four and six, finished nine and seven, went to the AFC Championship game. So... Listen, uh, the season is definitely not over. It's not dead. There's a lot left to play for. Uh, I'm excited about where I'm at in my rehab, 
and uh, things are progressing uh, as quickly as I thought they would once I've been able to uh, uh, to jog on a treadmill and excited about uh, getting back to the team and and uh, and seeing where I'm at. Okay, so you're saying uh, jog on a treadmill is what you're... What, there was a video. Jay Glazer had a couple updates. He said you're back December 2nd. Uh, that's kind of the goal. December 2nd is the goal. And also, you sent a video to the Jets where the Jets people were like, holy shit. Whoa. 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 <laughs> Whoa. That's what they were saying. What was the video? And December 2nd, actual date that you're trying to get back to football? That's a Saturday. Uh, it's also my birthday. Um... I'm not exactly sure where he got that date from. I have said hmm. uh, that I'd love to be, you know, trending towards practicing by my birthday. Maybe that, you uh. know, in the game of telephone got back that I wanted to, you know. But I don't think there's any reason in, in opening, uh, you know, designated to return off of IR on a Saturday um, unless you're going to activate me on a Sunday. So I, I don't oh. think that that's necessarily uh, the way the things are going uh, as far as specific dates. But... Yeah, I sent, uh, you know, I, I like to keep in touch with the guys and, and let them know what my progress is. So I just sent a couple of the boys uh, a video of me uh, on the treadmill. Um, as You know, they're interested in my rehab, where I'm at. So I haven't been back in, a, in uh, to the facility uh, in a few weeks. Obviously, we played Vegas, and then I, I wasn't back uh, in Buffalo. But um, just keeping them updated on where I'm at. Uh, can we run that video? Yeah, where is it? Uh, no, uh, I don't know how to do that. I would have to send you the video and then you'd have to run the video. Um, it's pretty easy. It's not, we could it's do nothing it. special. It's just me on a, on the Alter G, uh, running at, uh, um, you know, a certain mile per hour with a certain body, per, body weight per percentage. So. Okay, right. Don't want to run it though. If it was to happen to get to my phone, we do not want to run that for the people. Yeah, definitely don't want to do that. Okay, all right. It did look good though. From if it's a video that I saw, it is a hell of. Hey, you're doing it, dude. You are in the middle of doing it. Like that video. I'm not on the Jets, obviously. But when Jay Glazer said it, he saw some videos, they lost their mind. If it's the same video that I potentially just saw, like, hey, for real, it is bananas what you're doing right now. And you keep sandbagging too, saying no real developments in rehab, no real this, you know, kind of a slow week. And then all of a sudden it's just like, boom, boom, boom. You're crushing it, man. You're crushing it, man. Before AJ jumps in, I didn't see the uh, the Glazer. Uh, did he, he must have been on Fox. Is there a way I can get a reenactment from somebody on the panel? Or Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Is that... yeah, I Listen, I have... <laughs> It, within good reason. Okay, got Thorsten everywhere in New York. Obviously, I'm a fucking legend in New York. Can't oh, no. Oh, oh, Jay. Jay. Yes, he's got one. Oh, Jay. Jay. Yes. oh, no. Jay Glazer's not even on the show. Oh, yeah. Drop that ball. He's got That's one. That's all I wanted right there. Oh, okay. That's the first time I've done that. Thanks, guys. We got it. All right, AJ. Thanks, Jay. Hey. Wow. Hashtag Jay knew, didn't he? Yep. Jay knew. Yeah, had a clean Always play. does. Yeah, jeez. I, I think we he played did. Ty and yeah. Jay. No, Ty, Ty's still clean. That, that was not it. A half we get a half to... uh, We're at eight days, by the way, with no effort. That was our best. Wow. Wow. Is that the guy from... Is that the guy over there from Wachita? Or... <laughs> <laughs> Reporting live from Wachita. <laughs> Right it's the berries. Gonna, it's gonna be tough to leave, live that one down. Right the berries berry. face, Aaron. Right to his face. So every day now, because I'm because of rehab and it's fantastic. <laughs> and that was that was a good moment. Oh that boy, moment. it was good for the program. Yeah, yeah. It was electric. Good. Great for the program. Good. I mean, there's not a lot of times where Barry Sanders speaking where you're like, Barry, shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got to address something. What the hell did you just say? <laughs> what did you do? I was and off. I caught myself. I was gonna say it the right way. You were. Yeah. I'm like, oh, such that a weird. Sounds right. Which, uh, no, no, no. that's weird. <laughs> Gotta be Wachita. <laughs> Gotta be. Anyways, uh, all right, let's move along. Great to see you back. Great to hear you're almost back. Close to your birthday, too. It's cool stuff. AJ has a question for you. Hey, you've mentioned you want to strain your Achilles. You don't want to stretch it. I would assume at some point in the rehab process, you have to stretch that thing, right? <laughs> Age. Hey, okay, Age. that was almost as bad as Wachita, but I never said I want to strain. That's, I don't think that's a good thing. Strain my kids. You don't want to stretch, stretch it. We want. Stress. We don't want to stretch it. No, 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 no. Let's let's go back to what you actually said. You said okay. strain, right? Yeah. No, I don't want to strain my Achilles. I want like to stress it. Stress my Achilles, but I don't want to stretch my Achilles. So when do we stretch the Achilles? I would assume that's a, th a box you got to check before you try to get back on the field with the boys December 3rd. <laughs> it's coming up. Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> when do, I don't even know what the question was. I was still thinking when are we the, stretching this thing? We've been doing we a lot of stretching. We have to stretch eventually, right? When we've we got to stretch it eventually. Just got to keep strengthening it. We're strengthening it. A lot of it happens once I get my heel all the way on the ground, hmm. which usually doesn't happen for 12 weeks. Obviously, we're way ahead of kind of common protocol. So, um, but the, the jogging, I think, has exponentially improved the strength. And then it's kind of sped up like I thought it would uh, the rest of the healing. So um, after some weeks where it was kind of slow going, where I couldn't notice a lot of big gains, once I got on the treadmill and was able to increase the speed above a walking pace, uh, things have progressed pretty nicely the last few weeks. Okay, and every day that you run, I assume there's a, a full like post-run test. Like, how do we do? Is this thing swollen? Is there a reaction? What are those? What are the things we're looking for afterwards where we're checking boxes saying, yes, good workout, or, oh, we got to slow down a little bit? Well, you don't want any pain in the heel. Because it's anchored in the heel now, um, that can take some of the stress off of the uh, Achilles uh, as you're strengthening it and, and taking it through normal movements. So you're paying attention to heel pain, paying attention to soleus, and, and uh, right down the Achilles as, if there's any issues. And uh, there haven't been. I mean, it's been it's been really good. My my calf definitely gets uh, fatigued on both sides just because I haven't run, you know, in uh, so long. But uh, a lot of positives. Just it's been a lot of really positive days the last couple of weeks. Um, and honestly, that's why I didn't, you know, it's been so nice to be able to be around the guys. Um, and I've done, you know, multiple cross country flights to, to see those boys and I love it. And it, it, you know, gets me through some of the, the doldrums and the dog days of, of rehab, but it also, um, does kind of set the rehab back a little bit cause I'm flying 12 hours and then it kind of takes a day or two to kind of get back to neutral where I was. So because, uh, my return to, uh, uh, the Jets was uh, was imminent as far as spending the rest of the season with them. I felt like to be able to have, you know, a stretch of like ten straight days of rehab, especially with what I'm doing on the on the treadmill, it was in my best interest to not do, you know, the twelve hours of flying, get back to a few days of rehab, and then go back out. I felt like it was best to uh, to grind through these ten days. It sucked to not be there with the guys. Obviously, we had a rough performance, but um, I'm excited to get back there this week and, and see the fellas and and uh cheer them on and you know again we're not out of it a lot of people are going to count us out and and there's obviously been some changes but um a lot can happen a lot left in the season and and it just takes like i said in 2016 like i'm sure they said in 2009 sometimes it just takes one to kind of reset everything get guys back confident and and then you never know what can happen not only one game, one play, too, right? I think you've talked about that in the past, how it takes, like, one play that can really just spark it all. Obviously, Zach Wilson has been benched for the foreseeable future. They've also signed Trevor Simeon today. So, Tim Boyle, Simeon in that quarterback room, and uh, and uh, that's it. Yeah, those two and Zach. Yeah. Okay, and obviously... Yep. Right. December 2nd mm -hmm. on his birthday. Oh, yeah. This guy here. You see what happens to Zach? I assume you sent a message. But let's talk about Tim Boyle. There's been a lot of people chit-chatting about Tim Boyle. We know you are a massive fan of his. A lot of people are saying that's the only reason why he's potentially in the position that he's at because the stats don't, don't paint a great story for Tim Boyle anywhere over this whole thing. Why do you think he is the guy who has been not only in your quarterback room but in the NFL for a while, five years now I think at this point, where maybe some on-field performance in the past – hasn't looked as great. Is this offense just one that he understands well? And what do you expect from Tim Boyle in his game playing with the New York Jets here while we wait for your return? Well, first of all, you got to fix that graphic because it says Packers two years, one touchdown, 13 interceptions. I can promise you that's not accurate. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Good hey, enough. maybe. Fix the graphic enough. in the back, whoever, whoever uh, put that's together the that graphic. Right. That's the UConn that's stats for sure. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, it was just copy-pasted from the one above it there. Uh, yeah. All right. That's right. That I one got missed. He had 0-0 zero, zero for the Packers. He, he threw zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. Okay. So we added 13 interceptions to his world there. <laughs> that's a little bad out of the ground. That's, that's on it. Wow. We're part of the problem. Whoops. We're part of the problem. That's on us. Well, I think, I think first of all, you can't have it both ways. You, you can't uh, talk about certain players, whether it's a quarterback or a skilled player, about how great they did in the preseason and then, and then uh, you know, diminish it. 
uh, when it doesn't kind of fit your narrative. Um, preseason football is what it is. I always feel like the practices, the inter-squad stuff when you bring another team in are very, very important and, and great as far as evaluation. But the preseason matters as well. And if you watch the way that Tim played in the preseason, I think you'd be pretty damn impressed with the way that he commanded the offense, the throws that he made. Um, I thought he was accurate. I thought he was, um, uh, you know, anticipatory. Did some really good things. So some people like to, you know, not uh, – give a lot of credence to the preseason. That's fine. But in the live bullets, I thought he did really well. He's had a couple of chances over the years in Detroit and Chicago. Um, it's just about uh, understanding what we're trying to do and getting the ball out quickly and getting the ball into our guys' hands. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm happy for Tim. I love Tim. He's a great, he's a great dude. He cares about it. He's a gym rat, always has been. You know, there's been a few guys over the years, my backups, um, him being one of them, Scotty Tolzien being another one. Um, Matty Flynn, guys who – you know, really, uh, we're just kind of gym rats, always in there, gamers, you know, spend the time in, experts of the offense. Tim's always fit that mold. He's always been the guy. I remember the first time we were in uh, Green Bay with the Flores new staff came in, and, like, this, the first week there was, like, a test on the formations and stuff. And, I'm, you know, I'm old school West Coast. So I'm used to, you know, specific set of terms for them, and they're putting up south and swamp and stack and all these things. I don't know what the hell, uh, you know, I was just kind of guessing up there, and it was like one of those – um, test that we have on our on our iPad, and Tim got 100. percent And I was like, "What the hell are you been doing?" He said, "Study it." <laughs> so Tim has always been an expert of the offense and understood, um, you know, all the intricacies. Now just he's got to go out there and execute and, and uh, do it at a high level. Um, but uh, again, you know, we we uh, we need a spark, and obviously this was uh, the decision that was made. I feel for Zach. I love Zach. You know, Zach's. Such a great kid, and I do think he still has a bright future in the league. This has been a tough go for all of us. Uh, a lot of times in these situations, there's certain guys that got a scapegoat, and uh, I think there's enough blame to go around a number of different positions. You know, if you have ten guys doing it right on a play and one guy not, um, it's hard to hard to be efficient. Yeah, um, and, yeah. Go ahead. But, Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, Zach is taking a lot of heat, and now everybody's – you saying you think he's going to be good in the NFL still is a, a big statement because everybody's just assuming he's done, you know, because yeah. Coach Sala talked about it today or yesterday at the press conference about we'll handle this in the off season. So I don't think there's a plan to go back to Zach in this particular season. So then what is the next step? He might just get caught in that cycle, you know what I mean, where that, that, whole, that whole thing. You really never know in this league. You never know what could happen. Um, this was obviously not the way any of us thought this was going to go down. It was going to be me and my show and, and Zach getting to learn and watch it firsthand and not have the pressure to get go out there and play. And so obviously, you know, this is uh, disappointing. I, I have some, you know, personal guilt around the whole thing. I mean, I'm pissed that I wasn't able to play and frustrated that, you know, if I was out there and I feel like I'd be playing well, there would be obviously – different narratives around our team and Zach would again have the opportunity to learn and grow and see what it looks like um, uh, without the pressure on and, and being able to, to sit in those meetings and, and go through the season uh, and just kind of watch me in my process. So I'm, you know, disappointed and sad about that, but uh, it is what it is, the situation. And, um, you know, we're all going to support Tim and, and move forward, but we're also going to put our arms around Zach and love on him because he's a great kid and, and it's not all his fault. And, and, uh, you know, this is the way it goes sometimes. Yeah, the NFL is tough business. Great sport, tough business. I think it was your quote uh, in this entire tough, good, good sport, tough profession. I think is is how you kind of laid it out. And uh, when you described profession, <laughs> tough business. Oh, there it is. Good profession, tough business. Great mm -hmm. quote. But Zach Wilson is experiencing that. Let's talk about you watching the film. You know, we saw Robert Sala give an entire promo about the silent tape. You know how much yep. it means to me. It's just you. It's not the narratives. It's not in the crowd. It's not the commentary. It's just you in the film. When you watch that film, and you said you think that you, if you were playing, there'd be a different narrative about the Jets. Do you see an offense that you think, if you were to be dropped in there, would have success? Because a lot of people wonder if the offensive line that was being questioned before the season started is worth you coming back, even even if there is a chance for you to go on a playoff run, when you watch that film, you think to yourself, yes, this Jets offense can be good. If I was, or there's opportunity for this Jets offense to be good. If you were in there potentially as a master of this offense that you've known for 16 years with Hackett and the West coast system. Yeah. I mean, that's a tough question, Pat, because I think that that brings in a lot of, a lot of bus throwing. Um, ultimately it. uh, yeah, it's, a yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a hypothetical, it's a hypothetical thing. Listen, I I'm confident in my abilities and what I've accomplished in this league and, 
and uh, joked about some of my down years being career years for guys. But um, I, I do believe in, in what I'm capable of. I believe in the offense. Um, I think that there's obviously a lot that I can bring to the table based on my experience. You know, I got, uh, you know, I got some pelts on the wall. I've, I've done things in this offense where it allows me to to do some extra stuff that's in the offense. But it's you know, it's you got to kind of earn some of those things, uh, some of those adjustments, some of those. Uh, you know, little things you can do out there, but um, but no, I think to uh, we've obviously had a number of different offensive lines that have played um, a lot of injuries up front. Uh, you know, Makai even going down in the game, uh, you know, doesn't doesn't help either. So um, multiple left tackles, multiple. I think everybody except for Lake has you know missed significant time. So um, that definitely makes it tough. But uh, but who knows? It's hypothetical. I feel like you know. Obviously, I've had success in this offense and would expect to if I was playing, but uh, but I'm not going to throw anybody on the bus. Hey, that was a good answer because what you said about the Giants last week after Ty's question, if you do recall, mm-hmm. that was unbelievable. They would they cut two seconds of me repeating what the question was. <laughs> yeah. and it, the thing though is, it, I feel like we're getting to a point where people are like, that's not real. You know, yeah, it mm-hmm. feels like on the internet now yes. we're getting to a point where people are like, nah. Meh, yeah, that's good, I think, for society as a whole, not just obviously this particular program. Felt like nobody really believed it, you know. I hope not, especially all these deep fakes. The deep fake on oh. Jim Harbaugh is pretty amazing. Oh. From his press conference. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it and as a host of a live show. It's going to get real difficult yeah. going yeah. forward on what's real and what's not. AI, AI's good. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. AI is a talented video shop editor. I mean, they are very good, but yeah. It's only getting better and better. But I think people are sticking up for the truth, hopefully, which obviously isn't the norm in recent history. Go ahead, AJ. Aaron, what are your thoughts on AI and all this, everything going on? I would assume you have some strong beliefs on this. And where do you think, like, what is the end game? Are we okay? Are we going to be safe? That's a great question. Great question. It depends. I think there's some issues with uh, with AI for sure. He has an answer. Um, yes. You've thought about this. That's what this sounds like. Floor is yours. Very okay. pumped about I, this. I think the thing that I do feel pretty good about is there's certain fields that AI just can't replicate the human experience. And I would hope that there's still a lot of areas, especially in, in art and entertainment, where AI can't uh, eliminate those jobs. I think the freedom of expression that we see in art, whether it's music or painting or, or sculpture or of course. Um, whatever that stuff is just football. so uniquely human. Football. And I hope that that, uh, although there are some amazing AI programs that can do things for you in that realm, there's nothing like uh, the human uh, uh, subjective uh, interpretation of life uh, as expressed through art. So I hope that that uh, that doesn't change. Um, I think we've all seen a lot of interesting movies around AI that show uh, maybe more of a uh, dystopian uh, future around it. Um, uh, you know, the iRobot is one that comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shout out. Yep. Shout out Will Smith I think doing it. Will Smith doing it. Yeah. yeah. Will Smith doing anytime, it. anytime you put, uh, you know, the powers that be in charge of things that can directly affect our life, you got to be really careful because unchecked power can definitely, oh. definitely corrupt. So, oh, you know, well, I, I wouldn't trust, yep. I wouldn't trust a, a whole lot of uh, those powers mm-hmm. that be to make any decisions on the behalf of humanity that are in the humanity's best interest. So, yeah. um, I think we, uh, we got to keep, uh, taking care of the humans at this point. Hell yeah. And, uh, yeah. Hell be yeah. smart about how much AI. Humans, 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 humans. We're doing it. We're the ones. It's us. That's what we got to remember out here. I mean, but how many people are want to get, want to get linked up to a computer in their brain and have every inch of Google's, database in their mind at an instant uh that'll be interesting people are already getting you know their their bank account stuff chipped into their their body as well i think it's it's a slippery slope at some point yeah who's doing that everything just and you see that new phone that the apple um i'll call them traders because they left apple to go create something to compete with apple uh but they're super big brains former execs they got this thing now it's like a little clip and it just shoots, and it's your home screens on your hand all of a sudden. So, like, it's a phone. Whoa. Yeah, you just go ahead and it plugs in the whole thing. I think that's what the future looks like. Or if you don't have a cool. hand, can you still? Well, I think you shoot on your yeah, arm, yeah. your nub. Yeah. Under the nub. Whatever it is. Yep. On right. your other hand, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's Honestly, that's a good so question. Yeah, I have no hands. I just want everyone to be No arms, no legs. Yeah, yeah, if you got 
Girl, I want you to do it. Yeah, I mean, it yeah, the pen doesn't work if you do it with no hands. No. It doesn't work. It's like a bed sheet, maybe. Somebody's going to have to walk around with it. Yeah, they're just going to be taker. Well, no, I'm assuming it's efficient. You, you got to be no rocked arms up. or no legs. You're. I don't think. You're Anyways, you, what you wanted to say, Aaron, and I don't You're think Bluetooth. I cut you off before you could get to it. The AIs can't play football. Nope. Nope. End of story. <laughs> that is all we need to talk about. And Not that, yet. that is. What? They never can, AJ. Yeah, watch it. Never can play football. You know it. Well, I'm saying, I'm sure with the, the, the circles Aaron runs in, he probably sees some of those super high functioning robots that might fool you a few times. Hey, that might be a human. That is true, Aaron. What, huh. what do you know over there in those high, high circles that you mm-hmm. fly around in yeah. over there in LA? I don't, I don't know what he's talking about, but. Um, the AI has done a lot. Has done a lot of good though. There's a lot, a, a lot of really good things sure. that the AI has done. So we can't, you know, we can't throw that away. But um, just got to be careful with uh, unchecked technological developments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, concur. Uh, I'm excited to hear. I'll just stop right there. Yeah, you were really going. Well, you went like this. Mm-hmm. You really went, and then you brought it all the way back home, oh, yeah. right back into the bread basket. Yeah. You know what I mean? You did. It was a fantastic piece of work as you're. Healing a torn Achilles. Let's get back to football chatter chatter. Uh, Tom Brady was on the Stephen A. Smith show, and he talked about mediocrity around the NFL. We actually have the clip. I don't know if you've seen it. Here's Tom Brady chit-chatting about the current state of the NFL. I I think there's a lot of mediocrity in today's NFL. I don't see the excellence that I saw in the past. Why not? And Why not? I think the coaching isn't as, as good as it was. I don't think the development of young players is as good as it was. The rules have allowed a lot of bad habits to get into the actual performance of the game Mm -hmm. so i just think the product in my opinion is less than what it's been i think i look at a lot of players like ray lewis and rodney harrison and ronnie lott and guys that impacted the game in in a certain way and every hit they would have made would have been a penalty Mm. you hear coaches complaining about their own player being tackled and not necessarily why don't they talk to their player about how to protect themselves we used to work on the fundamentals of those things all the time now they're trying to be regulated all the time offensive players need to protect themselves it's not up to a defensive player to protect the offensive player. A defensive player needs to protect himself. I didn't throw the ball to certain areas because I was afraid players were going to get knocked out. Mm-hmm. That's the reality. Wow. I didn't throw it to the middle when I played Ray Lewis because you knock him out of the game and I couldn't afford to lose a good player. Mm, Aaron, do you agree with that? And uh, what do you think lead, is leading up to that? Is it the young guys can't handle the same things? You guys can handle back and kind of – you're kind of one of the last of the Mohicans – of the older, the old guard, Peyton, Tom, all you guys doing those things. What do you think is leading to that? Joe Flacco. Seven. Thank um, you. Footsteps. My bad. My bad. I left footsteps out. Sorry. Phil. Matt, Matt, Matt Ryan. Was great. Was Drew Brees. Matty Ice. Seven. Sorry. Big Ben. Uh, great question. I saw the clip, and definitely I think as much as anything, I agree with the last thing that he said, and it's that the rule changes have created a lot of bad habits. And, you know, when I was a young player, too, the greatest fear you have as a quarterback is getting one of your guys hurt. You know, throwing the ball high over the middle, exposing the guy and him getting rocked and him leaving the game. That's just That was your biggest fear. So you were smart about certain plays and throws of just not making them. And I think, you know, if I'm looking at this from a real big picture, like there's a softening of society that uh, oh, has definitely yeah. – yeah caused uh things like this look at all the sports you know what, what happened to hockey hockey is not doesn't have the enforcer position Whoa. anymore why because we need the fighting out of hockey it's too violent well, stage you know and people don't want to see the violence on tv i think people want to see football be a collision sport um and not you know to where guys are getting mangled on the field but they enjoy the big hits and there's certain players who you just knew were big hitters and would push you know push the line of what's a cheap shot and, and what's a legit hit. But it's tough to play defense in the league. It is really tough. You know, I saw a couple of calls last night and just thinking, you know, that was not how it used to be. You know, you used to play the Lions, you know, you're getting rocked. You know, uh, just about every snap you're taking, uh, dropping back. You're getting, you're getting hit, you're getting pushed, you know. And, you know, if you go back and look at some of the film on some of those games, I'm talking like 08, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah. Um, the game was refed definitely a little bit different back then. Um, is it better in certain areas for player safety? 100%. Uh, have we gone too far in certain rules? 100% as well. And I think it's really hard to play defense. It's really hard to figure out the strike zone, especially with the moving player. I think we've created bad habits in, 
in the you know the uh, some of the reads and the zero fear of throwing over the middle. I think you know where uh, some of the quarterbacks uh, are getting rewarded for sliding late at times and, and taking very light shots that become 15 yard penalties. Um, obviously, Kareem Jackson is in the news for another you know big hit that's putting him on suspension. Um, you know, I, it's that's a running it's back. A, it's a hard hit. Yeah. Does he? You know. Is it intentional? I don't know. I mean, he's got a bad rap now. Some of these hits, I feel like the hit in Green Bay game was was probably unnecessary. Um, you know, as far as like, he, it seemed like he had some time to think about that one. But things are happening so quick in the league. Who am I to judge? I haven't played defense. I, I don't know what it's like to, in a moment, have to change your strike zone significantly or think you're going to hit a guy in a certain spot and be able to have your eyes open the entire time to move your spot slightly or take your head just slight to the left. So you're not hitting the guy in the head. It's very difficult to play defense, and I think there's some intent involved uh, in most of these hits that it's not malicious intent. Uh, it's you know, it's part of the collision nature of the sport. Um, do you go back now and review plays and try and figure out intent? That creates a whole interesting can of worms that they couldn't handle a few years back when they tried to review pass interference. Well, it, it was, we all it could. Was, we all could. I, I know, but but I've said this many times, and I'll say it again. You know, there's a lot of great referees in the NFL. There's a lot of great ones who've retired over the last, you know, good bit. And the majority of those great ones who retired are on TV now because the money is high and they can do great. And we've talked about this many, many times. Gene Steratore is phenomenal, right? But if they could give Gene or Dean or Mike Pereira or Terry McCauley, these guys who were fantastic NFL refs, the opportunity to kind of take that over with the right type of pay and then they were willing to do it, I think you could see some interesting ability to make these a little bit more interpretable, a little bit, uh, you know, uh, um, more in the nature of the rule and, uh, you know, maybe change some of these bad habits that I think have been created. But um, Yeah, the two, names you didn't the, mention, hey, the two names you didn't mention from the official standpoint, Walt Anderson, Alberta River on. They're the ones that have been in charge. You know, all those good refs you just said, TV, 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 TV. Uh, who's in charge of doing the pass interference thing we do it first? Oh, Bartho River on. Yeah, he's, he's the guy that's going to do it. Listen, I like, I like Walt. I always like yeah, Walt. I don't. <laughs> okay, I like both Walt. I like him, Walt Coleman. I like Walt Coleman. Um, Walt Anderson. There's, a, there's been a lot of great ones. And, and you know, Jeff Triplett, uh, Mike Carey. There's a lot of guys who retired over the last 10 or 15 years. They were a big part of my career, and, and I appreciate – those guys, but but you need to get one of those guys, in my opinion, to get Gene because he's the best. Get him in a position where you pay him enough money, whatever the hell he wants, just so it's you can interpret the rules. I think in the true nature of, of how it needs to be interpreted. And honestly, the refs would be great with that. I think I think the refs would would love that. Um, and I think Gene could do a great job, and he explains things really well on TV. But you'd have to give him the right kind of money, and and have to give him the opportunity to. Uh, to enact some some real change, but I think in in the long run, be in the best interest of the sport moving forward. So we don't keep going down a slippery slope of really taking the quarterback into more of a flag football environment. Which, listen, I mean, maybe there's some guys that want it. I never wanted it. Like I feel like being being hit is part of the game, and, and obviously I've taken some shots. And one of the shots I took changed one of the rules. You know, I got hit by a bar. I didn't think that was a dirty hit by a bar. I was more upset. I felt like he flipped me off after the play, which I guess we <laughs> went back and talked about it. He hadn't actually done that. Um, or actually, I think I flipped him off. He gave me the socket sign. Um, but I guess it wasn't in reference to each other, so we cleared that up. And, and, uh, had I was telling somebody else to suck it. Yeah, not you. Yeah, I was telling you to suck it. I just, I, you already did suck it. I just sacked you. <laughs> I was talking to somebody else. But I didn't, suck feel like, I didn't feel like it was a dirty hit. There was, you know, I didn't get the ball out quick enough. He was able to grab me in a certain way. And it was, unfortunately, a football, a football play that went bad for me. Um, you know, Tom got hit low and lost his ACL. You know, I don't know if that was an intentional shot down there. I think cleaning that part of it up. But then, you know, the way you can't hit guys now, guys are going low more. I don't know if that creates more injuries. You have to go and look at that or more more issues. But um, I think it's really hard to play defense. And I don't know if there's a clear-cut, you know, way of changing things. Um, but uh, people enjoy the collision part of it. Nobody wants, you know, the crazy – the crazy, you know, spearing out there, but I think there's there's a happy medium somewhere in the middle. Probably. Where was it in college this weekend? There was a guy in college that actually said, "Hey, here's video for you oh, guys yeah. to show." Boston College, that pit on the yeah. targeting. He, this dude, safety, comes flying in and literally jumps like dolphin out of water 
with helmet looking for somebody else's helmet. It's like in the middle of it, it's like, all right, that is, we believe that the intent there seems to be helmet to helmet. And there is a zero use of a hand or a shoulder in this entire thing. But I think intent can get read. And you talk about Gene Steratore being the guy with the feel and being the right guy. They had Walt Anderson dropping a Monday Night Football. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Walt Anderson dropped in a Monday Night Football and said, the reason why we called this was this. It's like Gene not only being on CBS, but being on everywhere, especially in his primetime games where most people are watching, that's good for everybody. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and handle that, Aaron. Let's do that. I think it'd be great. I really do. And I think Terry does a really good job on TV as well. And, um, you know, there, there's some, some really good ones who have moved on uh, that could help it. But it would, it would take the NFL wanting to make a change and then not being cheap and paying. Yeah. Well. You know, we saw what happens when they were a little cheap to the referees back uh, mm -hmm. you know, a few years Ooh. back when we had some. That's right. That's some interesting people, but they'd have to, you know, not like they don't have the money, like pay Gene or Terry or one of these guys, you know, the right amount of money to, uh, to just go through and see and then practice them, practice them in the preseason and see what works. If it doesn't work, scrap it. But, but you got to work on it. You said with, you know, sports are evolving now. Baseball, you know, is not the most interesting sport, I think, for many of us to watch, but they did a good job He's on speeding up, yeah. uh, speeding up the game with some of this stuff. And, I'll watch it and well. strike zone stuff has been interesting. At least they made a little box for the, uh, for the viewer at home to check out. But there's, there's ways of, of maybe moving this forward that don't lose the collision nature of the sport that people really enjoy um, because that's part of it. You know, we realize we're putting our bodies on the line. I think that's part of the thrill. There's no one that, that uh, you are a, a, a kind of a modern-day gladiator. But if we keep going down this path, especially with quarterbacks, there's going to be flag football on us and and, uh, and uh, tackling in a, you know, one-foot uh, tackle zone on defense, which makes things uh, – not as enjoyable, I don't think. And I think what Tom's saying is going to make worse football. And that's what we need to uh, remember whenever we're adjusting all these things. What does 10 years look like now uh, for the best game in the world? Speaking of change and evolving, the Pittsburgh Steelers did that today. We were talking about it whenever you joined us. You did not get a chance to say anything. But I think Tone Diggs is going to ask you a question about that. Yeah, Aaron, earlier you were talking about when like a quarterback change, a spark, a scapegoat. Um, now two offensive coordinators have been fired, Ken Dorsey and Matt Canada. Um, I don't think you've ever had to go through that in the middle of the season. I assume not. Uh, I could be wrong there, though. But like as a as a quarterback, how does that affect you in the rest of the season? Is it actually something where the offense can get better with a new coordinator and change if, if it's the same offense, basically? It's tough. I mean, I think a lot of times it gets kind of overblown a little bit because I don't know how much you can change in the middle of the season. Now, if you did it before a bye week and you had a whole you know side kind of ideas – that you maybe didn't get to that you wanted to implement and had two weeks to kind of put that in and might change things. But week to week, there's just not a ton you can do. It's more just the flow of the plays, maybe some input here and there. Um, I think there's a lot of like guilt that, that comes along with it. And, uh, you know, especially if you're pulling the trigger, um, you know, the only thing I dealt uh, with like that in, in my time was when, uh, when Mike got let go in 2018, when we were four and seven, we were, you know, we were crappy and, and things weren't going well. We were struggling, and Mike was there forever, and you know, develop a relationship with a, mm -hmm. with a guy, and uh, it sucks, you know, because you just feel responsible. And uh, there's, you know, then Joe came in, and, and there's, you know, it's just everything's just Tad has just a, a tinge of, of newness to it, um, but not a lot, whole lot can change. You know, this play callers are a little different, but in the end, you call plays based on the personnel that you have. And, uh, you know, where you're limited in some areas doesn't mean you can just totally scrap the entire offense and, and do new things. You're still trying to be efficient and effective. And, um, you know, I thought Josh uh, played good uh, the other night. Uh, you know, I had a conversation uh, with him, and um, I thought, uh, you know, he made good decisions. Sometimes it can be a reset for the guy calling the plays. We're like, okay, and like, now that's out of there. Now it's almost like, oh, now it's on me. And some people do really well with that, where the pressure amps up. Okay, now they, they made a scapegoat. They fired somebody. They made a change. Now the, the pressure goes up to the next person in line, which is usually the quarterback pulling the trigger. Now he's got to uh, you know, play better. And, and I think Josh is a, is a great competitor, and I'm sure there was some of that, you know, the guilt and the frustration of, of uh, a buddy getting let go and now like hey no excuses now i gotta play better and i think he went out and played pretty damn good yeah and we'll see what kenny pickett does mm -hmm. huh here we go kenny pickett got the way to pittsburgh on yeah. his shoulders yep good luck kenny. those bridges in uh, any city in the in the world i think it's known as the bridge city 
Them or Venice. Uh, them or Venice. Might have. Them or Venice. Yeah, you get it. Anyways, whole way to all those bridges on the shoulder yeah. of Kenny. Yeah. It was nice to see Josh Allen having fun again. It looked like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It looked yeah. like he was having more fun. It wasn't that nice. It was, wasn't it? That's a nice thing. <laughs> it wasn't that nice. What do you mean? Well, I love Josh, but uh, definitely wasn't pulling for him to have a lot of fun. <laughs> Dude, they, they're, the, you need to get back over there because with everything that happened in that game with the Bills – and obviously with the bounce back of the Bills against the Jets' defense and what the Jets' defense has done. Quentin Williams was upset on the sideline. You know, he was yelling at people. Then obviously now Zach's out. Hack's doing this with his record of how it's going. It's like you're going back into a place that if you were – you and the Jets were able to turn this around. Man. What a story. Hey, what a story. That could be huh? – that could be everybody on the Jets as happy as Josh was the other yeah. night. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That could be the whole thing, Aaron. Well, that's the thing. And now, you know – it, it puts – when you make a change, whether it's a quarterback or coordinator or even coach in the middle of the season, everybody else gets put on notice. Mm-hmm. And some people do that really well and some people some people shrink. So we need people to step up in the moment and uh, and take ownership of it and, and kind of put their put their name on the line. You know, I feel like that's part of what happened in, in 16 is – and nobody believed that we could run the table. But when I said that – one, I believed it, and I didn't think a lot of people did. But two, I said, there's a lot of shit going around right now, and a lot of people are taking shots at me and Mike and our offense. I'm going to I'm gonna take a little more of this. Maybe if I just – once I say this, you know, now the spotlight on me gets even bigger. So now how am I going to respond? But maybe the spotlight on anybody else shrinks a little bit. Maybe guys play a little more free. So I'd love to see, uh, you know, our guys step up and, and – and somebody put it on themselves and say, "I'm gonna make. I'm gonna be the reason we win this week. I'm gonna be the reason we win." Um, and hopefully, everybody can play a little bit looser and go out there and be free. And uh, nobody's expecting us to win. Um, that's a dangerous position to be in. So uh, I love Quinnen. I love his his fire. I love his passion, his leadership. And if he's yelling and, and getting going, because he's generally not the loudest person. Love it. We need it. We need a fire. We need it from him. We need it from CJ. We need it from Sauce, DJ, JJ, right. uh, Quincy. Right. We need our boys, TA. We need our right. boys to step up and and uh, on that side of the ball and, and be ballers. And offensively, we gotta we got to step up. And somebody's taking on themselves. So I'm going to be the reason we win this week. Tim Boyle. Hell, Hell yeah. Maybe it's Tim Boyle. Go ahead, AJ. Hey, wh- what has it been like, honestly, not playing this year and sitting out? And we know, like, every week you come on here and – we get to do all this, and you're so detailed in everything you're doing with your rehab. But when you're sitting there and you're not rehabbing, like, what's it like not being there, not being on the team? We hear about how tough it is, obviously, when you're away from your squad and you're injured. What is that like for people that other people that may be going through injuries around the league? Yeah, it's awful most days, to be honest. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think you have to find some beauty in the, in the midst of it. Um, a lot of people have said, you know, everything happens for a reason. You know, and, and that's a that's their calling card, and I've just never really subscribed to that uh, specific uh, thought process. I believe life is happening all the time, not happening to me. That's a victim mentality. But life is happening, and all we can do is is determine how we respond to the experiences that we're going through. And so I've tried to respond in as positive a way as I can, and and to manifest what I want through my rehab, and to be available to my teammates to clear my head. To contemplate my life in the league and, and uh, you know my desire to still be competitive at, at the highest level that's been great but overall it's been it's been difficult I think in the in the midst of, of it there's been some beautiful um, you know experiences that I've had and, and reconnections with some with some friends that wouldn't have happened had I been in Jersey the entire time so I'm thankful for those experiences thankful for the people in my life that stepped up for me when I was uh, you know going through the sadness and the frustration of this injury um, but this is not how I thought that uh, you know my destiny was going to go this year. So it's been it's been difficult. But uh, life is about how you respond to the adversity in those situations, and um, there's a lot of lessons to be learned in this. I like to think that a lot of lessons could have been learned without having to go through a major Achilles injury. But um, I am uh, I'm thankful for uh, what I've learned during this time. But it just makes me miss the game that much more. Miss being around the guys and, and uh, excited about getting back there soon. 
Okay, so this is like, I don't want to say reignited, but even more so fueled the fire of when I came out of that darkness and decided that I wanted to continue to play, right decision, we're going to play for another 10 years? Is that what we're thinking right now? I think that there was a thought immediately after the injury, this is it. This is, I'm done. I can't go through this rehab. I can't, you know, I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> and I did a lot of like soul searching and praying that night. And I woke up in the morning and felt like, nah, nah I'm coming back. You know, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to, I'm going to climb the mountain one more time. And I'm thankful for, uh, again, for all the people who reached out, for the people that were praying for me and supporting me and sending me nice messages and checking on me. It's been really, really special um, just to reconnect with so many of those people who reached out during this time. Uh, it's reignited uh, my love for it because I've been in kind of what it feels like to be retired. I've been away from the team, you know, for much of this uh, this 10 weeks other than seeing them on some game days. And I've never, you know, never uh, not with my squad in the fall. I have never made my fall schedule since I was, you know, in high school playing ball. So um, so I've gotten a look at what that uh, feels like, and I'm not ready for that. I, I still feel like I've got uh, a few good years left and can still play at a high level and, and look forward to uh, – uh, to get a chance to show that. Being a non-football human, hate it. Can't wait to get back. Yeah. We can't wait to watch you continue to grind it out. We appreciate you, brother. Happy Thanksgiving and uh, mm -hmm. happy early birthday. Hot's yeah. coming up. Yeah. December 2nd, Jay Glazer, breaking the news. Thanksgiving to you guys. Great time to uh, count your blessings, not what you don't have this week. So thankful for all you guys. I know you guys got a lot to be thankful for as well. And... Uh, yeah, I'm also thankful, you know, to uh, – I can't believe they didn't come in today, but I heard that, that uh, Trey and J.K. were going to try and jump in on this interview and, and hear the Achilles factor. They didn't. So, uh, But I'm thankful for those guys and everybody here. We're all grinding, supporting each other, encouraging each other. And uh, like you always say, you know, be a friend. Tell a friend something nice that might change their life. So uh, thanks for all the people that reached out and did that for me this fall. And oh, yeah. thank you to you guys for keep spreading uh, the good word. And – and to everybody in Wichita who's uh, Damn right. who's supporting us as well, like uh, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Damn right. From Wichita all the way to the Achilles factory in California. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can't thank you enough. You're the best, dude. Happy Thanksgiving, ladies and gentlemen. And safe trip back to Jersey this week. Aaron Rodgers. Yay! I think we hit the heart out. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. I think Nose. we hit it again. A little bit of music there at the end. I completely forgot about it because the answer he was giving, obviously, was so deep, you know? Mm -hmm. He's reignited his love for sport. Different perspective whenever you have it taken away from you. He said he hasn't planned his own fall since high school, which is obviously an incredible thing that people have to get past whenever they decide to retire. It's a whole new world, whole new life. He dabbled with it. He hates it. I can't wait to continue <laughs> to play football. For all the people that are saying, he needs to stop trying to want to come back, it's like, sounds like it's all the motherfucker knows. Yeah. Sounds like that is literally all he knows. Speaking of all I know is while we were talking to Aaron, saw a couple posts on the internet. Darius Shaquille Leonard has been released from the Indianapolis Colts. Yes. Whoa. The all-pro potential defensive MVP candidate mm -hmm. just a few years ago. A man who signed a massive deal with the Indianapolis Colts just a couple years back who has had a ankle injury for the last few years that was actually a nerve injury mm -hmm. where they actually had to do a surgery in his back at one point to kind of get it figured out so he could get back to being the football player that he was during the defensive MVP thing. And then Gus Bradley comes in while he's recovering from all these different injuries, puts in a different defense. So whenever Shaq misses like an entire season pretty much, this is the first year of a brand new defense, one in which he has not been up for defensive MVP. That was Eberflus's defense, who was in Chicago. So then whenever Shaq comes back, still introduced last when the defense gets introduced yep. at Lucas Oil Stadium. Still the guy that everybody in Indy loves, the maniac. We mm -hmm. love Shaq. This is our guy. We missed him the year he's out. He comes back. It's almost like he never had a place in the Gus Bradley defense that had already been created over the year that he missed. Zaire Franklin, fellow Q-Dog, alongside Shaquille Leonard, kind of took his spot, ran with it, was beloved, leads the NFL in tackling at certain points. He does his thing. Mm -hmm. And there was just never a spot, for whatever reason, for Shaq Leonard in that defense. We would watch live, and on third downs, Shaq would be leaving the field as opposed to coming on the field. Still getting introduced last out of the tunnel whenever the defense would get introduced. Just not really making as many plays as he had in the 
pass, but also not being on the field for as many plays as he had in the past. Really weird situation. Have no idea how we got to this point. I love Shaq. I was very grateful that we got to watch Shaq play here in Indianapolis. Yep. But if you've been paying attention in the last two years, it has not been like a, a good situation football-wise for these two together. And I think injuries are a part of it, but I think transition was yeah. a part of it. And I think maybe a, a fresh spot will be good for him but i have no idea to yeah i uh, hope so um first thing you know hope he's fully healthy or, or gets back fully healthy because shaq is he's a in my opinion he's like a rhythm player almost like one of those running backs that you know you get him a couple carries take him out get it like they don't work well you get him a few carries and he's always going to make that spa splash play that's who uh maniac is at, at his peak powers and hopefully he finds that play somewhere else but you mentioned a lot of it you missed that time and Zaire Franklin, who was kind of a special teamer, special teams captain up to that point, once he got that opportunity, he never looked back, leading the league in tackles this year from wire to wire pretty much. EJ Speed has stepped up, played some good football. And we've seen Leonard uh, Shaquille the last few weeks, you know, kind of talking to the media and, and, you know, letting them know, like, he's disgruntled about his playing time. So hopefully he finds a fresh start. And uh, obviously, hopefully, the Colts continue to uh, be successful in defense as well. AJ, he was getting that punch whenever he was playing. He, he, he I don't want to say, like, obviously, Peanut Tillman will always be remembered for it. But Darius was just like every single game. There was a pick or a turnover or yeah. a punch out yeah. or something taking place there. Jim Irsay has responded to the release here uh, with a tweet of his own saying, tough business, I believe, is the caption of this particular tweet. Yep, tough business with a heart with his quote that says, Colts Nation will always remember the Maniacs' power palpable energy on the field with each tackle, interception, punch out, and fumble recovery. Off the field, he's a servant leader and assisted numerous families in both his hometown and the Indianapolis Colts community. We're thankful for Shaq and the con contributions he made to our organization. We wish him and his beautiful family the best moving forward. Well, I'll be. Yeah, sure. Here's the money, AJ. Here's the money. Some team will owe him $6.5 million if they pick him up off of waivers for the rest of this particular year. I'm sorry, $6.11 million for the remainder of the season. Next year, he's under contract. 2025, he's under contract. And 2026, he's under contract. But I'm not sure how many, much of that is guaranteed and how much of it is just salary and everything like that. I think there's another $6.5 million due next year, I believe, is the next tweet in that uh, – Group text, yeah. Shaquille Leonard is making 15.7 guaranteed base salary, about six due for the rest. Has another 6.5 guaranteed for injury in 2024. So it's hard to imagine he gets claimed. In all likelihood, he'll clear and become a free agent. All right. Maybe so, Chicago. I mean, there are he, a couple No, teams. go to a contender. No, he'll go, become a free agent, go to a contender. Yeah, who knows yeah, how long Eberflus is going to be in Chicago. But Fair like enough. him and Eberflus' system was match made in heaven. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he's 100% healthy. We, we have no idea why it has happened, what it has happened. But, yeah, I guess a contender would be a good spot for, you know, drop in Darius Leonard, Shaquille Leonard. Um, Ian Rappaport tweeted Darius. Shaq's Twitter says Darius Shaquille Leonard. Yep. Yeah. He was Darius Leonard. Yep, before. Then he became before. Shaq Leonard. Correct. Exclusively. Exclusively Shaq Leonard. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to disrespect him. I got a lot of, lot of love for Shaq and Darius Leonard. Uh, for what he did in Indianapolis. This kind of came out of left field, though. I did not expect yeah. this, AJ. I did not expect this. I did not expect it at all. And I, I, I've seen the interviews he's done in his locker, and they're asking him about playing time. He's like, I don't I don't really know. Like, I'm kind of – I don't really know how we're splitting them, when I'll be in, when I'll be out. And I think d made a great point saying he's kind of a rhythm player. I think most players would hope to kind of – like, it's very difficult going in and out and in and out if you don't really know. And that's something that if you haven't done it in a while, especially it's tough to do all of a sudden – with, with how he is on the field, like he's like such an intimidating force there in the middle. Every guy that ever catches the ball or runs the ball, when Shaq Leonard is out there and he's healthy, like they know where he's at because he is coming. He can punch you from nine yards away, it seems like. Also, he can sit in the middle of that defense eight yards deep, and his wingspan is so damn long, he can yeah, jump up yeah. and pick the ball over the middle. Like He just has such a presence out there. So I hope, he's, I hope he can get as close to 100% healthy as he can. I hope he goes a contender, man, and, and kind of gets – I don't know, gets where it's just tough. I'm sure he, he doesn't want to be released, but he's probably thinking, okay, I need to go somewhere where the scheme fits and I can play. I'm thinking there's a chance. With the way the interviews have gone, you know, and there's been a few times where I've watched practice or a game and I'm like, oh, Shaq's back. Yeah. Because he's like this in the middle of the – because, like, you talk about being a rhythm player. Mm -hmm. He's a vibes guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was like – it was like yeah. after every he – the, he was the juice. Yes. He, mm -hmm. he was the juice for yeah. not only our defense, our whole stadium, our entire yeah. team. I mean, he was the guy. And then he came back. He kind of looked like a, 
a different guy. Wasn't as confident, wasn't flying his around, didn't have as much of an important role. Then this year he gets out there, and it's like he's back. It's like, okay, we got Shaq Leonard back on this defense. We can find a spot to put him in there because he's such an instinctual player, too. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, instincts are going to make you wrong every once in a while, but more often than not, he was on the right side of it. I have no idea where he – I mean, so he loses. I don't think I get it. No, no I don't know. Yeah, it's a full-blown crapshoot. Well, you know like, – you know, Go ahead. My bad comment, but Pat, you know, if you're not starting and playing every play, they want you to play multiple special teams as well, and you don't mm -hmm. want to throw Shaq Leonard in there a punt and punt return kickoff. Yeah, especially at the linebacker position. Yeah, no chance. Yeah, but especially like, at the linebacker. Uh, uh, he won't win Coach of the Year. Shane Steichen should win Coach of the Year just because of how much he had to deal with in, in one year. Think about his <laughs> last, like, seven months or whatever. We can go all the way back to February. Loses the Super Bowl, gets hired as a head coach. Best player on offense starts holding out after he said he won it. Publicly. Publicly. Quarterback they draft gets hurt in four of the five games he plays in. And then, I mean, you don't you're probably not the best player on defense, but definitely one of the leaders of the team, definitely one of the faces of the team as far as fans go. And now he's gone. Like, that is the. And he was disgruntled publicly. Yeah. yeah. And, and you still got to lead and build your own culture. <laughs> yeah, and they're and still this. five and five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's. I think even with that, though, like when that he puts up that tweet, like the immediate assumption is like, oh, he must be retiring. That's he must still thought, not yeah. be healthy. Mm -hmm. Like, you would. I. I would have never imagined, like, oh, the culture, culture just going to cut him. So I looked. Um, he played 70% of the snaps this year. When he was obviously going, he was playing 98 99% of the, the snaps. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but the Steelers signed Miles Jack and Blake Martinez today. Um, so, you know, there is a team out there looking for linebackers right now. Yeah, you think that's going to change some, uh, you think, old Pokemon seller maybe no longer on team? Is that Yeah, I mean, he got signed this morning, so that may be a quick turnaround because they lost Quan to a, an Achilles and uh, an ACL. Um, if they yeah. both want him, I mean, the, the Bills and the Dolphins the Bills could, definitely yeah, Bills could yeah, both yeah, use him. a linebacker true. bad. Very true. Man, he was – let's get to a break. Very true. When it was good here – he Ooh, was the great. best linebacker in the he reset the market. He's the high, he was the highest paid linebacker when he signed his deal. Yeah. Who is his agent? Uh ooh, I think it was that dude who is with Jonathan Taylor. Quay, yeah, Quay, since Quay that deal, I don't know. Quay Malky? 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 Oh, was that Malky? Malky? Yeah. Yeah. MMA guy too. Yeah, he does has MMA fighter. Yeah. Okay. He's got a lot of money for guys. Great deal. Yeah, it was a conversation at one point between him and Fred Warner. Like who was the yeah. best off ball linebacker? Yeah. That happened with Aaron. Bingo. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Because yeah. Aaron on this particular program said, Fred Warner, best interior linebacker in the league. He and I know each other well. We go back. And then they played the Colts the next week. Mm -hmm. And Shaq, like, so, yeah, met him in the field. Yeah. Yeah, it was like, what'd you say? <laughs> what the fuck's that about? <laughs> and Aaron came on the show and he was like, I've known Fred <laughs> yeah. since he's in, like, high school. No disrespect. I meant no disrespect to Darius Leonard. That was a real. Yeah. All Love right, it. hopefully he finds it again. Yeah, he's so good when he does. And we will have uh, an actual goat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. An actual human that will be remembered forever. Somebody that made the world a better place. Somebody that has given so much to society that generations forever will chit-chat about him and what he has accomplished. Arnold Schwarzenegger will be on the other side of this That's break. Cool. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Take five. 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 What's that coming down the track? What's that coming down the track? It's me, machine in the red and black. It's me, machine in the red and black. Nothing finer in the land. Ain't nothing finer in the land. And a drunk, obnoxious Georgia fan. She's <laughs> Georgia fan. Then you go to pick up a box and uh, a bong falls out of there. What, do you have anything to say about that situation, or what do we got going on? <laughs> it's not a bong, first of all. Hey, the head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs, Kirby Spark. Yeah. In the SEC, you got to do that every week, man. It's how easy this year. <laughs> like I said, there's an open invitation. Call Greg Sankey, come down here and get you some of this SEC if you want it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah, I'd like to make a small contribution to the uh, Marine Corps Scholarship Fund. Give at least 15000 and see if, if Richard will match. I'll match. 15 k from match. us. Awesome. 15k from you. We need Dick Smith, FedEx oh, CEO, yep. 15000 That's 45000 to the Marine Scholarship Fund. And I believe today is the 248th birthday of the Marine Corps. So, ooh, oh! University of Georgia legend, ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Stafford. Yeah! yeah! What's up, guys? Shout out to this man winning $1,000 on this Feel Good Friday when A.J. Hawk... There's a few older white ladies that told me I did not deserve to wear the G they on my chest. They and they said I needed to get out of Chuck Seafood Restaurant. This is David me. Pollock's town. I told her right back to her face, I want to let you know, you can say and think whatever you want about me. I love this Georgia Bulldogs team. That's what I want to hear. You should take this in. It's pretty cool. I don't hear that. You need to, because you've done a lot here that has been fantastic. Have you ever thought anything bad about a kicker before? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Trust what I've taught you while we were off air and just let it rip. Yeah, Hot Rod was getting a little bit too many tips. Georgia! 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 Oh, you're hyping it up! Georgia! Let's go! For $85,000 in drenched jeans. fans in any place that barks at everybody when they see them that's a town for me i got the bulldogs winning big today yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir today's event is me versus a carolina reaper pepper a pepper that has what 2.2 million scovels uh, on average i think it's, it's pretty much the hottest pepper in the world in comparison a jalapeno is 6,000 scope for every second after it is in my mouth i don't grab this milk. Yeah. We'll give $25 to a random person in the comment section right now. $4,500 feels like a good amount to give away though. And that'd three be minutes. three minutes. This is gonna be a long three minutes. That's redder than devil's dick. <laughs> that crunch. How are, we, how are we doing so far? It doesn't look too bad. I should have taken a drink of water beforehand though because I think I had a dry mouth, had a little cotton mouth. Oh. Oh, okay. Once the hiccups start, <laughs> I, think I think you're just about done for. What's your biggest regret in life? <laughs> do, do you have two more minutes in you? Oh, I think it's just starting to hit like the peak. <laughs> the curve on this thing is just starting to go up. <laughs> you are handling this much better than Bill did, though. Right? You are. Yeah, Billy Tubes was puking 10 seconds in. 130. 130. Oh, do you feel like you're gonna puke? Oh, and that milk looks ice cold too. Ah, hey, one more, one more. <laughs> yep. Now we go. Now we go. Eight, seven. Six, five, 
four, three, two, one. Dance with me. <laughs> How you feel now? A little bit better than not quick. Oh my god. That's a bad idea. I need more. I need more milk. I need more. Oh god, no. Hey! Why? This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. <laughs> the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pink! Damn it! <laughs> Your friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, November 21st, 2023, hour three of this program starts now. Football! Happened last night. The Eagles get a big win over the Chiefs. This man has been a champion at every single level of football. It's A.J. Hall. Yay, the Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer. Dad. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. And nine-year NFL vet, host of the Man to Man podcast and everything DB that will happen eh, later this hour. Ladies and gentlemen, Darius J. Butler is here. Hey, Joining us now is a man whose story is obviously epic. Mm -hmm. Born in Austria, came to America to be the greatest bodybuilder on earth. Fucking accomplish that. Yeah. Then go ahead and be the biggest movie star on earth. Fucking accomplish that. And then be the governor of the sixth largest economy on earth. Fucking accomplish that. Ooh. Now, he's an author. In the book, Be Useful, Seven Tools for Life, is written by this man, I think everybody needs to read it, to become the best version of themselves. This dude has taken over the world. He's going to do it again, I assume, before he's dead. Ladies and gentlemen, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, Arnold! <laughs> hey, you really know how to spice things up. I cannot even believe it, Tad. Hey, I mean, let's let's see let's see a shot here quickly. Let's see some let's see some of those muscles. What? Hey, Arnold, we got it. Huh? I don't wow, have to. Wow! Look yeah. at that. Huh? Look huh? at the biceps. Look at the deltoids. <laughs> Holy moly! Look at that back. Yeah. Thank you. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Thank you. This is Mr. <laughs> Universe material. Oh, Unbelievable. Wow. Oh, shit. Wow. Hey, you got me jacked. Hey, you got me a little sauced up right now. A little, little <laughs> zeked up right now. That feels good. Let's talk about you. Obviously, we're done talking about my muscles. They're awesome. AJ, I think we're all gonna. I only smoke little tiny cigars. I do apologize for that. So we will definitely share a little smoke here together, uh, all of us. Why are you apologizing? Well, because you're Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I'm not doing exactly what you're doing, although the muscles are kind of getting into the same particular position as yours. You know, that's what I'm doing. I mean, I feel like I'm looking in the mirror when I look at you. Yes. Now, yeah, nonetheless, uh, it's all the same. Let's go back in time a little bit. I watched your yeah. docu-series. It was on... Uh, Netflix. Netflix. Bro. Hey, it was when my baby, my baby was born, first ever baby girl. So obviously you're up all night and I'm just watching. You and me spent like a whole week together and I was learning your story. I was getting so inspired, so pumped. Whenever you decided to come to America, obviously the goal was Mr. Olympia and universe and everything like that. Could you have ever foreseen this in this positive attitude? Have you had this since birth? Has this kind of been the way you've been since it all kind of started for you? Well, no, not, not as a kid, but I mean, uh, I think that as soon as I had that vision, that dream of becoming the world's best built man, uh, Mr. Universe, and all of that, and kind of chase the dream, uh, and, and, and kind of like my idol, Reg Park, who was like the played Hercules in the movies, and Steve Reeves, those guys I idolized, so I just wanted to be like them. And so uh, the, as soon as I had that dream, Life changed for me. You know, I, I I started going to the gym every single day. I started working out. I started eating well and didn't drink. I didn't smoke any of the cigarettes or nothing like that. I just was on this trajectory to become the champion. And so every single hour, every single rep I did was towards that goal. And so I had a lot of fun doing it. And I created kind of my own world. And But I knew 100% that I'm going to get there, even though everyone else in Austria thought it was totally crazy. Uh, you know, to have such a dream because bodybuilding was not an Austrian sport. Skiing is and soccer and those kind of sports, bicycle riding, but not uh, not bodybuilding. But, you know, so I did it at the age of 20. I won Mr. Universe. 
And then uh, I was invited to come over to America here. And then uh, I continued winning. I won then five Mr. Universe titles, seven Mr. Olympias, Mr. World, Mr. International. So all together was like 13 World Bodybuilding Championships, something that nobody ever has done uh, before. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'd say. And then, and then, then I got into, I was very lucky that I had the same drive and that same vision to get me into movies. And so then I, I, the same thing happened in the movie business. Go ahead, AJ. <clears throat> I'm curious how, how much motivation you gained from people telling you you were crazy and that you can't do this and every every single thing you kind of check, check the box of. I feel like you're kind of motivated by everyone telling you, hey, you're nuts. This isn't going to work. Well, I, I think we have to realize, and you guys can relate to that, you have to realize that if you have a big dream like that, and you say you want to be the best football player, the best quarterback, with the best of this, that, or the best golfer, or the best bodybuilder. People are inevitably going to say, "Oh yeah, sure." <laughs> you know, this guy is a little crazy. And, and and so I think that we just the key thing is, as I say in my book, uh, be useful. Is we cannot go and uh, get caught up with that. I just pay no attention to the naysayers, and I just continued on with my vision. And even though it's all hard work. I mean, it's the, but the vision is, is what propels you, what really motivates you, because this is why I always had fun working out in the gym. This is why I always had fun, uh, you know, on a set, on a movie set, because I saw the movie finished in front of my eyes. You know, when we did Conan the Barbarian, and I had to crawl around on the rocks with no protection on my elbows and knees, and I was bleeding and all that stuff. Nothing mattered, really. Because I knew that when the movie comes out, it's going to be great. It's going to be great entertainment. And it's going to help my career internationally. And uh, so, you know, I was just an animal when it comes to that. There was just no mercy on myself. It was just work, work, work. And that's why I also talk about in the book, uh, you know, be useful. You know, that you have to work your ass off. It's that simple. And you guys know that better than anyone. Because, I mean, you guys train I mean, it's unbelievable Thank you. the kind of stuff that you guys do now. Oh. Because in the, when I came over here, you know, I started, you know, uh, uh, hanging out a few times. I met, uh, uh, you know, some of those football players that were then famous. And none, none of them trained with weights. That This was like a no-no in sports, right? Did you, if you touch weights, every coach said, you touch weights, you're going to go slow down and you're going to go get muscle bound and it's going to ter be terrible. Uh, you lose your flexibility and all that stuff. And uh, so, uh, you know, guys did not do what you do today. Today, guys are lifting, you know, more weights than power lifters. I see, I see uh, you know, uh, guys coming into the gym and they're squatting with ease, 400, 500 pounds, but with ease, weighing, uh, you know, 185, 200 pounds. So this is unheard of this kind of lifts and the bench press they're doing and the dumbbell lifts and all that stuff so but it makes you a much more ferocious warrior on out there on the field and it's of course much more dangerous now uh football than it ever was before because of this tremendous power that you guys have so you're doing both you're doing the cardiovascular training you have the endurance you have the flexibility you have the the, the speed you have the explosive power and then you have also the power of moving weights and def therefore moving bodies on the, on the football field. So I have, I have become kind of a huge admirer of yours. And, you know, there's one guy that was on just before me, Aaron. Uh, you know, Aaron is uh, I've met now because he's uh, doing physical therapy at my girlfriend's place, which which you call the Achilles uh, factory. Um, and they, they that place is packed with football players, with UFC fighters, and, uh, you know, with, with, with the basketball players and all that stuff. But Aaron is always there. He's the most entertaining. He just entertains everyone. Everyone is getting a kick out of him with his stories and with his, uh, you know, kind of positivity and all that. And here's a guy that is talking about, you know, great shape. I mean, this he, I don't know, how old is he now? 39. 39. 39. 39 years old. And he's still a, one of the best players out there. It's, like, amazing to watch him, how good he is. You know, and so, so that that is extraordinary. So I, I've be become a big fan of his also because he's funny. He's a great sense of humor. He's not just a football player. He has a very clear vision where he wants to go after this is all over. And all this. it's fun talking to him and, uh, you know, and hanging out with him because 
He's a real inspirational kind of a guy. Hell yeah. And so are you, pal. I would like to let you know. And what he's doing with his Achilles at your girlfriend's place at the Achilles factory <laughs> is going to be something that people are going to study forever, just like I think this book is going to be, be useful, right? And I'm reading a little excerpt here. It says, and it kind of ties in everything you just said there. And you sound like... Um, you said, when I had the dream, that's when it all changed for you. When I had the dream, a TV, the same thing, and then you get a little bit uh, seemingly obsessive with it, and you do everything you possibly can to make it happen, you work your ass off. You said, if Be Useful sounds relentlessly positive, it is. It is an answer to the pessimism, disconnection, and loss of purpose Arnold saw building over the past few years, especially among young people. You just talked about how sports and athletes and bodies are better than they've ever been, but it does feel like there is a lack of motivation for some portion of society. Why do you think that is? And do you think that's fixable? Do you think we're going to get to an era of humans that are maybe the hardest working era of humans ever again? Well, I think that, um, you know, we have gone into a generation of uh, people that are kind of trying to find the easy way out. And, uh, you know, they think that everyone can become rich, you know, being a, a high tech expert and stuff like that. Um, but it's not that that easy. The, the thing that today still is true, as it always was, is, uh, you know, that you have to work your ass off. And uh, you can you, you you can do all the high tech you want, but still, I mean, you know, Ted Turner uh, once said, you know, early to bed, early to rise, work like hell and advertise. And I, I'm a big believer in that. You know, you have to work your ass off. Everything that I've ever done, if it was uh, being involved in bodybuilding, being involved in show business, in movies, I mean, being for six months sometimes on a set doing a movie and then you go and you finish there and you go to another movie right after that. You work sometimes nights when you work with Jim Cameron when he directed Terminator 2. I remember we worked 87 days at nights and it's, it's crueling doing the action and doing the stunts and you get injuries and all that kind of the stuff. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I inspire people to go and work your ass off and oh, yeah. not to be afraid of failure because so many people are kind of shy of failure. They're afraid of it, and they don't want to then do anything big because they don't want to fail really big. And I always tell them, don't be afraid of failure. You know, just go all out and just uh, have a specific goal in mind and then go after that relentlessly. And, 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 and it, it needs hard, hard work. So everything I've ever done, even in the governor's office, I mean, you're there from 9 in the morning on in that office. And you sit there to 6 o'clock at night, and then you have to go to fundraisers, and you have to go and communicate with the people out there to make sure that the people are coming with you and follow you because it's one thing to pass laws, but it's another thing to make people understand the laws that you pass. And uh, when you, for instance, say, we want to reduce pollution by 25%. Well, you know, that you want to make sure that the California people then know the reason why we're doing is because there's 7 million people that die every year of pollution. So we can do better than that. So let's get rid of pollution. Let's get rid of fossil fuels. There's no reason why people have to die of cancer because of all of that stuff. So, so uh, you know, it was like work, work, work the whole time and, uh, you know, be positive and having that clear vision. And so uh, so those are the rules that I talk about in a book. And I in the book I wrote basically just to make people, uh, you know, more successful, to make them happier. And to, because so many people are down, 78% of the people in America hate their jobs. I mean, what the hell is that? Yeah, that's How not can good. you go and uh, hate your job and then go to work every day for years and years and years? No wonder people are looking forward to retiring. And I said to myself, what is that all about, retiring? I mean, it's like, uh, hell, you got to go and just continue on until you, when, when you're six feet under. That's when you can retire. That's when you can, you know, lie back a little bit and just relax. But not while we are on this side of the grass. This is all like conquering, achieving, Conquer. working hard, and living rather than existing. Hell yes. By the way, oh. I love that all you're talking about is work ethic. <laughs> like, that is the trait, I think, that I hope my daughter has. I hope, uh, very lucky that it was something passed down from my father and my mother. I love that that's your entire message. I, I, I hope more people will read Be Useful, Seven Tools for Life uh, by Arnold Schwarzenegger, available now. And you say you work hard at everything. Remember when he was a salesman and his neighbor was trying to have sex with his wife? Oh, yeah. And you know what you did? You got that turbo, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. End of the day. 
You got turbo, man. Yeah. That asshole neighbor was trying to, oh, he's always at work. Oh, he's <laughs> working and taking advantage of that. Rest in peace, obviously. But you got turbo, man, at the end of the day. You can work hard and still be a great human. I think you've proved that time and time again, especially around the holidays. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, you're absolutely right. One of the things I talk about in the book is it is absolutely essential if you want to be successful to give something back to your community because, you know, not everyone is as fortunate as we are where we make money and where we do the kind of stuff that we that we wanted to do. Uh, so people are falling through the cracks a lot of time. I was like, for instance, yesterday out in East L.A. at the Hollenbeck Center handing out Turkey, hundreds of turkeys to people yeah. that can't afford Hey, let's go, Governor. Turkeys. That's our governor. That. Hell yeah. Out. You're a good dude, man. You could be on a beach smoking cigars all day, every day. Yep. Yep. The amount yep. of money you've made, everything you've accomplished. When's retirement? Dead. I'm giving out turkeys tomorrow. <laughs> mm -hmm. I appreciate the hell exactly. out of you. The boys got a bunch of questions for you, Arnold. Ty, go ahead, pal. Yeah, Arnold, I'm sure when people talk to you, you know, they always mention Commando and Predator and Terminator 1 and Terminator 2. And, and I agree because I've seen those countless amount of times. But I'd be remiss if I didn't say... Thank you for making Twins and Kindergarten Cop. Oh, yeah. I think That's I've seen Thank you. I saw both Thank those you, thousands of times growing up. Cops but I'm just curious, like, when your film career first started, at what point did you realize, like, hey, listen, everything I touch turns to fucking gold. So it doesn't really matter <laughs> what the script says or what, what this movie is about. If I'm in it, this thing is going to open up at number one on the box office when it comes out that weekend. And then also, at what point did you decide, like, hey, the action stuff, I've kind of cornered that market. I want to move to, you know, some of these more comedic roles like Twins and Kindergarten Cop. Well, it's a good question. I think that when and I did Conan the Barbarian, which was kind of the first international movie that I did, um, Universal Studios wanted to send me to like three, four countries uh, to promote the movie. And I said, no, no. Look, this is uh, my chance to really promote myself from bodybuilding to an actor. And so I want to go to 10 countries. So then they mapped out the whole strategy to go to 10 countries and to promote the film. And I could really see the response internationally. And I could see that there was a breaking through. And I, I, that, that was the moment where I felt was a breakthrough for me. And from then on, I got, you know, Terminator office and Commander and Predator and Great Heat and, uh, you know, Running Man and all of those kind of movies. So that was really the big breakthrough with the action movies. But you're absolutely right. I was kind of like saying to myself, well, you know, there's something funny about me also. I have a good sense of humor. I want to draw the comedies. But it was very hard to break into comedies because the studio said, look, we're making all this money now with you as an action hero. So why would we give you a comedy? And then Ivan Reitman, the director of Ghostbusters, who just came out with Ghostbusters, remember, uh, he said to me, I develop a project with you. I direct you. And so from that point on, when he didn't develop Twins, uh, and Twins became my biggest grossing movie ever, uh, that's when all of a sudden I started getting offers also uh, for comedies. I did then Kindergarten Cop and Junior mm -hmm. and True Lies with Jim Cameron, with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, which was really a fantastic experience. So this is when I broke through and I knew, okay, I have that corner uh, that that kind of uh, uh, you know thing mastered too. So uh, it, there, there were moments like that, that that were breakthrough moments. But I have to say that everything was a struggle. Everything had you know its failures in there. I opened up movies that went in the toilet that didn't no, open up. I don't um, believe that. I don't oh believe yes, that. I mean yeah, yeah. And you know something, you have to just learn from that. And you have to say you know the story maybe wasn't good enough. We have to pay more attention to the story. And you know because what is not on the page is not on the stage. It's the old saying in Hollywood. And so I had to realize that. And so in bodybuilding, I had my failures. I lost competitions. In powerlifting, I lost competitions. Politically, after I won the, the governorship, there was an election late, later on where I had some initiatives on the ballot, and they lo all lost. So I had my losses, but it doesn't matter because when you lose, you're not a loser. The loser always stays down. I always got up. I dusted myself off, and I said, okay, I'm going to get back. And I'm going to go and try it again and try it again and try it again. In my bench press, I mean, I was trying 500 pounds. I tried it 10 times and it failed. But the 11th time I did it. So, I mean, so you never give up. It's that simple. Hey, life will teach you a lot on the bottom of 500 pounds, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Life will teach you a lot down there, those 10 failures. Let's get to the 11th. Do you talk to The Rock ever? You know, it feels like The Rock is now this generation's action star. He's had a couple that have gone not so great, but then obviously that have gone very well. Do you two just chit-chat about being the biggest action stars on Earth? 
Well, you know, The Rock uh, is someone that I have admired for many, many years. <clears throat> I thought that he handled his career really well. I think that he's just one of those multi-talented guys that has a great personality. He's a great athlete, great wrestler. He can do, you know, big stunts on, on, on a set. And he's very mm -hmm. familiar with that and the fight scenes and all that stuff. So I think that his personality comes through. His, uh, you know, great command of the of the scenes is coming through. He's very, very talented all around. I mean, I, I think that I think the world of him. I think he's really fantastic. Go ahead, AJ. You mentioned uh, Jim Cameron a few times in True Lies, Terminator Two. Can you like? He seems like a guy that is not scared to take a a big chance and taking a big swing at things. We see what he's doing with Avatar right now. What was it like working with him on set day to day? Well, he's a genius. You know, he just writes. It's. It, I've. I've never met anybody, to be honest with you, that is so multi-talented. Because that guy does. You know, he knows. He comes from the background of set decorating, and so he he knows how to decorate the set, how to light the set. He knows everything about the cameras. He knows everything about everything. I mean, it's like technically he's so superior. That his writing skills are so superior. His directing skills are superior. He can do comedy. He can do action. He can do anything. It's just amazing how smart the guy is and what a great vision he has. He's a visionary. He sees everything in front of him. I mean, that's how he writes. You know, he sees the movie in front of him, and then he goes to write and direct. So I, I, I you know... <laughs> I, I wish I could do many more movies with him because he's just so talented. And you know when you when you go, you still acting? Uh, yeah, we still doing that. Say again. You still acting? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, we are doing this spring, coming spring, the second season of Fuba, mm -hmm. which is the TV series that was very, very popular on Netflix, and it went through the roof. So it was kind of like a, a takeoff of True Lies. It was a kind of like action and comedy at the same time. We had a great cast there, and uh, Netflix did a fantastic job in promoting the TV show. So now we have a second season, so we're doing we're shooting that. It would take around four and a half uh, months to film that in Toronto, and then we're gonna go and put that out on AI again. And so, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna and then I'm gonna do another film with Danny DeVito, yes. which uh, he has been working on on the script and writing right now with his writers. So I'm looking forward to that. So yeah, I do everything. I do policy. You know, at the Schwarzenegger Institute, um, where we do, where we deal with policy at USC, uh, the policy like healthcare, immigration reform, homeless issues, water issues here in California, and all of the education issues, after school programs. That sounds fun. Kind of thing. That sounds like so a blast, it, Arnold. That one sounds it, real it, fun. Well, you know, it's I learned when I was there as governor, you know, that you can make a difference, and you just have to figure out how to craft the policy, how do you talk and communicate to the people and bring them along. And, uh, you know, so it's fun to do. So, you know, when I finished with my, when I finished my, my governorship, I didn't clock out. You know, this is it, most of the politicians you can do take that the they clock out. You never hear from them again. But I think this is like, a, you know, it's terrible because what kind of a message is that if you have committed yourself to be a public servant, how do you go and all of a sudden discontinue yeah. being a public servant? So to me, it's a continuation of follow through, mm -hmm. like in sports, everything is about follow through, you know, and, uh, and, and so this is what this is. So I want to continue being involved in policy and make this a better world. This is what my fourth act, people always ask me, what is the fourth act? I say my fourth act is about using my talents from bodybuilding, from show business, from governorship, and use all those talents, put it together, and make it a better world. And so this is why I wrote the motivational book. That's why I uh, hold motivational speeches. And that's why I continue on with my show business and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, I want to be involved and bring all of those talents together. Hell yeah. Every once in a while, you know, when you dabble into act two with the acting, and then you're still properly jocked, mm -hmm. yeah. and then you put Danny DeVito back on it. Oh, oh buddy, you're making the world a better place then too, aren't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's good news. I think there's a lot of greatness coming from it. You should be incredibly proud. Done good out of Austria. Nick has a question for you in the back. Massive fan. Arnold, I watched your documentary, and there was a piece that really fascinated me. You talked about the schmay. I hope I'm saying it right, but I believe uh, you yeah. explained the term in the documentary. I was wondering if you talked about it in your book and if you could tell all these guys and everybody watching how the schmay kind of helped you throughout your life. Well, it's kind of like really communicating well and to find a way uh, of... Uh, bringing a little oomph to the reality. 
uh, you know, instead of doing a boring speech, uh, you know, it's always good to kind of like throw in some good humor and uh, to spice it up a little bit. And that's what we call the Austin Schmee. Uh, you know, a lot of times they call it the bullshit and, oh, and, uh, okay. in, in America. But I mean, that, that, that's what it is. It's kind of like spicing it up. I was always a believer to kind of make it interesting. So when you speak to students at a commencement speech, you want them to walk away and not say, oh, this was just another speech. They want to say, that was really cool. I mean, he had some really funny lines in there. He was really funny and all this stuff. So that's the Schmay. Okay. Hey, I love it. Yeah. Love the Schmay. We're about to Schmay all day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty much all we got. I know. Yeah. That's, why I love, oh, yeah. that's why I love being on this show. Because are you kidding me? I was waiting for for, 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 for a long time now to be on this show. Because you guys have to, the, you have the magic down. I mean, you have so much fun. And you're over the top. And your personalities come out. You know, and people are not used to this from football players because they think that they're, they're great on a football field. But, I mean, here you are. I mean, you've always had a talent. Thank you, and Arnold. You Thank you. That's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, what you just said is a big deal. I want to let you know why. Because we just so happened to be in the same hotel that you were eating brunch oh, at one morning. Oh, man. And you walked in, and I was up in my room, and the boys were at the restaurant, and there was 45 texts in a group text. Heads up, heads up. Arnold fucking Schwarzenegger is here. That is the reaction that your name gets from our group. So you saying nice things about us is sweet, but felt like there's a little schmay in there too. You know what I mean? <laughs> felt like there was a little bit. Always and of... everything to schmay. <laughs> uh, Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Arnold. Something that maybe didn't have that much uh, schmay, if you will, uh, is when you had to drive a tank uh, in for your military uh, time in Austria. And I believe, as the story goes, you tell it in the documentary, is that you actually. Kind of, kind of just said, "Hey, fuck it, I have to go to this weightlifting competition." What was the? Was there any fallout from that? Because I assume if you were told you couldn't go by, you know, a high-ranking officer, and then you still go, there's probably a problem. But was that one of the most, or you know, one of the most important decisions, if you will, you know, deciding to kind of break the rules a little bit and going and doing that competition that really kind of kickstarted everything for you? Well, I, you know. I did not at that time look at it as an important decision. I just registered, uh, you know, to compete in that competition on October 31st in Stuttgart, Germany. And uh, in the meantime, you know, I was drafted to go to the military. So I was in the middle of basic training when this happened. And so I, so I went to the office and I said, hey, I want to go to this competition. And they said, no. You're in basic training and no one can leave the base when you're in basic training. So I said to myself, oh, fuck, I don't give a shit. I'm going to go anyway. <laughs> and so I just I just went knowing that when I come back, the punishment will be severe and they would just throw me in jail and they will be peeling potatoes in the kitchen all night long, every night and all that kind of a stuff. I said, but so what? I mean, you know, that, that, to me, that didn't scare me. I don't I did not give a shit about anything other than that. I have to win this competition. And this is it. This is what I was training for. And I was training in the military, even doing this basic training, which was like hard as hell. But I was training and training and training, doing my weightlifting and my, my, my whole thing. I went out to Stuttgart and I won the fucking competition. You know, I just, uh, hey, I, there was guys from all over Europe competing. And so this was my, you were earlier asking the question, what was the deciding moment where I said, this is all working and I'm in the right direction. This was the moment because now when I won the European Championships with the age of 18, the junior championships, then I knew I was on the right track because uh, I knew that the year later, after the military was over, I would come back and win the regular uh, Mr. Europe competition and best buildman of Europe. And this is exactly what happened. The year later, I won Mr. Europe and the best buildman of Europe went to the Mr. Universe contest with the age of 19, who came second in the Mr. Universe the following year, I went back to the Miss Universe 1. So to me, this was a deciding thing. But when I came back to the military, yeah, they, they did not know what to do. I came back with the fucking trophy. <laughs> <laughs> I came back with the trophy. So they said, well, should we now punish him for being a winner? Or should we punish him because he left without permission? So they didn't know what to do. So they put me in jail for one night. And then they let me out. And then the next day, they celebrated with me. And they were all drinking. They were all drunk. Uh, and they're drinking champagne. And uh, celebrating with me this great, great victory. So it was. It really ended up fantastic because the Austrian military, you should know, they are one hundred percent behind. You know, uh, athletic activities. When someone wants to train for soccer or skiing or this, that, they give you the time off to do that. And they always gave me plenty of time throughout my time 
do in the afternoon and everyone was have to wash their tanks and oil the tanks and grease it and do all that stuff. I, I went into the gym. I went in the lifted weights for hours and hours in the afternoon. I did my tank driving in the morning and then in the afternoon, the other guys washed my tank and I was like out there working out like hell. Very nice of them to wash the tank. <laughs> did you say, Did you? was that the first time you're on the record of saying like, I'll be back with the trophy. Like, is that <laughs> is that the first time you were on record of saying that? You think maybe that was uh, maybe a little foreshadowing. The most amazing thing is that uh, the first time I said I'll be back was on Terminator because I hated the the way it said I'll. I did, as an as a German, we don't have this right this I'll. So I kept saying to Jim Cameron, I said, Jim, I said, why don't I? Should, I'm a machine. I should say I will be back. <laughs> And he says, no, I wrote, I'll be back. And I said, but it's better if I say, I will be back. And he says, Arnold, I don't tell you how to fucking act. And so don't tell me how to <laughs> act. I wrote, I'll be back. He says, let's just do 10 takes of I'll be back. And then, then we, we, we pick the favorite one. If you're worried about it, it sounds bad. I think it sounds great the way you say it. So let's just do it. And so we did it. And no one knew at that time this was a special line. Because then when the movie came out, all these people started running up to me and say, I don't say, I'll, say this line, I'll be back. And I said, I'll be back. And they said, no, 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 the way you said it in the movie. So I said, oh, okay, I'll be back. <laughs> and then they said, yeah, 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 that was it. Oh, this is fantastic. So I, we realized all of a sudden that we had the magic line there. So all of the lines that you see from the movies, like, get to the chopper, you know, this is a... <laughs> Like we did not know this is going to be some a line that people will repeat. Now everywhere I go to the gym or ride on a on a street with the bicycle, people are screaming at me, "Get to the chopper, <laughs> put that cookie down." Yes, we love. Hey, yeah. that was amazing. Home. Hey, you knew exactly what we were looking for. <laughs> you knew exactly what we were the looking hits. for right there. Here we are, thirty years later. Yeah, play the hits. Still got it. I appreciate that you it's, haven't. It's the shmay. It's the shmay. <laughs> it is the shmay. <laughs> That's the shmay. I appreciate that That's you haven't gotten shmay. jaded by it, though. You know, some people get jaded by that type of shit. No, no. To me. None of this matters to me. I, I, the only thing that, that counts to me is to do exactly what I want to do, to, to chase my goals. And uh, I don't feel any special. I never felt unique. Oh, Arnold, you're great and all that stuff. This is all bogus. You know, I can look in the mirror and just say I look like shit. And, uh, you know, this, uh, I, I, I never really satisfied with any of the things that I do. I'm always hungry for better and for more. Uh, and I think that's what drives me. This is what makes me kind of motivated and excited. So when I get up in the morning, there's always a purpose there. You know, I always say the first thing I do is feed my animals, my miniature donkey, donkey and my my my, my uh, 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 Lulu and whiskey, uh, and my pony, and then I have the pig, Schnelli, yeah. uh, <laughs> and then I have the three dogs. So and then of I course. go on the bike and I go to the gym and I work out. And so I'm always on a mission. I'm always, there's always a purpose there uh, and, and the work and all that stuff. So it makes life fun. Yeah, and I think that's why you should potentially, uh -huh. you know. Bingo. You heard yeah. what he just said. Right. It's all shit. I'm not special, okay? <laughs> we're just working. We're on a mission. We're dreaming here. There's a lot of that in the book. Oh, yeah. uh, Darius has a question for you. Yeah, a couple of things that are special. Pat mentioned it earlier. Your work ethic, your optimism. Like, where, where did that come from? Like, where did that come from early in your life, you know, going from the top of the world in show business, powerlifting, politics? Like, how did where did that come from? And I can't let this moment pass without asking you, what are your PRs in your list? Like, your oh, yeah. bench, I need to know. What's the most you put right up now. in the bar? Oh, ever. Oh, I mean, oh. ever and I mean, right now. Well, I mean, uh, first of all, I think that when you have a dream and you're chasing the dream, that makes you automatically work hard. Because in order to get there, you have to work hard. So to me, working was never really the, a problem at all. When I was in the military, I looked forward to getting up in the morning and to running around and doing the basic training and to, to drive the tanks and do all the stuff that is to be done there. When I came to America, I was, you know, Mr. Universe. But there was no month, there was no money in bodybuilding, like in football. So I had to go to work. So I was like a bricklayer. I was doing construction work when I came to America. But it was all fun. I went to school. I went to junior college. I remember I took a few classes there. I was at UCLA. I took some classes. I took, I took acting classes. I was working out five hours a day. And I was working on construction. So it was like the day was 24 hours. And I write about that in a book because so many people say, I don't have time to work out. And I don't have time for this. 
for my kids. I don't have time for that. It's just all bogus. You have 24 hours. All you have to do is just really schedule your day really well, and then you can make it. That's the bottom line. So now the, 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 so now let me answer your second question. My yes. best bench press was 525. Uh, my best deadlift was 710. And my best squat was 610. So this were my lifts then. But I have to say they are not at all uh, great in compared to what some of the bodybuilders oh. and lifters are doing today. I can tell you that because today there's guys that are squatting, you know, with, with seven, 800 pounds. And there's guys Eesh. there that they, they bench press over 600 pounds uh, and, and all that stuff, bodybuilders. So, I mean, they've really gotten much better. But, you know, time moves on. People get better all the time. The muscles are better uh, now and thicker and, yep. and more definition and all that stuff. So it's a, yep. uh, it was, it's a different era, but I was very happy oh, yeah. with my lifts that I had then. And, um, you know, it made me grow really fast. Uh, and, and the key thing here is also to know that, uh, that your head, your brain is just like a muscle in the body. You know, when you want to get bigger biceps, you go and give the biceps resistance. You do the curl, right? Because that's how it grows, through resistance. And the more you go towards the pain period, that when you start hurting, and then you do the forced reps, that's when you really grow. Okay. And the same is Noted. with your brain. Noted. Same thing is with your brain. Because the more resistance that you give your brain, the more you go through suffering, the more you go in the, in, in, and go through pain and failures and all of that stuff, that is what makes you grow as a person. That's what makes you tough. That's what makes you sustain the punishment that is coming up, which we all get in life. And so this is why I always say, don't shy away from those things. Don't go for the comfort. Comfort is evil. Comfort is evil. You have to struggle. That's what it is all about. Because that's what makes us strong. Hell yeah. Calloused. Love growth. That. Love everything you just said. Now, let's talk about what the what we're moving right now. You know what I mean? What are we moving right now? <laughs> We're moving yes. right now. I don't do bench press anymore uh, because of my shoulder problems. But I mean, uh, I also don't lift any more heavy weights because after my heart surgery in 1997, oh. the doctor, the heart specialist said that, look, you know, we put new valves into your heart. And so don't, uh, you know, abuse them by, you know, pressing a lot of weights or lifting a lot of weights. Just tone it down, bring the weight down to more reps and stuff like that. And that's what I've been doing. So are you every day still lifting? I assume that's a part of your I, Every day. I go every day to the gym. I go on my bike. I ride down to Gold's gym. I work out 45 minutes and then I ride the bike back. And so that's what something I do every day, yes. Yeah, some people need it. You know, I assume you're going to be a guy that's going to need it forever. Hopefully. We always need it. We always remember, uh, you know, you rest, you rust. It's that uh, simple. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Hell yeah, I don't want to rust. That's great. No, no one wants to rust. Uh -uh. No wanna... one wants to rust. No, that's bad schmay. We don't want any of that. We don't need any of the rust schmay on any of our shit. Last question here, Arnold. You're the man. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah, Arnold, this is a big Expendables office. We once, for one of the shows out of here, did a table read of the Expendables. Um, we love that movie and all those movies. So my question to you is, what was it like working with the greatest collection of actors of all time in a movie? You know, uh, if people would know what I saw, they would be just shocked because those are the sweetest guys. I remember that I had surgery just before I went on, on, uh, on uh, Expendables 2. And, uh, and I went to the set and I told the guys, I said, look, I will not be able to run around uh, or do the things that I want to do. So yeah, I need a lot of help here uh, because they didn't want to postpone the shooting and all that stuff. And I tell you, those guys, all of them, they jumped into action. I mean, Bruce Willis was running there to put a pad down. So when I run over to this desk and have to kneel down, fall on my knees, that I have a, a, a padded landing. I mean, this is the Good kind man. of stuff that I Hell saw yeah. there. I, 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 I tell you, the, 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 those ballsy guys, the toughest guys in the world were there and they were so kind and so sweet and so helpful. I mean, I would never, ever forget that. So to, to me, I think the world of these guys and, you know, they have they're great, great entertainers. They're multi-talented. Some of them are UFC fighters and football players and some are from the boxing background and this and that. And, and just really, really terrific guys. And it was a great pleasure for me to do this uh, work 
with those guys and, and, and expendables and we had a fantastic time together you think we need about 10 more of those you know yeah, what I mean? just do, as a please. whole 10 more of those no problem at all feels like you got enough time to figure that one out in your day <laughs> uh before we get out of here i have to mention we're just now learning about the arnold's pump club which is a, I believe a, a newsletter a daily email that's just going to motivate yeah. the hell out of you yup if it's anything like this conversation we just had, yup, is that showing up in my email every morning? Yup, yep. am I becoming Arnold Schwarzenegger because of this thing? Yep. Maybe, maybe. Is that is that <laughs> is that what the is that what the newsletter is? Is that what we're popping off in the in the email? Uh, the newsletter will not make you another Arnold Schwarzenegger. The newsletter will make you inspired to work out every day, to work on yourself, to improve yourself. It is the positive corner on the internet because there's so much negativity out there all the time. But people talk about hating each other because they're from different parties and different races and this and that. And I am so much against all that. I'm about inclusion and bringing people together. And I want them to be happy. I want them to be successful. And this is what this does. It pumps you up. That's why it's called the pump corner. It's like it pumps you up. Hell yeah. Well, I can't wait to get pumped the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> You're the man, dude. I really appreciate you. I can't wait to see how many people continue to read this book and how a generation can maybe be inspired by a man that took a shot on betting on himself and with an obsessive work ethic has become one of the most influential humans to ever exist. I appreciate the hell out of you. What's the rest of the day look like? What do we got the rest of the day? Well, I'm not going to go on my bike ride and I'm not going to go work out and then I'm going to have lunch uh, with my son, with Patrick, and... Uh, and then I will continue doing my businesses. I heard you just got done playing a game of chess, beat the shit out of somebody. That's what I heard. I heard we put him in yeah, a... Yeah, that's, uh, that's, yeah, exactly. Don't say it too loud because he's sitting right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, watch out for that closed Sicilian, okay? <laughs> Especially when Arnold's working his shit. Uh, the schmay is at an all-time high. We appreciate you, ladies and gentlemen, the legend, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hey, Arnold! Love you, Arnold! Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you back yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Hold on. hey, hey uh, arnold arnold there's a chopper right over there there's a chopper right over there get to the chopper <laughs> <laughs> okay. love you arnold yeah he's gone <laughs> see you guys Miss you. See you, Arnold. Love you, Appreciate Arnold. You. Love you, Arnold. Pat, that was unbelievable. Pat ran to the bathroom, yeah. maybe. No, no, he ran to the chopper, chopper dude. You chopper. Asshole. Yeah, there's a fucking chopper You had to go. Wake up. Couldn't, on the way there. Couldn't crease the Air Forces either. I don't know if you saw yeah, me mid-run. Yeah, yeah. Had to <laughs> <laughs> run a little flat foot and get a chopper. Not that much urgency. <laughs> well, that's stupid. Yes. What we had Barry you. Sanders yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wichita. Sorry about it. Prick. Which, by the way, we are almost one full show away no it is there on Tuesday yes. it is yep. it certainly is come on mm, yeah. yeah zero full shows yeah. oh no that's that's fuck oh yeah that's the F dash dash that was Jay Glazer that was Jay Glazer with me the Wachita one is yesterday with Barry Sanders and then Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah there it there is there we go here we go <laughs> <Made it. laughs> boy Good work, D-Boy. You think that I ever happens again? to too and go to AJ. AJ, AJ what would you like? Well, you laugh. It's so funny. <laughs> yep. You so I'm trying to ask a fucking Wichita. question. Rewatching it, though, you did have it. Like, had, you had Witcher out of your I mouth. Had you had Witcher out of your mouth. You were you a T. Yeah. yeah. You were at the T. You were, there's two letters left yeah. in that whole thing. You were there. Second guess myself. Never should. Can't do that. Never should. No, nope. Gotta have conviction. You listen to Gotta ball. believe in yourself. Rip the ball down. We got from Barry Sanders the fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger. Wow. This is awesome. Pretty sweet. That was cool. I'm very happy to hear that he knows about our show. How about his girlfriend yeah. in the Achilles factory? Small world. That little office over there, that little factory over there, has really yeah. done us well. Hey, thank you yeah, over there. Thank you, factory. How about yeah. Arnold? She, I would assume she was forced to watch some. Bingo. Probably. Because of Aaron. And then she brings it up. You should see these dipshits. And then Arnold. <laughs> Talk about Shmay. Yeah. Oh. I like these guys. <laughs> <laughs> he starts watching the show. That's amazing to think about. Are we friends with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Feels like it. Yeah, it does actually. I'm certainly signing up for the fucking pump club. Yep. Yeah, gonna yeah. Send him an animal. Huh? Send him like some sweet animal. You know, he has those sweet animals. Let's send him like a zebra or something. Donkey, pig. What else? He's uh, pony. Yeah, mini pony. pony. Yep, mini horse. Go hang out with them. He says. We send him a. Yeah, send him a bison. Yeah, send him something. Maybe an elephant. Huge. Maybe a fucking elephant. Yes. So we'll say we'll always remember you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. That'd be a good <laughs> gift. Let's send him a fucking elephant. Good luck picking up that shit. Shmay. <laughs> Shmay. 
Love you. Thank How you. about that? Hey, good question back good there, job, Nick, sure. about Schmay. Yeah, sure. I, I didn't remember that from the documentary. Thanks, man. It just stuck with me for some reason. It was like he got like that like uh, certain type of charm, that charisma that you can't really define. Moxie. He summed it mm-hmm. up. Yeah, yeah, because they brought up the comment about you know the pomp is better than coming, and that's where he talked about the Schmay. He well, said when, when, yeah. That's what he said. Hey, that, that's verbatim in the documentary. He's trying to promote the sport. Where is that promote his the sport. Yes. How about him giving us some tips, by yeah, the way? Yeah. Hey, when you're really, the ones that are forced reps, that's when we're growing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So go ahead and power. Let's get to that. Let's power through. And then now we're moving. Yep. You rest, you rust. Oh, I love that. Oh. Yeah. Retire when you're in a box, he said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He's on this side of the grass. That motherfucker's just a, he's a workhorse. He goes. Yeah. He's got a great beard, too. Very good because mm-hmm. it's it's probably shaped. It's right here on the in the, on the, the handsome cover. fellow on that cover. Yeah, su- super handsome. Not able to work out the way he used to because it's hard. But right, where we see him in the national championship. Yeah, that, yeah. that was the hotel. Yeah, there you go. There, yeah. Oh yeah, you're saying I'll I was, hit my pants. Yeah, that was the text. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wasn't Nuts. there. I missed it. Holy shit! Holy shit! Like yeah. six of them. Pum pum pum. Yeah. Fuck fuck fuck. Wow wow wow. Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger's at the restaurant right now. Mm-hmm. Where? In the hotel. I couldn't get there. Ordered. Ten feet away from us. Mm-hmm. Yep. Thought I was never going to meet him. Had 15 eggs for breakfast. Mm-hmm. And after those, he said, I'll be back for 15 more. Yeah, mm-hmm. Boom. How about him just start rattling off the hits? Yeah, he leans into it. Love it. That was True cool. Lies is so good. I'm going to rewatch True Lies. True Lies That's a great. great movie. I wanted to ask him about that, that dream sequence where he just hammer fists Bill Pullman's face, I believe it was, multiple times in the car. <laughs> you guys remember that? Oh, yeah. 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 It's a oh, great it's Turbo scene. Man, though, in the right? van. Turbo Man was awesome. No, he's driving the little convertible. A jingle all the way. Mm. Uh, Ooh, that yeah. neighbor in the Good. middle of me saying "fuck that guy." I remember yeah. he's dead. Yeah, but yeah, you yeah. said all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I had. I was really about to roll on yeah. that guy. He's a great actor. Because everything that Arnold was talking about work ethic and having to work to have things. Yep. That guy was preying on. Mm-hmm. You know, the next door yeah. neighbor. Oh, he's never. Uh, oh, he's at work again, huh? Mm, trying to provide. I'm not. I don't fucking work. I don't do any of that. Sliding in the back door and then Turbo Man's wanted. Oh, oh yeah. ridiculous. Oh, that guy, real heel. He that guy, one of the biggest heels of any movie I've ever watched mm-hmm. was uh, Phil Phil Hartman. Phil Hartman. Yeah. yeah. Recipe. Sinbad, Sinbad helped him out, right? Didn't they kind of team yep. up? Uh, Sinbad. Yeah, in Jingle All the Way. Yeah, in a way. Yeah. In a way, yeah. Uh, he was certainly a part of the process. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> he was at the store. Yeah. Kindergarten Cop was my all-time. Oh, yeah. We're almost at the time to watch, uh, not Kindergarten Cop, but you can watch that anytime. Anytime. Yeah, but. But Jingle All the Way. Oh, we're there. Santa yeah, Claus, sure. Grinch. Oh, yeah. yeah. Next week. We're, we're there, here. We're, yeah, there. we're there. There's no Thanksgiving for, movie. Friday, really. Bingo. Go ahead and turn on the Santa yeah. Claus and say, hey, Scott Calvin, take me into the fucking holiday season. Time to go. And then just let Jim Carrey dressed up as the Grinch yep. in a snowflake floating through town. Let that go ahead and bang. Mm-hmm. And then why not drop in fucking Jingle all the way on the other side? Absolutely. Sure. If you're feeling frisky, maybe Fred Claus. You know, Did Paul you Jumani. see the news, by the way? Bad Santa. Yeah, yeah. Shaq Leonard got cut. Oh. I know. No, Thanks, no, no. Diggs. No. This guy just wants Real to news. take us back from before Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, no, no. Real news. They cut Anthony Richardson? No. Now? James Carey is signed on to do Grinch 2 now. Wow. I believe that's horseshit. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Are Darn. all these... Reputable sources, horseshit. I don't know. That comes out. It's come out a couple times in the last few years. I don't think so. Well, what are the reputable sources? Mm. Well, is Jim Carrey in the mood to just become the Grinch for what four months? Exactly. And know what he does? Yeah, mm-hmm. he's a method guy. That would be tough. He hasn't done much. We got to ask Arnold about that. Boom. Daily Mail: Jim Carrey to star in the Grinch sequel, twenty-three years after originally okay. playing Whoa. the part of the Grumpy Christmas. Unilad. Okay, they buy up all the stuff on the internet and they own every viral video. Jim mm-hmm. Carrey reportedly set to return, and then Screen Geek. That's Screen Geek, uh, I'll buy it. I'll allow it. Okay. Oh, they said one day ago, Jim Carrey reportedly returning for The Grinch, too. That's great news for everybody. That is. Huge. Scott Calvin came back, too, right? Yeah. Yep. That's, well, that's actually in season two. That's a show? Santa Claus is, yeah. Yeah, it's a show, right? Yeah. What? That's a great show. That, the Santa Claus, buddy, that's the best one. They yeah, did damn it. good. One show. They did it. Yeah. I could watch all of them. You know? Yeah, they're all good. But yeah, the first one is, yes, very good. Fred Claus. Is Steve, have you seen the Santa Claus? Yeah. No, you have. No, you have. You son of a bitch. Yeah. What happens in it? Deep oh, Christmas comes. Hello. Chimney. He does though. Wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> see. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. I knew you saw it. <laughs> uh, was, uh, how about the Grinch? You seen that one with Jim Carrey? Yeah. Banger. Yeah. 
Okay. Four Christmases. Home Alone. What's your favorite? What's your favorite oh, Christmas movie? Oh, Home Alone. Uh, I completely one. forgot. One? Yeah, yeah, for sure. See, I love Lost in New York, but yeah. I don't yeah. mind New York as well. Yeah. Plus, I think that's a good one. DJ mm-hmm. T's in it, too. Yes. Yeah, it makes a cameo. That's great. Yeah, his cameo. president. Yeah. That's, that's not my president. Oh, I didn't know who you were talking about. Because he's not the president right now. Wow, that's he was, I mean, he was cool to everybody. First sound of reason that you've had in a long time. I have on plenty this. of reason. I'm plenty, just saying plenty. in that particular sphere. Look at you growing. Yeah. Look at you. Arnold's my president. Maybe. Could be. Well, he did no, go he into policy a little bit there. <laughs> yeah. They did. He still does it. Oh, yeah. I wasn't born here. Right. Yeah. Could be governor. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can't, can't be president. What are you going to be, 35? Mm-hmm. American born? Mm-hmm. Yep. Hell yeah. That's it. Red blooded. Well, actually, these days you have to be 75. But yeah, 80 years old, dead. can't talk mm-hmm. to run for what? Any position in politics. Yeah. Great. Crazy. Most of the high up ones, too. How is that a thing, you think? I don't know anything about We need that. to go to Argentina now and figure out how they did it. All right. I, I've heard <laughs> a lot of you were talking yeah. the way you're talking. That guy. What? And this is exactly what I've been saying about reason and logic mm-hmm. and everything. Yep. That like is that. reason and logic. <laughs> there, some of these videos come out and make me question AI. Oh, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Some of them coming out. <laughs> that guy's a lightning rod. I guess that's not AI is what we've been told. Nope. <laughs> Great sideburns on that son of a bitch. I don't know. Sideburns, you notice that? All I see is that hair. Oh, yeah. yeah hair, time. too. Sideburns come down to his His hair jaw. doesn't move, but his face certainly says a lot. Oh, yeah. And it, it, it is really going. A lot of product. All right. Before we get out of here, and uh, it has been a glorious Tuesday. Arnold Schwarzenegger Tuesday. Hell, yeah. Hell, mm-hmm. yes. yes. Yep. Who hey, Arnold Schwarzenegger's watching? Hey, Arnold. Listen, you're one of the greats. Society needs you to continue to be that way. Hell yeah. You should stop watching this shitty ass fucking show. <laughs> <I> agree. <laughs> okay. Right Arnold. Now. We got a lot of schmay around here. Mm-hmm. It's not schmay you need, though. Mm-mm. We need you to continue to do policy. Yep. And to continue to serve society. Mm-hmm. We need a sports act to be bigger than the first three acts combined because that is what's possible. With the brain that you have, Arnold Schwarzenegger, our show, only going to ruin that. Only going to ruin that. Need less of us, but we need more of you. Hell yeah. Hell hey, man. Are. Love I you, I think we need to come to the Thunderdome. Yeah, bring a box. Out. Bring a box of cigars. Could you too. imagine how quickly we would fucking ruin his schmay oh, if so he quick. came out here <laughs> to no, the no, Thunderdome? You would love door. the Hawkeyes, though. Him and the Hawkeyes would be great. Yeah. I, I don't think I've done any of those poses before, by the way. But when Mr. Olympia <laughs> says, hey, you 13-time world champion, says, hey, yep. well, why don't you show me some of those muscles you have? You have to. Look you natural. Know, I've seen you guys do this in photos. Yep. Yeah. I've seen this one before. <laughs> mm-hmm. they say, yeah, Hulk Hogan did that one all the time, brother. Mm-hmm. Yep. That had to be for a reason. Oh, yeah. Hulk was just dominating Should have woke him mic. up. <laughs> That would have been good. Yeah. And he's posing in those documentaries. Holy shit. Crazy. Feels like you're going to pass out. Yeah. Like the way they... Here he is uh, from Conan. Uh, Will geez. Chamberlain and Andre the Giant. Those are big guys. <laughs> Those are big guys. That's obese. That's him in the middle, yep. That's him in the middle. Yeah. That's the guy we just talked to. Mm-hmm. On right, Andre the Giant, he used to be able to drink 60 beers in one flight. Yeah. From California to New York or whatever. Beast. Believable. And then the other side, uh, there's a lot of stories about, about him and his Ooh. accomplishments his as well. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Great at basketball. Uh, charmer, yep. he's a charmer. Mm-hmm. Charmer. They tell true stories about him all the time. Oh, all the time. Mm-hmm. Especially that hundred point game. <laughs> little, little, little questionable. Whoa, 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 hey, whoa! I just haven't seen any film of it. You're talking about the hundred points. You talking yep. about the hundred points, or that he had sex with twenty five thousand women? This is all I seen of that hundred points. What? Just a sign? Yeah, it's it's like you're better. Than better that. fucking believe. I just, it. I just haven't seen it. I'll tell you what. I didn't really believe that conspiracy until I was shown all the facts. We saw the box score. Oh yeah! Boom! Game set match. You don't buy it? I mean, they're starting five, five, seven white guys on the other side. I think, I think he probably he he could have scored four hundred points if he wanted to. Yeah, you're right. The fact that they said it was a hundred might have been a lie. Might have been one twenty. Exactly. Might have been one hundred five. Might have shaved a couple off. We have no idea. No three seconds either. So you could just go down there, park it, not even have to score hundred points. You're gonna need that's point like. Yeah, quick. That's oh, yeah. really quick. Oh, yeah. We're not, we don't have three seconds anyways. No, no. 50 uh, baskets. Yeah, we got to just keep this thing moving. <laughs> anyways, let's keep it moving. Thank you for yeah. watching, Arnold. Great cigars. What's he smoking there, you think? And I saw you because you saw him smoking half to yeah, yeah. – that's like a natural smoker's thing to do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's some great clips of Arnold talking to the camera about why he smokes cigars and calling people – Calling people out for not smoking where they want. Well, actually, here is the clip that you're referring to of Arnold talking about his cigar smoking. They said it was a hundred. Might have been a. The hell that is that? not the clip. That was me. That's not like you. That was me talking. Huh. Holy shit! That's.
That is not what Arnold. I'm reading that daily newsletter, so I am becoming Arnold. Because right. I'm a stud. I'm ballsy. <laughs> I don't take no shit from anyone. I smoke my stogie anywhere I want. I don't have to find a hideout place like you. <laughs> 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 that's a full longer clip too about like there's a couple minutes in that one but that's obviously the highlight I went at the end who, laughing in the yeah. face yeah. of the whole thing what do you think he's smoking AJ what do you think he's smoking something really nice something nice that I've never got my hands on what type of thing can you like is there you know if you were to ask I don't know, about that marijuana for instance I would give some sort of answer Connecticut yeah. rapper, probably no I don't I think he's nice dark heavy cigars that men smoke like he 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 knows what he's doing. Okay, so what are those? Those are the slow burners. Those are the, they take a while with the heavy, dark ones. What does that mean? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like more potent. A little, when you, a little more bite to it, I think, as you do it. It's almost like uh, I compare it to beer drinkers that drink yeah. like light beer compared to IPAs that you taste them and, you know, you see the beer and it's 19% alcohol and it's red and they tell you it's beer. It's like there's some cigars sm taste like that kind of. Got it. Okay. Uh, a little thick, a little heavier. Yep. Oh, a little yeah. bit more cigar-y cigar. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. I love that that's what he's smoking. That's what he should be smoking. Yeah. Beast. I mean, he smokes wherever the fuck he wants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unlike you. <laughs> 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 All right. Time for everything DB, where we get much smarter every single week. We can't thank this man enough. Ladies and gentlemen, Darius J. Butler. D. Butch. Way to go, D. Butch. Let's go. Let's start with. Uh... Where are we at? Where are we at? Let's where are we start. At? Uh... Uh... Okay, Indy. Down at the circle. Boom. Here we go. Closer right here. The time. 32 seconds left in the game. Jalen Ramsey's back, baby. He had two interceptions in this game. The other one was a great play quarters. Uh, dig route outside in. Made a diving interception. Just another diving interception. We saw it yesterday. It's going to be cover two up top. Quarters down bottom. Once again in quarters, you're going to be outside leverage. Quarterbacks wants to throw this ball inside. Do post comes over the top. Fully extended. Obviously knocked the wind out of him. But in this game, close this game out. Once again, backside in the quarters. Post route against the quarters coverage. That's a tough down for most cornerbacks, but not for Jalen Ramsey. Since he's been back on his defense in Miami, they've been dominant. We expect that to continue to get better. Gumpsh as the stretch of this Ooh. season comes down. But I mean, wow. that's is he a, better than he's, he's ever been? It feels like he's playing man, his best football right now. He hit the ground running. It, I mean, when you come in middle of the season as a corner, especially as a DB, like, you know, your body, you're using muscles. When you're actually playing football, it's different to rehab and working out. So you're using different muscles, not only uh, physically, but mentally. You know, the game is uh, stressful, mental as well. And he's been back, what, three weeks well, now? Wasn't even supposed to be back yet. Yeah, three mm -hmm. weeks now. Came back damn near a month early mm -hmm. and three interceptions already in three weeks. This obviously been a huge one closing this game out against a close uh, a close scrappy Raiders team. <laughs> but, I mean, look at the, con the concentration. How's he on it takes absurd. Yeah. Athlete. To make that catch and then to finish it through the ground. You see a lot of receivers drop drop that ball. Ah, uh, yeah. It was, uh, you obviously saw one last night. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, yes. hey, up top, Rasul Douglas. Big signing for the Buffalo Bills. West Virginia. Needed him. Bills. It's going to be base. Belled off coverage. Foot in the ground. This mm. is perfect. Teach tape. Top of the route oh. against a good receiver as well. I, not, not a great quarterback making the throw. But oh. this is an incredible play. First and 15. You're coming off your quarters coverage once again, so corners outside. You got the quarter safety here. It's a tough, tough uh, play to execute as a corner. Top of the route, put that foot in the ground, get right back downhill, plant drive. Rasul Douglas had two uh, interceptions against the New That's York That's literally Bears. the combine drill. Yep. That is actually the combine drill. Flip, 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 Open break. your hips, zone turn. You want to put this top, you want to be as efficient. It's probably the most important movement, honestly, as a DB is being efficient with your plant and your drive. You don't want to waste steps. Once I put this foot in the ground, if you put it here, you're wasting steps because as a receiver on the other side, they want to put this foot in the ground and come back downhill. So you can't, it's, it's that much, obviously a yard, a half a yard, two yards, the big, big difference in the NFL. So it's a huge play for When they say cut on a dime, it matters. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah being able to do something like that. I, I can't wait for them to get a new stadium. Look at those shadows on the field. That Those lighting there stink. You get real upset about this type of thing. This has really been your kind of calling card. This is the worst stadium. Look at all the shadows. 
That's disgusting. Yeah, it is. It's so disgusting. Look, how many guys we got? Well, we got five guys every guy. How are you supposed yeah. to tell? What are we? No wonder Zach you Wilson's throwing picks. Thread last season. Yeah, about. You, go, you go take a look at all the new stadiums. There ain't shadows, okay? Because they have proper lighting. Just yeah, that's because Jim Cameron's setting up the lighting. Mm -hmm. Bingo. Yeah. Guy's a fucking genius. Yeah. yeah. Garrett Wilson, the most miserable person on yeah. the planet right now? Yeah. Uh, just, okay. Yeah. He's calling team meetings, right? Yeah, there, well, there's, there's, some, there's some clips, too, from this weekend where he's running routes, and boy, he is wide-ass open. Oh, that's Aaron tough, didn't throw Zach under the bus. By the way, no, nope. he didn't. No, 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 no. I didn't even think about that while I was asking a question. Like for me, I was asking a question to him. Like, hey, you see opportunities with this team, but he was like, ah, I'm not gonna throw anybody on the bus, which he would have done if he would have been like, yeah, there's like guys open mm -hmm. a lot. <laughs> yeah. Line's actually playing pretty good. Yeah, yeah if you just get the ball back on time, out on time, line probably looks much better. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity. It's like he would have got murdered oh. if he. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't even think about that, which is why I'm a doofus. Anyways, let's get smarter. <laughs> Darius, who are we looking at? Another team. That made that were buyers at the trade deadline. You brought in Kevin Byer, great player, great safety in this league for a long time. And this is him just having a full understanding of what's going on. I always talk about it offensively. When they put speed at number three, Justin Watson. Now, a lot of people, you know, talk about him getting too many targets. And him early in the season, he was kind of one of the more dependent, uh, dependable receivers for Patrick Mahomes. But he's at number three. If you count from outside in, one, two, three. Speed at three usually creates some type of issue for a defense. Kevin Byer understands that at a middle of, as a middle of the field safety. Aaron talked about it. I talked about it before. Once you get down in the red area, we're not worried about you running past us. Does a great job getting lateral and beating him to the spot and getting this big time interception. Second quarter, 651, first and 10. Get you down. know what I like as well? Getting down. Getting down. Because there was a little bit of space. He maybe could have got four yards, mm -hmm. five yards right yeah, there. Yeah, thought about Absolutely. it. Oh, my God. Maybe I'm going to take you to the house. He goes, nah, I've done this before. Smart. Yeah. The yeah, answer is no. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. That's smart. a very smart play. Set your offense up. A lot of DBs, you know, you only get so many opportunities to get you in the ball. You get excited. You want to try to get in the end zone. Chuck Pagano is funny. He used to have a list. Hey, you're not on the list. So when you get a pick <laughs> in the end zone, you go down. It's only a couple guys on the list. Kevin Byers probably That's on that hilarious. list to take it out, but he is smart enough wrong to get down. Yeah, are there, guy. like Pat mentioned it earlier, when you watch the tape, are, are there any plays where it's like, hey, Kelsey, we're drawing this up for you? Um, because I mean, he's just running like a little five yard. I'm literally. I, that's all I'm thinking about last night, and that's because I'm a Kelsey fan. He scored on a touchdown. They, they, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, there was a little slant. Yeah. They had this one little yeah, slant where he shook the guy, and the ball was on top of him immediately upon getting that there. But like. We show a bunch of these other clips of these players like we gotta get our stars mm -hmm. in early. We gotta get so we design plays for them to get the ball. It's like feels like Travis. It's always like, hey, figure out how to get open in here. It's always like a feel. Can we just get a spot where he's like maybe in the middle of a bunch? So there's a little bit of chaos, so we yeah. can get him open and get him the ball. I mean, get him in the whole thing. But he had he's earned and he has so much freedom in the offense. You know, been with Andy Reid for Agreed. so long. Obviously, been with Patrick Mahomes uh, so long. Sometimes you'll get a play called as a receiver and you're running a route that you know is going to be covered based on something you see from the defense. So being that Kelsey has that freedom to option off. Now, you can't do it all the time, but to find that hole in the zone, you know, it's on him a lot to get open and to, to, to continue to create uh, separation. But, I mean, defense, you're going to focus in on them, especially when you're not, you don't have a Tyreek Hill, you don't have anyone outside of Travis Kelsey who week in, week out is going to be that dependable second receiver to create separation to make catches. The first touchdown of the game to Justin Watson, they had – Two or maybe three, three. guys, and yeah. Yeah. that's why Justin Watson ran wide open. Yeah, same thing with MVS. I think he had an impact on him being wide open. McKinnon, the touchdown against um, Miami Dolphins down the red area over in uh, Germany when he came across from the other side of the field. Kelsey came from this way. Dolphins had three guys on mm -hmm. him, so he's wide open. So, you know, it is. Hey, it's a big time a compliment, too. Travis. Yeah. Yeah. Big right. time compliment. You did good. Got to make, make the Chiefs beat you left handed. Uh, yeah, but uh, me and the Swifties need to see the ball. Yeah, in I agree. Seven's here. Yeah, with Swifties there, they 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 make it happen. They hit a huge parlay last night. Who did the really? Swifties? Yeah, I guess they were all betting on Kelsey to score and DeAndre Swift to score, so it it happened. I mean, Boom! A guy hit for what? One hundred ninety-seven thousand. Yeah. Oh night? shit! Mm -hmm. And one, Is that what that was? One point six million as well. Two hit. What's that? One guy put forty grand on a ten leg parlay. It was like mm. plus thirty eight hundred odds. Put forty grand on it to win one point six million. And the other guy will put 150 down, 150 bucks down for 197,000. Yes. Way to go. Yeah. Keep going. Keep Hell killing yeah. them. Keep, yeah. going. Yeah. keep yeah. killing them. Speaking of keep killing them, Deron Bland. Yeah. Should probably be in the defensive player of the year conversation at this point. Whoa. This is his fourth. This guy's got fourth. more touchdowns than Devontae Adams. A lot what? of receivers right now. His Travis Kelsey? fourth pick six on the season. Once again, anticipating 
and knowing what's coming. You get the motion down. Mm. It's called a Zen motion. Z motion. Zen. Yeah, it's in motion. All you do is Z in motion. motion. Understanding what route's coming. Understanding you're probably going to have to navigate through some traffic. Because usually when you have this tight end going, he's usually just kind of a body pick guy. Deron Bland, man, he's, he's, he's a special player. Always finds the ball. Not only finds the ball, but finds a way to put it in the end zone. Cross Front flip hey, bump, That's too. tough. That's a yeah. tough, one of the toughest routes Up and at him. to cover, um, you know, International Football League, chasing a receiver across the field. Not only does he cover it, Makes a diving catch, gets up, puts it in the end zone. Incredible play from start to finish. Bryce, look, no, they're all no. they're all tied together, D. But look, number one step in the motion. Number one steps up to get kind of like on the point. I don't know exactly who has eighty two, man, but I, yeah. And then Bland gets his depth, so he doesn't get picked off. Yep, they're on different levels, and I think See? honestly, I think Curse has some bad eyes here in the play action yeah. because he cut <laughs> eighty two wide ass open. But uh, Deron Bland does an excellent job chasing this and making the play. So um, you know, Bryce. Right. I think he was kind of locked in on hitting that crosser and not seeing. The guy's got no protection. He's trying to get the ball out. He's you know not what? thinking. Hey, Steph hey, Curry nah. is still hitting threes. Yeah. So this this is oh, one right you. here where it's not on the protection. It's more so on the read. Oh, no. Yeah, Remember, he, because wild, wild ass open right there. they said Bryce Young's the Steph Curry. Mm -hmm. Yep. And C.J. Stroud said, do you think Steph Curry's stopping shooting after missing some shots? Is CJ the actual? Is he the real stuff? Or is that like a thinly veiled, like, hey, Bryce, I know you've been playing like shit, but just keep throwing the football. Oh, Mel, you that, think that, that was That, a, that is yeah. boy. Oh, because yeah. they're boys. Yeah. Yeah. Back. You're all right. Buddy. Keep, keep going. Shooting. We just shoot. Exactly. Uh, we ain't worried about none of this. Warriors just stink. Yes, they do. Yeah, they did. They just stink. It was a long yeah. time ago. Steph's early years. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. Steph only got one scholarship offer out of high school. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Was, uh, was I coaching the Warriors when he came in? Hmm? Because that's basically what he's got. Oh. Steph Curry, a.k.a. Bryce Young. Oh, okay. You're talking about Frank Wright. Yeah. They had to trade Monte That's Ellis. That's in a bad spot. Yeah. That's in a bad spot. It's there, done. Yeah. It's over. Yeah, he's for sure getting fired. Yeah, you it's, it's, he survives? No. Tepper? You think Tepper's going to? I mean, it's history says no, no, Tepper, yeah. no. But, I mean, like you said, and then what? The Where whole franchise is fucked for like 10 years. It's electric and, and watch. And then what? Ben Johnson? Comes in there because Tepper has so much money, he'd be able to pay Ben Johnson more. Got to be. Else. Would that? Would he pick there? Well, yeah. If someone, if someone gave him a little less, and then he had a, like a top five pick. I don't know what Sean Payton's making from the richest owner mm -hmm. in the sport, but I would assume Tepper's contracts would be pretty big. You think if he'd he wanted pick to. Bryce Young over Just Herbert? Who are you talking about? Or ben Caleb, Johnson mm -hmm. or Caleb Williams? Yeah, or yeah, like if what Spano's paying him? I mean, would you? I mean. Go zero and sixteen and make two more million a year. Or? Two million. It's more. more than two. Yeah, that's the, what I'm saying. I, I think there's a chance a temper just goes like. I give you fifteen. Yeah, twenty. I'll give you twenty five million dollars yeah. a year to come in here. And if I get it wrong, fuck it, I'll do it again. Tepper's just like I feel like he's desperate. Oh yeah. Like I, yeah. I feel like he is a pretty desperate guy to make his team good. I think he'll spend. Yeah. I think he'll spend a lot of money because there's no salary cap on coaches' contracts. That's why I think Dark Horse Bill. Like, Belichick to yeah, the Panthers? Yeah, maybe he gives them like Hell a percentage no. of the team. Darius. I, I don't think he I want the Patriots to keep him. I'm just saying when we're thinking about these hypothetical situations you know that are completely take, Yeah, but Tep Tepper already Carolina. did the college coach too, right? Like he's gonna want a made man. At yeah, some point. but do you think Bill's going in on Monday oh. mornings and shut the fuck up, dude? <laughs> maybe maybe that's what he actually that. wants. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> that's probably yeah, thought man. what he thought he was getting in Frank Reich. Somebody that tells him, I don't want to hear your yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't take that, your schmay anymore. And that's probably the only guy Tepper would be like, yeah, you know what, okay. I, I don't. Who are they tying anymore. together this morning? Harbaugh and the Bears? And yeah. then mm -hmm. they said that the Bears' former Big Ten president. Yeah. Kevin Warren. Yeah. And it's like, that's a tie. That's not Harbaugh and him did not get along. No. I don't think whatever he was. The end of his tenure at the Big Ten was during COVID time. And Harbaugh was very adamant and wide open against him. So people are tying that together is a good thing. Maybe they have bygones be bygones, but I don't know if that's necessarily telling me he's going to Chicago. Uh, Chicago. No. no. People are making a big deal that he like played there, but I don't, I don't think he gives a shit. I mean, it's like he, he's trying to win, and I don't know if he's just going to be like, oh, well, I played quarterback for the Bears, so I got to go back and make them good again. Harbaugh, that's going to be an interesting thing because obviously he's done great things in Michigan. Mm -hmm. Okay? Had a little bit of a rogue agent. With a booster that was supplying it. Yep, you know. Mr. T. He, re he reaped the benefits of it, and the NCAA is going to have to punish him for that. That's just how they operate. We're seeing it right now with JMU. It's right. just how they operate. Sure. There's not a lot of reason. Oh, you didn't know, huh? They don't care. 
Okay, they haven't even punished him yet. No, for the hamburger that Michigan punished him for at the beginning of the season. No, that was a self-imposed penalty. That wasn't even an NCAA penalty yet. And then this last three games, that's a Big Ten penalty. That's not even an NCAA penalty yet. No. So I believe it was broken this weekend. Uh, I think by Feldman. I believe he broke that. There's an expectation from some people that. Harbaugh's going to be suspended a lot of next year, if not... Like maybe the whole year. Yeah, because the NCAA has multiple things that they have yet to punish on, and the NCAA is a heavy, swinging hammer group. These won't count as, like, time served? I don't no. think so. Ooh. It's a Damn. Big Ten punishment. Yeah, it is, that is funny to think about, time served. That is, I, that'd be the NCAA utilizing you know, reason and stuff. They don't do that. No. They like to showcase that they have power. Mm -hmm. So everybody's just automatically assuming that instead of sitting out a year, Harbaugh's probably just going to... Probably go back to the NFL because he had so many people in suitors last year. Remember on signing day, allegedly he was meeting with the Vikings. Mm -hmm. and I yep. guess the Broncos deal, he was almost the head coach. We're learning this now. All yep. these insiders are saying all these things. I don't know if we were covering them at the time or if we thought they were real at the time. I'm not the sure. Vikings definitely was a thing. But I guess yeah. he was very close to going back to the NFL last year. Now with another penalty coming from the NCAA staring down next year, it's like, yeah. does he go somewhere? They maybe he ball. goes to the Panthers. Good ball, coach. Maybe he goes to the Panthers. Yeah, maybe. Get him as far away. I mean... Who would want That's wanna? the worst setup ever. Like, at least when <laughs> Shane Steichen's coming in, it's like, hey, you got the fourth overall pick. Like, you're going to be able to pick your guy for your mm -hmm. tenure here. Like, there is nothing nice about going to Carolina. There has been a response from Jay Glazer. Um, <laughs> Jay Glazer says to Ty, I still don't know why you Jagoffs give me a lisp. That's another guy on our show. Hashtag. Stray nose. Oh no. Oh god. Oh, oh, boo -boo, <laughs> oh god, stray. Ann. stray. Boo -boo. You didn't deserve that, stray Ann. You did not deserve that. Jeez. Golly. Hashtag J knew though. Hashtag J knew. Stray nose. J knew. Jagal. I like that. Great like use. That I do like that. Oh, Anyways, this Car this Carolina team certainly something. Yep. Certainly something. Good Ooh. luck. Welcome to the big leagues, Bryce. Yeah. This is your life now. This is your life. Bam will, every week. Will we ever know? Will we ever know? At some point. I hope so. I don't 15 know. years from now? I hope so. Uh, I don't know. Let's move along, shall we, to another team that we, uh, you know, we don't know about. So we yeah. just saw uh, on the last play with Deron Bland on the crosser. Now we got another situation with a cut split. Doesn't motion down to it. Now you got an uh, X receiver split in on the ball. He's going to run a crosser right here, too. Watch Tommy DeVito. Yes. Third and one. So obviously you're expecting a run up here. A lot of people in the box. Hard play action. He kind of sneaks. You see him kind of ducking. He's going to sneak in there and hit right up the left sideline. Uh, Darius Slayton, I believe. Oh, Great play action. Sneaky. A lot of traffic oh, for that corner to get defense. through. That is tough sledding once again got on him. that crossing route. And then got him with a little eat, eat at the about 10-yard line. But here we go. Good Hard play, play action. Good yeah, play. great play. A lot of times you'll see this with the tight end where he'll fall and then mm -hmm. get up. He's called the Houdini play. But this is him just kind of sneaking through there. You see the DB. A lot of traffic. His Two of his guys. One receiver, tough, tough down for that Great cornerback. Ball. What a yeah. ball. Oh, yeah. Pretty. <laughs> Lace pretty ball from the passing pie zone. Yeah, I'd want him. Right now? I just wouldn't throw him away like Giants fans are doing. What do you mean they're throwing him away? Oh. Well, Bruce, tell me about Tommy DeVito a little bit. You guys are throwing him away? You said maybe not. Nobody's yeah. throwing him away. It's a hell, hell of a play call and a, and a great throw. Oh, what do you say? Oh, yeah, maybe a kid that lives with his mom in Jersey is good for a weekend. Yeah. yeah. And a weekend said, or two down the shore for the summer. That's Tommy Come DeVito is more of a weekend. Yeah. A lot of people on Monday saying this was maybe the most detrimental win in the history of the Giants. Ooh. Not happy. Yeah. yeah, they went up. Not happy. Yeah, they they. They don't like what he's about to do either, I don't think. Yeah. He's only getting better. Yeah, exactly. yeah. 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 he's gonna. DeVito's about to fuck around and win some games. The only yeah. tank he knows is the one he wears on the boardwalk, am I right? Yeah, this guy ain't a Benny either. He's here for the whole year, Bruce. I think that's what uh, everybody in Jersey's learning about Tommy. Look at this guy. Boom. Good play. Bang. Tough play. A lot more of that as you continue to move up. Fucking see. Yeah, this weekend, huge game for DeVito. No, let's have him win out. I agree. Yeah. Yes. You have to win this week at yes. least. Have to. If he doesn't. Because then... if not, it's just going to be a bunch of that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then Patriots give him $140 million on the first day of the offseason. Yeah. He's your yep. new guy. Instead of Saquon. Congratulations. <laughs> you got a local kid exactly. who's your guy. Is Joe Burrow, Cincinnati? Ever heard of it? Whoa. Oh. Got a similar situation here. Yeah. That, Lucky that, for that fared pretty well for Cincinnati. Yeah. Didn't it? The guy that has since birth understood what this team means to the community mm -hmm. and what it does for people knows it inside out. Yeah. I'm thinking that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Get him out of his parents' house. So you house. lie, cheat, and steal? Who's Whoa. doing that? Mm hmm? What are you talking about that? What? Injury reports? Let's... Let's make sure they're correct, okay? Oh, he's talking about Joe Burrow. <laughs> oh. He's talking about Joe Burrow. I was Burrow. like, wait, DeVito stole because he's Italian? Back to the Bengals. 
Hey, what's the deal with that injury report? We're going to get to it. I don't know. Grand There's jury. A, yeah, grand jury. He might, yeah, he might get the chair. <laughs> <laughs> fucking electrocute his ass. Zach no, Taylor? No. One, Everyone someone. in the Bengals. Brown, Taylor, Burrow. I think they're just throwing Jamar on there, too. Damn. No, Jail? Jamar yeah. didn't do anything wrong. No, electric chair, dead. Jeez. Yep. They're talking about it. They don't yeah. fuck around when it comes so to Ohio, Drew. Ohio have the death penalty? <laughs> I would assume. Yeah. It's not, it's not technically legal, but yeah, if they want okay. someone dead, they know what to do. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Send them for a sandwich in Youngstown. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's what they say. Big wink there. Did you give, see that wink he gave you the camera? That was really one of your best winks, too. I'm a winker. Yeah, hell yeah, especially when you're talking about Youngstown. Bingo. Hey, the Penguins down there rolling in with the Guinos. Mm -hmm. yeah, Dangerous. A tough matchup this weekend, my friend. The Penguins? Yeah. The Penguinos? First round of the FCF's playoffs against Duquesne this week. Oh! <laughs> Good luck, Trestle. The amount of Italian fans at this game. 45 minutes. What is that? Yeah, maybe an hour? Yeah. Oh, the Dukes. You guys worth a shit? I mean, we're in the playoffs. We just won the NEC, so yeah. <laughs> what about them? They're good, I assume. Yeah, yeah. Penguins are tough. Yeah, it's going to be tough. You guys are about to lose to the Penguins? Probably. Tony. It's Tony. <laughs> Tony, you wore the Dukes fuck? jersey yeah. the other day on a show. Back no the Dukes. I'm realistic guy. No faith. <laughs> What? Realistic what? What if they win? I'm a realistic guy. You're going to be a bad guy. They just tw they just tweeted about you. Yeah. They're like, look at town, rocking the Duke's pool over. Yeah, that's Something like, and then you go two days later, Youngstown's about to be. We're, we're going to get fucking Listen. killed. Listen, when the Dukes and Jerry Schmidt go to Youngstown, they're going to put up a fight. I can tell you that for sure. Jerry's still coaching. Yeah, Jerry's been there for a long time. How many like years? Actually, since I was there, so a good amount of time. So if you went back there, you and Jerry, Jerry, you'd say. He wouldn't know. Who Favorite was. recruit I've ever fucking he, had. He wouldn't This know. guy right here. He wouldn't know. Who. <laughs> what is he? He's like he's like Jerry Jones saying 1923. Why wouldn't he know who you were? Well, no, I was only there for two years, so. <laughs> yeah, <never laughs> okay. Yeah. Pivotal right. two Sounds years. like the relationship went great. Let's move along. <laughs> the big two years. Jordan Love, balling. Yeah, yes, sir. Fucking certified guy. Oh. Had a great day. Game winner down the at Lambeau. What's going on? Complete Free snap chaos. <laughs> complete, <the> hell? <laughs> complete chaos <laughs> and confusion <laughs> back here uh, once again. That's Santa, throwing oh, no. James. Look, this, oh, no. <laughs> this is on, it's on the players. It's on the coach. It's on the coordinator. Coach. It was also call the had to come coach. in late. The call had to come in late. I mean. Call had to come in. There's one guy making calls over there, yeah. so stop fucking stop asking. asking. So, so they did. Uh, Packers <laughs> did rush to the ball, which was kind of a, uh, kind of a head scratcher at the time. You see fourth quarter. 238, this was a go-ahead touchdown, so it's like, why you rush the ball? Why do you want to give that much time to Justin Herbert and offense, timeouts, whatever? But uh, I guess they saw something on tape that the Chargers probably have issues getting lined up, what? especially when you go empty. You rush the ball, go empty, you put A.J. Dillon out wide so you can see they're trying to get man-to-man -man matches. Murray's trying to make a check. He's a linebacker. He, sh he should be on A.J. Dillon. Uh, Mike Davis should be on Romeo Dobbs. Shit's a, that's a pick. <laughs> Yep, nobody, everybody's wrong. Nobody's in the right spot. Jeez. Romeo Dobbs throws his hand up, throw it up, goes up, makes an aggressive catch, pulls it away, ends up being the game-winning touchdown from Jordan Love to Romeo Dobbs. Derwin right. James, where the green dot? Ooh, I'm not sure on this. I would assume one of these backers. I don't think Kendricks comes off the field. What a nightmare, AJ. Figure it out. Yeah, that's a tough situation, man. They sprint to the line. Even if you get the call in early, then they, boom, they get to empty. All right, yeah. you got to identify where the back is. It's tough there. Usually we have like a mayday, mayday check. Like, yeah. You know, so which is Tampa. typically, yeah, check typically, Tampa it's too. either Tampa or cover three. That's one. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about getting lined up, corners on receivers, linebackers <clears> on running back. Hey, Tampa, Tampa, mayday, mayday, whatever it is, it's usually one word. You get lined up, you get through the down. But Tampa's the most basic, huh? Just two safeties hanging yeah. back. Everybody else look at your guy. Yep. And even if you're a corner, you know, you sink back. You got a flat, but you sink back. Read the quarterback. Read yeah. his eyes. Eyes on the quarterback, uh, especially against empty. Well, Here AJ we Dillon's out there, too. Yeah. You got to be out there. <laughs> you got to get lined up with 28. Yeah. Only Dude's got hands back on at that him. time. Good news. I saw um, Aaron Jones just a sprain. That is good news. A knee sprain? That's great news. Kind of been hurt all year, though, unfortunately. I think they've kind of been making, you know, I mean, even when he's healthy, he doesn't get out on the field anyway. So, yeah, they, have, they were down to one healthy running back. So Shefty yeah. saying, uh, Packers running back Aaron Jones has an MCL sprain. Will be considered week to week, but is unlikely to play Thursday Thanksgiving against the Detroit Lions. Per source, says Adam Shifter. Usually, that's about a two to four week. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Based so on the on, season, on history. Well, when he gets back, though, they give him the ball. Yeah, I hope so. 
been saying that for three fucking years. So, you know, hopefully someone up there listens and understands that. Is his contract up after this yeah, year? Yeah, I think this is probably going to be his last year. He took a pay cut coming in this year, yeah. too, right? Yeah, he wanted to be a Packer. He did. Yeah. I, he, he would never say this. Because he's a good guy. Yeah. Great guy. And Military family, right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And he epitomizes what it means to be a Green Bay Packer. But I'm guessing he wishes he would have fucking, you know, went somewhere else. You should. T- you should guys should have Naj and A.J. Dillon be your two backs. AJ Dillon last year too. That'd be par. That'd be some real par. par. You got Naj and AJ Dillon in the backfield with Jordan Love. He's big. Par on par. That'd be a lot of par. A lot of par. A lot. That'd be good par. It would be a good par. Why don't you guys do that? That might help the defense too. You know, you guys just run yeah. four straight plays every single series. No, four, we, four, 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 no, four, four. Well, we've tried that several times this year. Unfortunately, uh, with AJ Dillon, it's usually two yards, one yard, two yards, boom, send the punt team out. Or so, you know, you can't. But how many guys he run over? <laughs> Not many. Oh. I love AJ Dillon. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I just need to. That's the only time they talk. Need to see, hey, need, I love. Need to see a little bit more on the field. <laughs> break one. Break yeah. one. Two, get one here. But we are getting into AJ Dillon season here. When it gets cold, you don't want to tackle that. So <laughs> no, you do not. Now <laughs> is the time. It is. It is. Feed Thank him. you for clarifying that it's not AJ Dillon. You, we love AJ. Dillon. I love AJ Dillon. Fucking mayor of Door County. They gave him a key to the city. And he ran over that mascot. Yeah. And he's going to kill Connor. True. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But on the field. He needs to see a little bit more. Just a little bit. You've been pretty optimistic about the next game's the best game for AJ Dillon for a while now. Though. I have. And I'm getting less optimistic. Let's just put it that way. No. Why? This okay. is his time. You well, just said it. You yeah. just said it's his season. Yeah. yeah I don't know. What week are we in? We Eleven going, going into twelve. Yeah, 12, yeah. So yeah. I've been I've been banging the same goddamn drum for <laughs> for ten weeks, and my arm's getting tired. Okay, all right. <laughs> Not this week though. He's Not gonna, this week. Yeah, he's Thanksgiving. He's gonna eat. I don't he know. Is gonna yeah. eat. He's gonna eat. He is he's gonna, gonna eat. eat. Uh, AJ Dillon's uh, gonna uh, eat. Uh, you know uh, who's on the other him. side? We got Jack Campbell on the other side. I don't know if he has any Ooh, choice that there. Me. That worries me. It does. It does. Jack Campbell's been a dog for you guys. Yeah, obviously. All their rookies. Literally, I hear the name Jack. I hear Campbell. I'm like, is that yeah. Dan Campbell? Well, maybe his kid, Jack. I mean, they're the perfect match for each other. I mean, what do you expect? I said it on draft night. The guy eats fucking mm-hmm. nails and broken glass for breakfast every morning. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's a pretty good linebacker. They were saying the Lions had a bad draft. You remember that? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everyone was saying it. It took a while for Gibbs, too. And it was loud early in the season. Hey, Brian Branch is unbelievable. So he had like good. six tackles for loss in that game. One game alone. Yeah, but he didn't punt a ball like Hutch did. So. True. No. True. That yeah. might be the greatest. Is that one of the greatest drafts any team's ever had? Well, we'll look back on it. We'll see what they do. Yeah. Yeah. Just those first four, at least, like Gibbs, Campbell, Laporta, Branch. Got to see what happens. Yeah. yeah I mean, see. they win. It'll be considered, like, what? Greatest. We got to give more than half a season. But, yeah. True. Right, right up there. Packers going Jordan Love, AJ Dillon, Zai <laughs> Degora. That's probably. Trade up Jordan Love. Yeah. Sorry. I do big. love Jordan Love, though. Do you? Hey, you yeah. know who I love, though? Hmm. Ben Ness. Doesn't play enough. Oh, I can't remember. Where'd he go? Fucking dog. Yeah, that's right. We, lo- we love a lot of Iowa guys around here because them sons dog. of bitches perform on Sunday. They're in a Big Ten championship. Goddamn right. Amen. Tristan Wirfs said, I don't care about being terrible to watch. No. I was ripping my hair out all Saturday. Did you wa- Did you see a celebration afterwards with Brian Ferentz? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Team was hogging him. Kirk was hogging him. There was, water, there was tears. Get the water oh, yeah. dumped on him. There was a full thing. You see what Matt Rule said about him? No. He was like, I respect those two sons of bitches just about more than anyone else. He tried to hire Brian Ferentz in Carolina. Did you see what Ferentz was wearing? No wonder it Brian, didn't work. Did you see what Brian Ferentz was wearing? Yeah, well, that's a, <laughs> no, what was it? Just a, plain, just a black sweatshirt, no yeah. Iowa, no insignia, nothing on it. Act, it. One last act of defiance. I like that. Mm-hmm. Funeral for Yeah, the we hang team. nine points around here. Exactly. And if you want to move on, fuck you. <laughs> Bingo. That's what we do. Mm-hmm. Total. That's my offense. Yeah. Total's 26 this week. I did appreciate how much the team rallied around him afterwards, though. Oh, yeah. That told me a lot. Legit. Yeah, the boys love him. They do. They love him I mean, over there. Tristan Wirth said it, too. He loves him. Yeah. Anyone who's ever played for him kind of loves him. Fans hate his fucking guts, but, you know. Football enthusiasts hate him. Yeah. Because it's like, that ain't football. Right. But they win. He's a hell of an offensive line coach. I'll give him that. Maybe. Is he the offensive line coach? No, he used to be. And then got the OC job. And- Sorry, I couldn't find that in your home. T-Bud. T-Bud. Oh no, Debo! Debo, what are you? What's going on? You shopping you know, over there? You must have heard S I R I work. Don't say it. S I. Hey Siri, can you tell me what Darius J. Butler did two days ago? Okay, I found this on the web. For can you tell me what Darius J. 
shape of the dead. Check it out. <laughs> dead? What is it? What you do? Oh, shit. What does it say? Uh, pull up some ice. Hey, Siri. Death, death certificate. <laughs> what? What? You dead? No, nice. no, no. Another Darius. Hey, Siri. <laughs> how did Darius Butler do calling the Chargers Packers game? Shit. She heard it? No comment. Oh, she got nothing. I found this on the web. I'm sure she got some shit. Why isn't she talking? She got a little quiet. She got real quiet whenever mm. we're coming to compliment you as a commentator. Uh oh. Yeah. Maybe she, hey, Siri's enemies amazing. always within. That's Siri's in your amazing. phone. Yeah. Well, that's on your that's Man, on your person. Yeah. Siri, I use Siri a lot too. Do you really? I, I yeah. haven't turned it on just because I'm like, no, nope, yeah. not gonna listen to me. But then every conversation I have about something ends up in my algo. So oh, somebody's yeah, listening. It's listening. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I haven't turned Siri on. IG. I haven't turned any of them on. They're always listening. But they're still listening. Yeah, you gotta turn microphone off for every single app that you use. Do yeah, and didn't turn on Siri. I, I said you that want. That shit don't work either. Your phone's also scanning your face constantly. Well, to get in for sure, yeah. Oh, I no, even, even even without that, it just scans your face like every five seconds. It can't. It's facing the sky right now. Mm -hmm. It can't scan shit. Pocket. How about this? Put over Arnold. That's me, bitch. Look at that. What do you have to say about that? Now my phone thinks I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Boom. Boom. You're not Arnold. Yep. Shut up. <laughs> I didn't turn you on. These this phone's starting to suck. Oh yeah. Because the new one's out. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they made the old ones suck. Mm -hmm. This is classic. Yeah, had a lawsuit about that. Yeah, it was like, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll stop. We'll, we'll stop. fine you $9 billion. Cool, okay. we just made $10 trillion. Yeah, doesn't yeah. matter. We'll just keep it moving. Buy the 15 now. And you know what, Tim? We need, we need some upgrades, Tim Cook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we need, I don't want to hear it's titanium, okay? Mm -hmm. The Google Pixel phone is shooting things in like 8K. Yeah. Okay, let's make sure we're doing that. Tim Apple's the working pretty hard, though. The charger, chain has, charger change has been a delight. Okay, cool. It has. Well, that is very, that's an upgrade. That is quite an upgrade. Yeah. I'm talking about performance, though. Oh, you know what I mean. Let's go ahead and move this. Entire. That Pixel camera, by as the way, it, texts. it takes the best photo. So, like, if you take like six photos in a row, it will re like fix it to like a uh, person smiling, yeah. eyes open. Change your face. What? Yes. You don't yeah. even have to edit it. Oh yeah. Yeah, believe me, I've been trapped on these Google Pixel commercials because I'm like, hey Apple, I've stayed loyal and true for a long time because blue text. Yeah. Blue text. <laughs> and I guess that's changing potentially as yeah. well. Oh. <laughs> Point that to the camera, Con Man. Oh, no. Who was that, Ty? Oh, no. For real? Oh, no. Khakis. Get him some pants. <laughs> Get him some pants. <laughs> Give me a wet walk to the toilet. <laughs> uh. Clearest man of path. Hey. <laughs> <He's there with laughs> Take that chair. Oh. <laughs> oh man, you can kind of see it. Yeah, you can. There's a, there's a little. There's He's a little load in his serious? pants. Oh yeah. Is it coming down the pant line? <laughs> you just get in the shower with your clothes on. Ty. Oh shit! You can't hear me. Nope. Literally. No, I can't. Oh. <laughs> Power through, Ty. <laughs> that Whopper for breakfast will get you. It's a real show. Arnold Schwarzenegger was on this show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. DB, I don't know how we're going to. Yeah, sorry, DB. I think it's over. Sorry about that. That's part. Arnold's still watching. <laughs> no way. <laughs> DB, that was great. Yeah, that was great. Is that the one we're going to make Thank catch? Thank you. This, right, oh, that, yeah, that was yeah, the real, the real, the real play of the game. We're off Thursday and Friday, and uh, I think the boys maybe let that seep in. <laughs> is it smelling there? We do apologize That's for not the lack only of this, but uh, swap that chair up. There is a little bit of uh, no, a little excrement of. So chart. the uh, baby last night uh, goes down to sleep about six thirty-seven ish. Mm -hmm. Sure. Hadn't pooped yesterday though, so obviously uh, it's coming. A little bit of an alarm. Yeah. So at about eight ten, you know, she's screaming, she's crying down there. And she's going through a little uh, fever thing as well. So, you know, all eyes on. Little thing, uh, whole night. She good. I go down, get her out. We go down, get her out. As soon as I put her up on the thing, <laughs> we're talking nice. explosion dump. We're talking out the side of the diaper. Oh, yeah. Whole situation. It's dark in there, Blah. obviously, because we're trying to keep mm -hmm. it dark. Yep. So it's a, we, I heard the situation. I felt the situation, sure. mm -hmm. but I didn't fully have eyes on the situation yeah. in real time. Mm -hmm. Ruined her onesie, her little sleepy onesie. Uh, yeah. I mean, just absolutely decapitated the diaper as well. Just powered right through it. 
I think a similar thing just happened to Ty because yeah. I saw his face yes. kind of go through a little bit as if my baby was crying, uncomfort, a little discomfort yeah. happening in the face. Mm -hmm. And then some bubble must have moved through there. And, uh, you know, every once in a while you just kind of have a miscalculation. Big this one just, just audio? You know, is this one just audio? Oh. Or is there a potential virtual reality happening here as well? Mm. This one was video, audio, and virtual reality. He, yeah. That guy dumped his pants. Yeah. Yeah. You could and, tell when he was writing it out, too, because I glanced over. And I was like, I wonder what this is about. And never happened before. Yeah, I saw the I just SH. Oh, no. You can, see it, <laughs> you can really see it on his face. He was, he was disgusted with himself face. there. He felt like he was disgusted with himself. Hand, I yeah. mean, that is going to be a photo that I might put as my uh -huh. bio. My banner. Yeah, maybe. Might have to. Uh, Zito is actually printing it so we can hang it up Perfect. in the studio at some point as we speak. So <laughs> I think it's time for us to get out of here. We've done enough today. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hell of a day. I think yeah. you're probably right. Oh, yes. Oh, man. Proud of you, Ty. That boy, Ty. Zito just loving it over his shoulder. Yeah, he is. That guy just ruined a pair of pants. So good. Some underwear and probably a chair. And maybe his afternoon. But it could have got better as well. Yeah. Because... What's on the other side of a shart? Mm. It's clear guts. Amen. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're going through a shart or a shitty situation, remember, the sun is brightest after the darkest dawn. Yep. The air is cleanest after the most shitty air has come through. Boom. So everything Ty's going through is a nice little encapsulation of today's conversation with Arnold. Yep. You never have a losing situation. Nope. You have a learning situation. Yep. One that you can build calluses from and get better from. And us as a show, although one of us shit our pants in the middle of the show today. Sure. Tomorrow, maybe we don't. How about it? And we get better from this. We grow from this. We learn from this. And we get callous from this. AJ, anything to add on top of that about the mindset going forward after one of our guys shits his pants live on the air after we talked to Arnold Schwarzenegger just an hour well, before that? I don't want to rain on any positivity because I agree. I love Arnold's attitude his mindset everything is positive everything is an opportunity to get better but unfortunately for ty it's not always better on the other side of one of these shorts because that just means another one might be coming in an hour or two maybe on his no, drive home not today. no not today <laughs> no not no, today this yeah. was the only not one not today though yeah that's right not that's old ty not today that yeah, won't happen anymore there you you're go. right this yeah, is this the last one he's ever gonna have bingo this isn't an indicator to an evening filled of no. oh. uh -uh. there's gonna be any of that mm -mm. and connor alluded to it he had a delicious looking Whopper. Yeah. Oh, 10 45 a.m. Whopper. About 10 45 a.m. Onion rings. Yeah, I saw it. It inspired me to get a burger. Uh -huh. I ordered a burger. I was looking at him like, you know what? That fucking burger looks yep. really good this morning. I said, I need to get me a burger. But we knew he was rolling the dice. I think he even got some. Some onion rings, too. Uh -huh. oh, I, think yeah. it, yeah. I think it was I think it, chocolate milk, or was that Nick, Nick had the chocolate Nick milk? Had, Nick had the chocolate milk for my hop. These yep. guys really roll the dice in the morning with this situation <laughs> on a regular basis. Perfectly so acceptable thing to eat with breakfast. <laughs> There's no way, dude. That is true. I love chocolate milk. These guys should be shitting their pants every day, and it only happens every once in a while. More impressive. We, that's what we need to continue yeah. to look at. D-Butt, I don't know if you're here tomorrow. Are you here tomorrow? Have a great that's Thanksgiving. Cool. Have, baby, D Have a great cool, Thanksgiving, D-Butt. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, folks. Happy Thanksgiving. Great work this week. You did fantastic. You too. No. Almost as shitty as Ty's pants, but <laughs> we'll try to get better tomorrow. And uh, thank you to Arnold. Thank you to Aaron. Thank you to... Dan Orlovsky. In the first yeah. hour. Mm -hmm. He was awesome. That was a long time ago. It was a long he time ago. He gave us all the answers. You remember that? He always does. I got That's a text nice. from a couple people that said, you know what? I'm happy this guy has all the answers. Yeah. He does. Not an agent. <laughs> he really does. Yes. I'd like to see those texts. <laughs> Oh, man. This one's for Arnold, you know? Yeah. Yes, here we go. Do it. This one's for Arnold. We have a new marquee. Uh, zero shows mm. since Ty last shard. Okay, oh, we no. will keep that record. Yeah, have to. Because the way he eats, that thing might not get to 10. Bingo. Because uh, as the season's gone on, I think boys maybe got a little bit more tired, a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more, yeah, fucking, why not a milkshake at 930? <laughs> sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And as we grow into adults, those react differently a little bit inside. Sure. Maybe the shark wakes some people up, too. How about the lukewarm Red Bull, too? Darius fed him right before he went live. Yeah, that was interesting. He's been a good teammate. Well, were you? Yeah. Usually, the Red Bull kind of settles your stomach a little bit. Is that oh, how that works? Uh, okay. What to do when you have about 20 <laughs> ounces of dew hey, in your I'm gut bad. as well? I'm not responsible for the other shit. Dew, Zin, Red Bull, Whopper, mm -hmm. onion, ring, onion rings, chocolate milk. 
Boom. I mean, there's a chance. There's a chance. <laughs> oh. How did he show oh. Some people may have. You know, there's, oh. there's a shot. There's a shot that it might not stay in. You know? Wow. It was unavoidable. Well, actually. He avoids it every day. <laughs> yeah. So. Right. I don't know how he lost today. Right. I mean, for disaster. He, is, he has defeated his butthole's urge to let one fly while wearing his pants. Yeah. So often, I think we forget about how big of a rivalry that actually every is. Every day. Many times. You know, that bug keeps flying into the windshield. Guys, colitis. Adam Cole, that piece of shit. Yeah, he almost yeah. killed him. This one's for Todd. Mm -hmm. Boom. Nice. There it is. We knew it. We knew it. This one's for Arnold. Okay. Mm. Yep. Oh, oh but that, how cool would that have been? That, so that would have been so cool. We go back to back right there. This one, though. Yeah, that was a cool. Oh. That's fucked up. That's Arnold did too much for our program today. No, for, those, for the universe to do what it just did. The universe knows Arnold. Arnold's on top of it. Ty needs the shots right yeah. now. Yeah, you're right. Ty made a shot for you, Ty. He'll Love be you, back Ty. tomorrow, I think, Ty. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. Hopefully. Because what AJ was wishing upon him was like, this is just one of many for the rest of the yeah, night. Yeah, he's going to shard on his way home and crash into a telephone pole and die. Right before Thanksgiving, he's pooping all over his seats and maybe even dying. Hope you're happy, AJ. All right, on that note, let's get out of here. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. AJ, would you like to make up for what you said about Ty? I, I think there's less than a 60% chance that Ty dumps his pants on the way home tonight. <laughs> okay, so we don't know if that's over 50-50 or not because you gave that 10% wiggle room there. Less than 60 is an F, though. So maybe we just fail. Hmm. Ty's not dumping hey, his pants tonight. Bingo. No. Ever again. Ty last time. is an adult who's married, yep. has a job. Right. Uh -huh. A beautiful baby. But he's not dumping his pants ever again. Nope, that was it. No, no, no. This was the last time he shits his pants. Yeah, let's go. All right. Remember the date. This is what Tone started this whole thing. Boom. Yep. November 21st. Full Tuesday. circle. 2023. Remember forever. Matt Canada relieved of offense coordinator duties mm -hmm. for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Jeez. Ty Schmidt's asshole relieved of the poop from his guts while still wearing pants. Yeah. Last time that ever happened. Last time we ever talk about Matt Canada being an offense coordinator for the Steelers. That's good schmay, no matter how you look at it. And this is this is what we're talking about. Boom. That's what we're talking oh, about. Oh. The boy who lived. Change the drawers? Still walking funny. Yeah, do you have different what? underwear? Yeah. Same pants, though. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, different undies. And an extra pair of uh, briefs in the old locker. So. Smart. <laughs> Smart to keep... Keep some of those around. Yep. Ooh. How's it feel? Back in the saddle. I made it all happen. I made a shot for you. You did? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Missed two for Arnold. No way. You made one for me? Yeah. The universe was like, you know what? Ty needs it more than yeah. Arnold right now. I feel pretty special. I could That could have been an unmitigated disaster. <laughs> it, could, it could have been. But luckily, we just were down, and it's too bad because it was a good, good pair of boxers. Oh, oh no! I know. One of the favorites. Yeah, for sure. Damn, for sure. But <laughs> oh yeah, no, no Zito did. Uh, Zito typed up or printed out. Ty, thank you for providing us with another incredible moment that we will certainly have framed. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> this is a real moment in the show. About an hour after Arnold Schwarzenegger left. Yep. I mean, I was playing with fire. I knew it. You know, as I took the last bite of that Whopper this morning. Said, boy, we might be in for one today. It tasted just a little different. I don't know what it was. <laughs> and will and behold, I almost made it. Almost made it. Made oh, we, went long, we went long today. Yeah, yeah. yeah we did. What are you going to do? I was prepared, though. No, you weren't ready for overtime. I, I think your gut was like, you know what? Yeah, we can handle We can handle the show. Weren't you yeah, thinking about game. ordering from somewhere else, and you were like, no, nah, every time I get this, yeah, I was, fucking actually. shit my pants. Yeah, Damn. I said that about Lincoln Square Pancake House. <laughs> Not to name any names. Would rather go to Burger King. Yeah, because Burger I, I, Burger King's kind of been good to me. But yeah, it's been good to me the <laughs> last couple weeks. It is so delicious. It is. It's unbelievable. I order from uh, Mac mm -hmm. McDonald's. Immediately after seeing your Burger King order, I said, damn, that burger looks good. I'm going to get the finest in the land. Quarter pounder with cheese. Mm -hmm. Ate that thing. I'm probably going to have to dump at some point, but thankfully it wasn't during the show. We yeah. did... Uh, add in, you had a full Mountain Dew, a full Red Bull. No, no, no. Quite a bit of uh, Mountain Dew left. Oh. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Didn't finish that. No. How about the Red Bull? Did we get the Red Bull down? Had a couple Red Bulls. A oh, couple? Okay. Couple? It's an early morning. See, that's early what I'm morning. saying, Darius. Hope you're happy whenever you're providing this I guy. I gave one. You yeah. killed I gave one. I gave guy. one Red Bull. You know, he said, I can't turn one of those down. You no, know, he I just couldn't. already had two before then. Couldn't. <laughs> We're proud of you. Way to go, Tom. Hey, thank you. Hey, and, and thank you to those boxers. Yeah. I tell you what, they fought valiantly. And they... KIA, obviously, but they uh, <laughs> they took a couple good men down with them. Mm. All right. Couple. Did you throw them away in the garbage? Couple can? good men. People no, thought this show was going to change. Trash out. You remember that? Hope we take the trash I didn't out tonight. Put them in the fucking trash. I'm not an animal. Where'd you put them? In my backpack. I put them in. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> put, <laughs> put, them in, uh, put them inside. Uh, you know, we had uh, a bag. Yes. And then, you know, yes. obviously tied that thing up tight. You couldn't smell it. It's not getting out. Did take them home and wash them? What? I didn't put them in the trash. I'm not an animal. <laughs> I'm not an animal. In my book bag. In my book take bag. them home. Yeah. I am. I'm, I'm going to try to salvage them. Really? That's oh, how good they no. are. Yeah, not KIA. Come on. MIA. Well, well, we'll see. We'll see. Because then it's. HI kind of hurt. You got to let them yeah. go. Yeah. You got to let them go. They might die on the table. The next time you go to strap those things on, all you're going to think about is last time I wore these, I dumped my pants. Yeah. Well, I didn't dump my pants, I sharded. Well, okay. I'm sh- certainly different. Tomato, tomato. Yeah, certainly different. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I I dumped in the toilet, which <laughs> <laughs> which you know could have been in the boxers, but you know, luckily it was just, just a little streak. You know, there's a difference. That's too. gonna happen. It's gonna happen <laughs> when you're eating Burger King. Well, thanks for not leaving that in the trash. Uh, well, yeah, exactly. I mean, because it smelled awful. Let's. I mean, <laughs> it smelled awful. All right. Well, we're proud of you. <laughs> People said the show was going to change. You remember that? Sellouts. Mm-hmm. Sellouts. Those, those were good times. That was awesome. I was getting some terrible things said, of, yeah. <laughs> said to me about, from our people, you know? Oh, yeah. And I appreciated their passion and everything. But like I said then, I was saying now, we are too stupid to change. Mm-hmm. Okay? You think Ty's butthole was ever going to change? Nope. Can't. Can't. You think we were ever going to be able to? Can't. Too dumb. Mm-hmm. But we're very thankful that everybody spends their afternoons with us that does. Or mornings or evenings, depending upon where the hell you are. We're getting the numbers back for this program. A lot of people watch. You are the best on earth. Be your friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Goodbye. <laughs>